Well, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, race fans. We are here finally for the running of the 2023 New Zealand Superstock Championships hosted by Huntley International Speedway and presented by Pollock Cranes. The sun is shining and I think everybody around the venue here and watching through the Pits TV is super happy about that. My name is Paul Hickey, my pleasure to be your host and uh, lead commentator across the course of the weekend. We are building up to a big night of racing tonight and tomorrow night to decide the 2023 New Zealand Superstock Champion. It's been a long time coming for these drivers. Asher Rees has been New Zealand champion for <laughs> longer than most and he hasn't had to defend that title over that long period but tonight that all changes with just under 120 drivers set to take to the track across our six qualifying groups named after some of the legends of Speedway here in the Waikato region. We are excited about tonight alongside me uh, in commentary tonight will be Barry Brown uh, and also Stu Russell will join us but uh, right now Bianca nice to have you back it was only less than a week ago that we were here but man this is going to be a big weekend. It's amazing I actually woke up with deja vu like I've never left the <laughs> yes. place this morning actually it was 6 30 and somebody revved up their super stock and I thought well, what the heck's going on. Oh that's a great way to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great yeah. Definitely wasn't sad about it it's a, a little bit of relief knowing that yes we can actually finally get out on the track and of course it's beautiful mm. here today it's hot there is not a rain cloud in sight so we're not going to even mention the rain there's no need this weekend we just need to get on with it mm. right also <laughs> introducing to our crew this weekend he hails from sunny nelson gabe you bought the sun with you or has it been pretty uh, gnarly down there too uh, nelson's been pretty sunny at the moment um been living in hamilton for the last week and or last month actually and uh, the Waikato region, ever since I've come up here, all the sun's been shining, so good old southern hospitality. We've brought it up here for the uh, New Zealand Superstock Championship, and I can't wait for this. Uh, it, it's going to be a big night of qualifying racing tonight, right? Oh, yeah, it is, and I first time I saw these Superstocks was last weekend when they finally actually made their way around Huntley Speedway, and I said, oh, they're, they're looking very quick at the moment, and there's going to be some sore bodies. Uh, the fans are around corners one and two and three or four. They're going to get some big hits in there, hopefully early on. All oh, those big hits early on. That, that's quite a controversial little subject at the moment, uh, isn't it? After last weekend, been a lot of discussion. Absolutely, and I mean, my opinion is I don't have an opinion. <laughs> I live in a spectator's world, so I'm going yes. to come and take from a spectator. And I think we leave the drivers and what they have to say on the track and let them all sort it out, eh? All right, I've got to say congratulations to, well, some of the big winners over the, the season so far. Uh, and the Superstock Racing obviously kicked off with the World 240s uh, in Rotorua and Ethan Rees taking the big win there. The South Island Championships turned mm. into a real rugged club affair. Christchurch yep. versus Nelson in the end. Shane Howard, how good is he been? Uh, back, out of the, uh, back out on the track. But congratulations to Alex Hill for taking the win there. And of course just, what, five? Five days ago, uh, Tim Ross winning the New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix. And, you know, these guys, all three of them, uh, you know, they are all guys who are at the top of the game right now and will be drivers that you'd look to uh, make an impact tonight in qualifying and be a part of that finals field tomorrow night. Yeah, 100%. I was talking to Alex Hill late, uh, earlier on today, actually, and he has actually spent a lot of time racing in the North Island mm. with these guys. So he's uh, his race craft is really based on what's going on up here rather than down south. Um, he just kind of nonchalant. Yeah, we'll be fine. But of course, they're all like that. They had a really, really early turn in for scrutineering, and these drivers are literally been chilling for four or five hours. They're so relaxed. No one would believe if you walk down the pits right now, we're about to get nasty. Yeah, well, that, that is. <laughs> the, 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 there's going to be a switch that'll flick real soon. Yeah. Uh, the drivers have been in their drivers' briefing. Uh, they've been doing their grid draws, so we'll be able to get those grid draws to you shortly. We'll see yep. a few of the drivers wander out. Uh, I believe. They're coming out onto the track very shortly and the drivers are going to make their way to their cars, mm. uh, hang out on their cars and we'll make our way around to uh, chat to a few of those drivers. They're all kind of standing behind yeah. the pit yeah. gate at the moment, <laughs> but I'm sure we'll get them out onto the track uh, real soon. Look, Bianca mentioned something there uh, about the Alex Hill coming up and, and refining his craft up here. And that's something that, you know, the South Island drivers, they just love coming up here to be a part of the action in the North Island. Just the bigger numbers and it does help uh, them hone their craft. And that's something we've been seeing over the last couple of decades with the South Island drivers. Yeah, it's real key actually going up to the North Island for our South Island, or for the South Island drivers and trying to really mix it in with the big boys. As you said, the bigger numbers, that's really the main thing, trying to see if you, the first night or the first couple of uh, nights, trying to make sure that they stay safe and then obviously trying to get that speed as well. But most of them are up to speed. Oh, Brett Nichols, Alex Hill, uh, Daryl Wallace here from Canterbury as well. So 
it's good to see the South, a few of the South Island boys travel up here. Mm, mm. Hey, let's let's uh, just quickly, while we're talking about the South Island guys, how good uh, for the Canterbury Glen Eagles winning the team's championships and, and then last week the uh, Canterbury Crush is coming so close. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, last week was, um, I mean, it was just like a little, uh, what can we call it, like an entree mm. to tonight. I mean, it just got better and better as the weekend went by, but, man, it was a little bit of a mix-up at the end of the night, but we got there in the end oh. and, of course... Um, that, yeah, that R you. word, which we which we won't mention no. today at all. It is great to see a lot of umbrellas up around the place, uh, yeah. protecting everybody yeah, the from right the, the sun for a change. <laughs> um, Asha Rees defending yes. the, the title tonight. It's only been done a couple of times uh, over the years, uh, but you'd have to pick him a bloody good chance. I mean, Asher. I mean, we could talk about Asher and his skill. Mm. All night long it just gets better and better each season he gets quicker and quicker but what he has as well as a lot of supporters from his Gisborne track and what we've actually seen is a real battle between these tracks Gisborne and Palmy especially so I think that um, a lot of our whoever's going to win is going to be determined by who's and who's not so much back pocket but who's friends with who oh look and, and that is what it comes down to and mm. you, you see the club rivalries yeah. um, over the years but but you're right it's who your mates are. It doesn't necessarily matter what letters on the side of your car. Yep. You could have one letter on the car, but your best mate has a completely different letter, mm. uh, mm. and he'll be up there to potentially support you. Maybe not yep. taking out a club mate, but maybe not exactly helping them either. Look, the the Rees race cars, though, um, you know, they're you see somebody hop into <laughs> one of these cars, and bang, most of them are on the pace pretty quickly. Yeah, I think Peter actually tones them or sets them up to make them go really fast, and Pete. He's been doing it for a number of years in the super stocks and even the stock cars as well and they're just a class above everything else at the moment so Pete, Asher, even Ethan as well, Ethan massive shot to not, uh, for this weekend so it'll be good to see uh, uh, e Rees 1, 2, 3 for me. <laughs> oh that is that is a big call, we will it have is, to do some uh, official calls a wee bit later on. Still the drivers are mingling around, we're going to get them out onto the track and heading to their cars uh, very shortly so we can uh, start doing some interviews. Our qualifying groups tonight uh, Bianca, we've got uh, groups of around 18 or 19. What kind of mindset do you think uh, these drivers are going to take into it? Well, I did spend a lot of time in the pits um, doing little walks and what have you, going saying hi to the guys. And they, their feedback is they don't care. They yeah. just want to race. They want to get in here. It's such a lottery with who's going to go through to the finals tomorrow that they just want to get on the track and get the job done. Um, they've bought the best of the gears. They've bought spares. Their trailers are absolutely, absolutely jam-packed with all the gear that they're going to need should they need it. They're, they're ready to go. They're just ready to get loose. So our qualifying <laughs> groups tonight, we have six qualifying groups that will take to the track. Uh, the top four from each group will qualify. Then there's the Ripper Charge tomorrow night where the top two drivers from each of the Ripper Charges, uh, from mm. the top two mm. drivers, sorry, from the one Ripper Charge will advance to that finals field of 26. We see it so often over the years that uh, those drivers who end up in the Ripper Charge and getting into the final, they're kind of race ready and they end up somewhere close to the top. Yeah, what happened in the Super Saloons with uh, Chris Cowling, he made it through um, one of the Ripper Charge and then ended up winning one NZ, but yeah, I think actually getting that first race under the belt, getting the nerves out of the system. Mm. A lot of these guys, the 24 drivers that already um, qualify, will be very nervous. They're not too sure what's happening. Whereas the couple that come through the repper charge, they're race ready. They're ready to go. They know what the track's doing. They know how to set their cars up. And they uh, usually finish on the podium somehow. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> feel the drivers just getting uh, wet there. So again, we're going to invite the drivers out. They're all kind of standing around behind the pit gate. We're going to get that pit gate open, and our drivers are going to come out, and we will uh, start getting into some interviews soon. You said you've talked to a few of them already. Uh, anybody kind of drop, it, drop any hints as to uh, what they might be doing tonight? Uh, there was, but I'm Ooh. not sure if I'm going to uh, share that online. Maybe we can share that um, privately. After, after, after the after. interviews. Okay. Um, what I do want to um, point out, of course, is we have history here, May, tonight. We have three females mm. in the field contending here tonight. We have Kendall Ashton from Rotorua, of course, Bex Bar from Palmy, but we have a relative newcomer, uh, Brooke Clarkson, Clarkson from uh, Auckland. Auckland. How amazing is that? Three girls. Mm. Yeah, that, that is great. And, yeah. you know, we know that uh, Kendall Ashton here at Huntley International Speedway, she actually 
Um, does she hold the lap record, or she had the lap record? She may still hold the lap mm. record for the super stocks around here at Paradise uh, at Paradise Valley. I'm not at home, am I? <laughs> uh, I'm here at Huntley International <laughs> Speedway. Uh, so she holds the lap record. Yep. We Rebecca Barr needs no introduction uh, to super stock fans. Yep. We know that she is so close to uh, making that breakthrough and getting into the finals field for uh, an event like this. And yeah, yep. Brooke Clarkson, another exciting driver yep. to have out there. Which is, you know, this is again that progression of the mini stocks, isn't it? And and how imperative that has been to our sport. I think you said it last weekend for the New Zealand stock car teams that if it wasn't for the mini stocks, there would be half as many drivers here tonight. So the mini stocks was absolutely critical to getting a lot of these drivers uh, to super stocks and obviously all the other classes in New Zealand Speedway. So whoever came up with the mini stock idea, uh, big pat on the back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, it certainly cemented the sport uh, and brought it to where it is today. Mm. So many former champions uh, in the field tonight. Uh, we've seen a couple of them uh, wandering out here, gunning for a second <laughs> title, gunning for a third title. It's amazing to win once. Imagine doing it twice or yep. three times. Oh, good. I couldn't imagine the excitement of getting out there and, you know, being on that last lap, knowing mm. that you've brought it home. Um, I mean, all of these guys are... Uh, equally qualified and equally skilled to be able to do it. Mm. Um, back to back is a really hard call but listen, like I said before, it's just a lottery really on who's going to get through. It's so hard to qualify that whoever does win 100% deserves that title. It is, it is so hard to qualify and, mm. and being on the podium is so special. Whether Obviously yeah. everybody wants number one but man, to finish second or third in a championship like this yeah. is so amazing for these drivers mm. but when we take a look back through history, the last time the event was uh, held here was 2012. Yep. So that's 11 years ago now. None of those drivers that were on the podium that year are here. And of course, we back that up with the fact that from our <laughs> defending top three, we do only have one of them here, and that is Asha Rees, no Jason Long, and uh, no Mitch Vickery. No yeah. two or three across the course of this weekend, which takes a little bit of the star power away, but that's the way it is. Yeah, it is the way it is. Obviously, Jason Long had to retire just because of the old head issues with the rugby um, sort of thing, and then obviously Mitch not being here. It's a bit of a shame, obviously, representing the Kihi Kihi Club, but, you know, we've got over 100 drivers here ready to take the one, two, or potentially three NZ from them, so uh, I don't think they'll mind whatsoever. All right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, once again, we welcome you along to Huntley International Speedway. It's the Pollock Cranes 2023 New Zealand Superstock Championships. And those watching through the Pits TV, thank you for joining us from across Aotearoa. And if you're tuning in from other parts of the world, uh, we welcome you as well. A lot of the drivers have made their way out to the cars. We've got all 116, <laughs> 17 of them parked on the, uh, on the infield. Uh, so Bianca and Gabe are going to do a bit of a wander very shortly and start chatting to some of those drivers, just getting some of their thoughts. Racing starting tonight at 7 o'clock, or as I think they say it on their website, the Dirt Flies <laughs> at 7 o'clock. So that is when we are set to go racing. An 18-race program tonight. Our six groups, three heats for each of our groups to find those top 24 to advance to tomorrow night's finals. They can all rest a little easier. So stick with us. Some interviews and chats with some of tonight's stars coming up in a moment. Hey, so we're just literally chilling out with Dale Robinson down here in the pits, trying to find the only bit of shade that we can find. Hey, Dale, it's so hot up here. Oh, it definitely is. But uh, yeah, get, get it in the shade where you can. To be fair, though, we'd rather the sun than the rain. <laughs> oh, exactly. A lot better than last time. So, uh, yeah, looks like we're going to get tonight's racing in. The track's looking good out there. So, uh, yeah, ready to get into it. Now, you didn't make practice last night. It was a little bit, uh, it was a totally different track last night. It was almost like swimming in mud. But it looks like it's a pretty good surface out there now. Yeah, Red knows what he's doing. So, uh, I'm sure uh, we'll learn last night. And uh, tonight we'll be on. So you guys have just had your um, your drivers meeting as well. Um, can you tell us what grid positions you've drawn? Uh, grid eight for the first race. I'm not too sure what that transfers to yet, but um, yeah. So happy enough with that. I, I sort of grids. So you end up where you end up, and you make what you can. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I think Wellington's only got seven cars up here at the minute. So you probably wouldn't have another Wellington car in your group. No, I believe I'm the only Wellington car out there. Most of the groups have only got one. So uh, hopefully we'll see everyone in the final. Hopefully, eh? Hey, um, Dale, just sitting here, what do you reckon it's actually going to take to win this tonight? Oh, obviously a lot of luck. Um, yeah, consistency is a big thing, and, and the quality of cars and the drivers now is uh, higher than it's ever been, so just qualifying is really everything, and then uh, anything on top of that's a bonus. So, yeah, we just take it as it comes. 
Absolutely, and like you say, everything's a bonus with the, the calibre and the skill of the drivers that are here at the minute. I just hope that your teammates don't leave you in the lurch like they did just now. I wanted to interview them, and they're, they're scarpered. Yeah, exactly. I walked straight into this one somehow, so uh, they all disappeared. For sure. Hey, listen, we'll let you get to it. We've got a lot of drivers to get through, so we'll carry on down the line, but all the best for your day. We'll go see if we can find some of those other Wellington drivers, eh? <laughs> awesome. Cheers, mate. Yeah, we're here with the 38 M car of Ross Ashby, all the way from Mount Monganui. Brought the sunny weather with you from the mountain, did you? Yeah, brought it over from the east coast, mate. It's all good, yeah. Obviously, one of the fastest car last night at the shakedown last night. Obviously, the track early on wasn't too flash, just a wee bit of, wee, obviously, Red put a, put a wee bit too much moisture in the ground, but you eventually got the car sorted and you were flying out there. Yeah, no, it was a bit wet at the start, but um, it was only took a couple of heats and the track was actually pretty awesome. And uh, it's the first, first time for me in this car too, so, um, yeah, we were pretty happy. It was, it's a bit, it's a bit of a weapon, so I'm, I'm lucky to be driving it. Obviously, as well. Last or this weekend, New Zealand Super Stocks. It's been a while since it's been happening. You ready to go, eager and excited? Yeah, no, it's been a long wait, all right. And even uh, the last, last meeting here when we were trying to run it, we were sort of driving back and forth and uh, trying to dodge raindrops. But um, it's good tonight and um, it'll be good to get it done and get a, get a fresh, well, maybe a fresh one, two, three in there and, and um, yeah, get, it, get it going and it's just try and get over all this COVID and rain and drama that's going on and enjoy some speedway. Obviously, sponsors on the car, you want to thank for getting you all the way here to the mighty Waikato? Yeah, oh, Pollock Cranes are my main sponsor. Um, they do so much for me, and uh, with my car being a bit, it's an ICU at the moment from Palmy Team, so um, they've offered me, they offered me this car to drive for the weekend, and so I can't thank uh, Thomas and Wayne from uh, Pollock's enough for the opportunity. Um, it was either sit in their car and do some laps or sit in their corporate box, so I'd, I'd rather sit in the car, so... <laughs> Thanks to Pollux and uh, my own sponsors. I've got Mobile Engineering. Um, Wally, that's been he's been with me for, for forever, you know, and he does uh, all my setups and helps me. And then apart from that, it's just just my wallet and my Visa card. <laughs> all good. Now nah, there he is, the 38 M car of Ross Bashby. As we head over to you, Bianca. Bianca. Brendan Ty over here. Hey, uh, Brendan, we're almost the same height now. This is a bit of a novelty for the pair of us. Yeah, it makes you feel a bit better than us. Okay. <laughs> Brendan, so you've jumped out of um, the teams racing straight into the uh, the super stocks and individual racing tonight. How do you change your mindset to be able to um, get in, get focused and get in the groove for tonight? I think it's the same thing. Uh, same thing as every week is you just go and go out there and try and do the best you can. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course you've got old Josh Patterson over here, he's um, no newbie to racing but of course he's got a new car, you guys um, a pair of weapons at Wellington, do you think you can get it done here up in Huntley? Oh, I've got to try and keep up with this young fella <laughs> over here, old superstar, um, but yeah there's lots of competition out there so everyone's good, everyone's yeah. got good equipment and that yeah. and so it's just about going out there, doing the best, have a bit of fun while you're doing it. Yeah. Brendan I did take a squizzy at your group as well, you've got a really competitive group so um, I don't want to say it's going to be tough but it is actually going to be quite tough eh? Yeah I think I just changed groups as well so a couple of us moved and it doesn't matter where you go, they're all hard groups, there's all yeah. good drivers out there and uh, like I said before good equipment so yeah um, yeah. Every group's pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And of course, you've got a legend of your dad over here. He's helping in the pits tonight. No, nah, he's got his car here. Um, so yeah, he's out racing as well and uh, going to go spin some laps. We thought we were actually going to end up in the same group, which uh, would have been a bit of fun. I totally miss it, actually. Ronald, I do apologise. I didn't know you. Were... Oh, yeah, no. Look, now I'm getting the look. I do apologise. I'll come and say sorry to you later. But hey, we wish you guys all the, uh, all the best. It is going to be tough, but relax while you can. Enjoy the shade and we'll catch up with you later. Good luck, Brendan and Josh. All right, back to you, Gabe. Righty, here we are here with the 19 M car of Kira Remen, and all the way from the Mount Monganui as well, representing the Bay Park Buster colours. Are you still? Oh, it's just the, the Pollock sponsorship that uh, a couple of us have got, and yeah, no, so the colour stands out for sure. As I said to um, Ross Ashby before, you're re finally ready for the New Zealand title. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, rain and, and different things have been a bit of damper on things, literally, but um, no, nah, we're here. I don't think we're going to get any rain today, for sure. Didn't see you out there for the shakedown. Was that just because you wanted to save the car for, obviously, tonight? Oh, we've done enough laps here over the years. I, I think it should be right. Obviously, as well, the sun's shining. It's got to be a good, good thing for, obviously, this weekend. Yeah, no, the, yep, no rain. Uh, it might play havoc on the track later, but um, it's the same for all of us, so, yeah. And, obviously, sponsors on the car that help you get here all the way to Huntley International Speedway. 
Yeah, I've got a few. Obviously, Pollock Cranes, Tune Up Automotive, Jackson Concrete Pumps, Pertec, Bullet Fabrication, and Tire World Horsepower Heads, Midwest Motors. Well, there he is, the 19M car of Kerry Remnant. As we head over to you, Bianca. Mate, there is absolutely no way we could do some driver's introductions without talking to Josh Prentice. Josh Prentice, the new look livery looks mint, mate. Who came up with this idea? Oh, Graphics HQ, Matt. He, I just pretty much told him what I needed on and left it to him. No, it's come up grouse, but that's just the sign right in for the look, you know. <laughs> this car's got to perform. Yeah. Well, it's very fitting to the car as well. I mean, you've had a little bit of work on it in the recent couple of weeks, but it's all mended and good to go. Yeah, no, we're, we're good to go. Yes. So looking forward to it, and it'll be a good show for the crowd and this many cars and the calibre of cars is going to be some good racing. Yeah, absolutely, and you're always a top guy. We actually put a um, little poll out as to who um, they thought was actually at that calibre where they could take it away, and Josh, your name came up a number of times. Do you feel that that puts added pressure on you? Oh, no, I don't get into that. I just leave on, do what they do, and let's go out and do some racing and have fun and try and qualify. Yeah, mate, that's what it's all about, eh? Just leave everything on the track, go for gold and see how you go. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, do you want to give a shout out to anyone who's watching at home? Uh, oh, just all the sponsors that ain't here this weekend and everyone else that supports me, thank you. So, yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. Crowd favourite, Joss Prentice. Gabe, I don't know where you're at, but who have you got? Yeah, we've got the 89G car of Tyler James all the way from Gisborne. It's been a tour of time for the Hawks Bay, so how are you feeling up after, obviously, everything that's happened in the region? Yeah, no, good. We actually live in Towering, so we weren't actually affected, but, um, yeah, I feel sorry for them, mate, like... All the other club mates have had some pretty shit stuff going on and just, yeah, I think some of them are just happy to be here racing, to be honest, yeah. As I asked Rosh and Kerry, must be excited, finally we get a New Zealand Superstock Championship now. Yeah, it's, it's my first New Zealand, so I'm a bit nervous, but no, I'm excited, so just want to get out there now, pretty much. Obviously, I saw your hand, is it all good there, yeah. your, your right hand, <laughs> just a wee bit injured? Yeah, I just got burnt at work and it's got infected, but we're all good. Alrighty, obviously sponsors on the car that help you make you get here all the way to Huntley International Speedway. Uh, yeah, I've got mum and dad, they're our biggest sponsors, like without them we wouldn't be doing it. Um, New Look Windows and Doors, Tupuki, GJ Building, Tupuki Panel and Paint, uh, the Skiffington family, Araberry Line Hall, and yeah, just mum and dad really. Oh, there he is, the 89G car of Tyler James, all the way here from Gisborne via Tauranga, as we head over to you Bianca. Yeah, I'm probably with the most chilled out driver of all, Bex Bar, bit of a legend in yourself. Bex, how are you going? You're so chilled out. No one could even imagine that you're going to go out and fight for this title. Yeah, you don't want to overthink it too much, eh? So do best to chill out and, yeah, it'll be what it'll be. And how's the car fearing up? It's already Dad's given you a weapon for sure. Yeah, Dad's been busy working away on it. We haven't raced since Teams Champs, so that was like a month ago. So, yeah, definitely overdue to get back into it. Yeah. Bex, when you have a, um, a period of time, like a month off, do you think it actually affects you when you get back in the car or you just get in, it's all muscle memory, here we go, off we go? Yeah, pretty much. When you get in on the first meeting of the season, it's kind of like you haven't been having a break, so you just get straight back into it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Bex, um, we have to wrap it up pretty shortly. Before we do go away, though, do you want to give a shout-out to your sponsors or anyone who could be watching at home? I know that um, Ella and Emma are watching. Yeah, I'd better um, shout-out to Ella and Emma and Jacob that are at home and, you know, babysitting the dogs so I can be away. So, yeah, thanks to them and enjoy the racing. Yeah, 100%. Well, that's gonna, That's pretty much us. So, drivers, if you can hear me, it's time to get in your cars. We're going to let you do a grand parade. You're going to go back out into the pits, and then it's all on. So, give us a couple of moments. Well, oh, here we go. So, all the keen, listen to that. We're going to get these drivers ready to go. Are you ready, crowd? Yeah, over here is. All right. <laughs>
Anderton Decorators are a long established Canterbury company covering the whole of the South Island who love to support their local community. If you require expert advice from design to application, then Shane has the expert team to ensure your next project is hassle free with a professional finish. Floor to ceilings, walls to roof, inside outside, commercial or residential. Let our team take the hassle out of your decorating. Give us a call now on 027 Painting. That's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators, we have you covered. It's action for the whole family. With 23 tracks around New Zealand, there is no better way to spend your weekends than at a Speedway New Zealand track. Here they come to the start-finish line again. There's something for the whole family. Spree cars, saloons, stock cars, sidecars, midgets and much, much more. Pack up the family and make a trip to adrenaline-filled, action-packed bashes and crashes that only Speedway can deliver. Visit www.speedway.co.nz to find out the track nearest to you. Speedway, it's our summer thing. Right here we are here with a 33 R car of Robbie, maybe all the way for Rotorua, mate. You've brought the sunshine out for you, haven't we? Yeah, you have indeed. About time. I think we've seen enough rain, eh? Obviously, representing the Rotorua Rascals, it's now the individual championship. How are you feeling about that? Oh, yeah, just um, looking forward to it, actually. Um, you know, we just... A lot of hard work in the shed and stuff like that. So yeah, hey, we, we're here, all here to do the same job, you know. So obviously, as well, we finally got the New Zealand Superstock Championship after much, much years of waiting. How are you feeling going into this? Because you look pretty cool at the moment. Oh yeah, no, nah, it is what it is. I think I've done enough of them, mate. Eh? So yeah. And as well, obviously, sponsors on the car that you want to thank for getting you here all the way to Huntley International Speedway. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, we got Mike Perro uh, from Palmerston North. Uh, MBY Engineering, uh, Rollins Transport from Taranaki, uh, Pertec Fluid Transfers in Rotorua, Measure Up, and um, obviously CSL for our race engines. Oh, there he is, the 33 R car of Robbie, maybe all the way there from Rotorua. As we uh, will try find another one of our drivers here, or as Bianca got our interview ready and all ready to go. Hey guys, so sorry about that. We're just trying to find a little bit of a sh bit of shade and and get uh, common knowledge of who this young lass is. And this is Brooke Clarkson. I've been wanting to talk to you for quite a while, Brooke. Don't be nervous. It's just you and me. But you are making history here tonight, and I hope you know this. You are the third female here quali in, the, in the qualifying tonight. That is absolutely phenomenal. We're making paving a way for our girls. How do you feel about that? No, that feels pretty awesome and pretty special. So yeah. Ready to go? Yeah, yeah. And of course, um, we were sitting in your trailer just before that, Scott Penn's old old trailer. But tell us about your car because we don't know much about you or your car. Yeah. So you've got a couple of minutes, take it away. Yeah. Um, so it's a Higgins chassis and we got it from the South Island um, last year. And um, so I've driven for about eight seasons and I had two years off. And so I've just come back into super stocks. But this is my first um, New Zealand. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, and of course, you actually started racing here in a mini stock at Huntley, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I started here at 12 in a mini stock. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like just coming home for you? Yep, it definitely is. <laughs> so how are you feeling? This is your first title race with these uh, other 100 and almost 20 cars. How are you feeling? Are the nerves starting to kick in yet? I'm uh, feeling pretty good. I'm just feeling excited more than anything. Yeah. So yeah, can't wait to get out there. Yeah, because it all comes down to experience. I don't think there's, I mean, I would be nervous, but I mean, you've had eight seasons in you, so you know how to get this done. Yeah, I'll probably get nervous once I get belted in though. 100, they'll just kick in, eh? Hey, um, look, you've got a heap of sponsors on your car. Do you want to give a big shout out to them? Yep, I'm going to open my phone for this one. Um, Bololo, Pocono and Tuakau, Lucas Oil, Evolution Builders, Wes Engineering, Stainless Steel Kitchens, Illuminati Glass, Ross Pumps, Fair Skills, Vasey Engineering, Clayton Automotive, Kevin Butler and X Sign It. Wow, that's a big list. So there you go. We couldn't do it without our sponsors. Hey Brooke, it's really nice to know you. We hope that everybody at home can see a little bit more of you tonight. We hear from myself in the pits. Wish you the very best of luck. Thank you so much. Awesome. Cheers. Yeah, right here. We're here with the five R car, Logan Nicholson, maybe son of Robbie, maybe Thank Logan. No She's finally here, the New Zealand Superstock Championship. Can't wait, can you? Uh, I'm pumped. Ready to go. Obviously, as well, all the way from Rotorua. Been a long trip to get here? Uh, not too bad and not far up the road, so, but yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty good, yeah. Obviously you said what, uh, only your third New Zealand Superstock Championship. Is this nerve starting to creep in because you're looking a wee bit shaky just like me at the moment, aren't you? Uh, I think it's always nervous. Um, if you're not nervous, well, 
probably not ready. Obviously as well, got a few sponsors on the car you want to thank for getting you all the way here to Huntley International Speedway. Uh, yeah, we've got uh, Mike Pero, Mortgages, Palmerston North, um, Endurance Electrical, Measure Up, Rotor, uh, Auckland, Pertec, Rotorua, um, Laser Tech, and uh, I think that's it, yeah. There he is, a very eager and awaiting Logan Nicholson, maybe here, all the way from Rotorua in the 5R car, as we head over to you, Bianca. Double duty here, I'm trying to carry around this big uh, box of merch, that can wait, because we're here with a very impressive Alex Hill, all the way from South Island, you had practice last night, Alex, and you were definitely one of the cars that are uh, very impressed, everybody. Yeah, no, it seemed to go pretty good. Um, yeah, the track was had really gripped up, so yeah, no, the car, car seemed to go pretty good. Similar sort of tr tr um, drive conditions that we've had in Nelson, so yeah, no, we're really happy. Did you go out early on the night because it was so it was like half a, a knee length deep in mud, wasn't it, or did you just wait until that cleared off? No, nah, we held back sort of two thirds of the way through the um, practice, and yeah, went out for a skid, and we were happy, so we um, chucked it back in the trailer. Yeah, and of course you've spent a lot of time up here in the North Island racing. You can kind of single out each driver in your uh, in your yeah. You're smiling. You know where I'm going with. He can single out every single driver that's in your group and go yeah yeah. I know where you're going, and I can kind of understand your mindset. Yeah, try to, eh? Um, yeah, it just comes with experience and yeah, just try, yeah, try to keep it clean and yeah, sneak through. It's the, yeah. the aim of the game. Yeah. And like I have to ask, we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of cars really progress very well from Nelson. Do you, can you give us any indication if this is going to be like a return of the Tigers? Oh, you never say never, but um, yeah, well, no, we'll give it our best shot where the numbers are on the rise in Nelson and um, yeah, like the likes of me and Brett, um, the Ben Smith car that Shane Howard's currently racing and that, so yeah, that, the numbers are definitely on the rise, so yeah. maybe one day. Yeah, well everybody wants it, eh? We just need to make it happen now. How many more drivers do you think we need to be at the calibre that you're at in Nelson before we can actually form a Tigers team? We've got pretty good, yeah, sort of me, Brett, and yeah, we've got the likes of Ben Taylor and a few others that we've got a pretty good calibre, just yeah. need some good sponsorship. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all about the sponsors, eh? Hey, listen, you were chilling out in the back of the trailer there. We'll let you get back to it. Gabe, I believe that you've got someone right down the other end of the pits. Righty here, we're here with the 12A car of Jamie Stano, all the way down the highway, all the way from Auckland. Finally ready for a New Zealand Superstock Championship? Yeah, yeah, long wait. Obviously, last weekend held the New Zealand Grand Prix. Oh, sorry, the North Islands. Or the, sorry, no, it was the Grand Prix, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was the Grand Prix at uh, Auckland Speedway. How'd you go over there? Oh, we struggled a bit with the track. I think everyone did. Um, but I think we got 15th or 16th overall, so not too bad. Didn't see you at the shakedown last night. Is that because you've obviously been here quite a few times at Huntley Speedway? Yeah, we do all our racing out of Auckland and Huntley, basically. So, not a home track, to be honest. Obviously we didn't bring the rain from Auckland down here, but it's a beautiful sunny day in the Waikato, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful. Obviously as well, got a few sponsors and family members here to help support you. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, HP Haulage, uh, Airport Tire Works, and all the family and mates, especially Ryan, give us a hand. And there he is, the 12A car of Jamie Hamilton, or Jamie Stanaway, as we uh, make it over to you, Bianca. So it's actually getting pretty loud and leery down here. We're down here with the 17H driver. Mate, you've got a big smile on your face. You know this track inside out. You're good to go. Oh, yeah, good to go and, you know, excited just to be out there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been a while coming, so, yeah. It sure has. What's it been? What, two years, a rain off, a couple of months, another week and a month. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I've had an injury as well, so it's the uh, first time back in the car for three or four months. So yeah, we'll see how we go, straight in the deep end. Yeah, I tell you what, that's a baptism of fire for if I ever did hear you one, eh? Hey, tell us, what do you think it's going to take to win? This is your home track, you know it inside out, but you've got almost 120 drivers here that are going to be chasing you down. Yeah, you just got to keep your nose clean, eh, and um, race smart. Yeah. Uh, do that and, uh, and stay, down, stay down low and we'll see how we go. When you say stay down low, for those at home who might not know, because we have an international viewing here, what does stay down low mean? Oh, close to the pole line, you know, it's the shortest way around the track and, um, and usually the quickest if you can get it right. So, uh, yeah, it makes it harder for people to go around the outside of you as well instead of you sitting wide and then coming underneath you. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a couple of drivers struggle down turn three and four last night at the practice. Do you think that you've got that down packed? Yeah, look, it was pretty wet down there. Um, so if you, as soon as you got down low, you, you push wide. Yeah. So... Um, it was pretty one line racing, um, but yeah, it'll be different tonight and, and again tomorrow night, yeah. so um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Oh mate, you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited, very excited, yeah. <laughs> hey, well let's, let's get going. Nice to talk to you, thank you very much for your time, we'll shoot back down to Gabe. Righty here, we're here with the 80 or 62 P car of Adam Joblin all the way from Palmerston North. One of the three Joblins here, you ready to go? Ready for a New Zealand title? 
Yeah, red is will ever be. It's um, you know we're just happy that the uh, the sunshine's out, and um, you know we'll just go out there and give it our best shot. It's it's going to be tough qualifying as it is uh, at most championship meetings these days, but um, yeah, I think we'll we'll give it 110 percent and just see how we get on. How's the car been going? Obviously this season at the moment been a wee bit rain affected. How how's it been? Yeah, we've made a few changes in the off season, so we're slowly starting to come to grips with it, and um, hopefully it all will come together tonight. Obviously as well, brought the sunshine down here. It's always good to be in a hot, sweaty day here in the Waikato, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it can't be any worse. It's not raining, so uh, we're thankful for that. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, it's the same for everyone. And, um, you know, hopefully the track holds up with the amount of heat in it. But, um, yeah, it, um, we'll just go out there and, and give it our best and see how we get on. Obviously the Joblins, you really, really want to win this title. What's it going to take to try and finally get yourself over the mark? Oh, it gets harder and harder every year. You know, there's a lot of... A lot of good young guys coming through and you know everyone's got the same good quality gear now that um, it just gets harder and harder just to qualify as a uh, as an achievement in itself these days so um, you know if we can get get the job done tonight you know we'll be wrapped. Obviously as well got heaps of sponsors to thank the family over all the years that you've been racing Superstocks who have they been? Yeah no we've got um, a good good bunch of sponsors here that have been supporting us for a long time. Um, Easy Steel, RE Automotive, um, Dairy Master who's come on board this year, um, Quirk Engineering, um, uh, Wheeltech uh, New Zealand, um, Quirk Engineering, um, Keith Stewart Dino, uh, Preston Engineering, you know, just a lot of guys that um, help out with small small jobs here and there and it, it all adds up and makes a big difference. Oh, there he is, a 62p car of Adam Joblin all the way from Palmerston North. Best of luck for this weekend, eh? Cheers, thank you. Yeah, so guys, I'm down here with the former 1NZ Randy. Randy, you need no you need absolutely no introduction. You are probably one of the best people to talk to in terms of how Asher might be feeling right now as well. You've felt this. You've full of, would he be full of emotion now? Yeah, definitely. That first meeting back to defend your title is um, very hard and, yeah, it takes its toll on the mind as well. Um, today, for me, quite personally, it's been quite good. We had a little sleep in the truck before. It's real cruisy. But, um, yeah, once the cars start their engines and that, you know, it's not going to take long for the hype to come now. Yeah. And we're not too far away from actually wanting to experience that hype, but everything is just so relaxed down here. Yeah, it kind of feels like a Sunday meeting, eh? you know, a bit of a rain out meeting, but um, yeah, I'm sure even once they start the PA system up and they start yelling at us to get on the grid, she'll be, she'll be all guns blazing, yeah. yeah, yeah. Randy, tell us, um, what group are you in? Because some of these groups are quite fair, so do you feel the pressure from your group? Yeah, our groups are probably one of the tougher ones, I reckon, but uh, this day and age, everyone's got really good gear and really good cars, and, you know, it only takes one flat tyre, and that's it, it's all over. Yeah, um, yeah. We've got a tough group, it's every man for himself, wants the flag drops, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and um, listen, your car is looking mint, you are always well prepared, and the car always looks good, you need to give a big shout out to your sponsors as well, because of course I've been with you for a few years now. Yeah, it's actually been a big week. I didn't take the car out of the truck until last week after teams uh, with all the weather and that's that's been happening in Hawke's Bay. Yeah, I've got some real good sponsors. Um, Tarrant Contracting, uh, Salter Cartage, Dingo Works, Mobile Farm Kill, uh, local Huntley sponsor, GT Engineering. they one of the workshops here in town, so it's cool to come up here and support them here. But um, yeah, give it a go and hopefully do well for our sponsors and get them all on board next year if we go good again. Well, if there's anyone who can do it, Randy, it's definitely you, eh? Uh, from all of us, we do wish you the very best. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, guys. Right, right here, we're here with a 9G car of Jamie Hamilton all the way from Gisborne. Uh, a wee bit of mechanical work being done on your car at the moment. How's that all faring out? Oh, yeah, I actually had my first punch for the weekend on the infield, so that wasn't a good start. As well, last night with the shakedown, you are looking very, very quick on the straights, trying to keep that up for this weekend? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it was a bit of a challenging track last night. Um, we just wanted to sort of get a bit of a run, make sure the car was all good. We didn't really need to chase too much setup because we've been here a few times with teams, so we got that dialed in. So, yeah, obviously our last meeting was team champs, so we wanted to make sure the car was all good after that. It gets a bit of a hammering at that meeting. So Obviously not a lot of racing for you this season, obviously, as you just said, team champs was your last meeting. So a wee bit shaky, or is it all good pretty much from now? No, not really. Like, there's not really any pressure. You'd you don't have, you know, it's just fun, you know, going out there, do the best we can. We've done everything we can to, to prep for it, so whatever happens, happens, really. Obviously, sponsors on the car you want to thank, and obviously family members you want to thank for getting you here this weekend. Uh, yeah, the whole um, Leach family, they helped me a whole lot. Always have for my racing, and uh, Leach Motorsport. Uh, Walker from down in Palmy, McCafferty Metal Cartage, McFerry Crawfords, uh, Worth, Action Powder Coating, and that's most of them, I think.
Well, there he is, the 9G car of Jamie Howard, and all rearing and ready to go here at Hunley International Speedway. Yep, so I'm down here with none other than Tyler Walker. We couldn't convince him to sit on the car this time for the interview. He's given me a bit of cheek saying I need a, a footstool. I probably actually do. But Tyler, mate, are you ready? Are you ready for this? Uh, I'm, well, as ready as I can be, really. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not too fast, so yeah. we'll just get out there and do our, do our thing. I mean, you're a crowd favourite, of course. Uh, I mean, not because of the big argy-bargy, not because you team up with anybody else, uh, probably because you're a really good guy, but you also stepped up from stock cars to the supers, and you've done it so well. Yeah, it's not too bad, really, going from the change, but I wouldn't say I'm too much of a favourite here, looking around what well, you know, the competition we've got in super stocks, but I don't know, I guess... Every, every event, anyone's, you know, anyone's game, anyone's chance really, so yeah. we just go out there and put our best foot, best foot forward and yeah, see who comes away with it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tyler, tell us what grid positions have you had? Because I mean, you're, you're one to say that I don't like this grid position, it doesn't work for me, but you do have a couple of favourites, but have you got that tonight? Um, I've got grid nine for the first one, so I think then I should go to the rear and then to the front, hopefully for the last one, so yeah. that's, yeah, for me that's ideal. Tyler, um, can you take it away tonight? Do you think you're ready to do this? Oh, as long as the car car um, keeps going, then yeah, I'm, I'm, I think we have the pace to I don't know be top six, seven kind of thing. We've got some pretty pretty quick cars in our group, so or well, you know every group has fast cars. So I don't know just a level level these days is pretty pretty intense out there. So um, I don't know it's anyone's chance, but we'll definitely give it our best. Yeah, and listen, my arm is getting a right work up, uh, workout holding this microphone up to you, so I'll let you finish off by giving a big shout out to all your sponsors. Yeah, obviously, like, we wouldn't be here without them. Um, there's a few major ones, and I don't know, it's, yeah, the sport's pretty tough, and it's definitely not a cheap sport, and yeah. trying to do it on, you know, one wages, um, it's pretty tough, so, I don't know, yeah, we've got a lot of sponsors, and we sure as hell wouldn't be, well, we wouldn't achieve half of what we have in the sport without them, and um, we wouldn't be racing today without yeah, them. Yeah. Well, the best, Tyler. Wish you uh, all the luck in the world, mate. Cool. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Righty, here we are here with the 591 P car of Wayne Hemi. Wayne, she's been a while since the New Zealand Championship. How are you feeling coming into this one? Oh, pretty good. You know, it's been a stop-start kind of season, so you lose a bit of momentum, but uh, it's like that for most of the drivers. But, uh, you know, it's a New Zealand chance, so we should be uh, getting hyped up for it. The 591 P car was out here last night. You're looking very, very quick on the straights. Did take you a wee bit to try and get used to, the obviously, the wetness on the track. Yeah, yeah, the track was quite challenging. It was a you know different kind of track. Um, it was quite quick, but we had a we had a little issue with the with the engine and and it just wasn't accelerating that well. And we just hope that we've fixed it. We don't haven't fixed that tonight. We won't get away with it. So um, just fingers crossed for that. Obviously, Jordan and Jamie weren't out there last night. Is uh, were you kind of the guinea pig trying to get all the cars sorted? No, no. Well, Jordan was travelling up, and um, Jamie Hamilton came with us, and we're pretty thankful for uh, Glenn Leach to you know, give us a bit of support, a bit of help with the car. He's, he certainly knows them around, and he got us going pretty fast. Obviously, been racing super stocks for quite a while. Look at the amount of cars that are here. Over a hundred cars competing for a New Zealand super stocks. You must be. Oh, what's happening now? Well, it is. I mean, but 100 is quite good because we had 130, 140 <laughs> a few months ago. But, um, you know, like I'll go back when we raced in Wellington back in, in, the, ni in the 1990s and that we had 120 cars into there, you know. So you, we always get 100 plus cars for the New Zealand Champs. But what we've got is got some good, fast quality cars. So, you know, 90% you know, of the cars can, can qualify. So that's what we have to deal with. Obviously, as you said earlier, a wee bit of a stop start sort of season for you. Haven't really been racing as much as you would have liked. No, definitely not. Like I haven't raced, you know what I mean? We kind of do a meeting and then have you know, three weeks off and it's, so it's quite hard to get back into your groove and, you know, I don't know, I'm probably looking forward to the winter having a break and going away with my wife um, to Europe for a, for, a, for a month and, you know, and relaxing a little bit. But it, it's like it for most people, but, you know, some of these drivers have been doing team racing and so they're, you know, lucky enough to do a bit of biffing there, so. As you said, teams racing. You were the manager, though, for the Munro 2 Mustangs. A wee bit of a change up for you? Yeah, yeah, totally change. A big change for us. You know, it's kind of challenging. I, I struggled for the first season or two when I wasn't racing. I really wanted to be out on the track, but um, you know, Kerry Bradersky and and uh, Kieran have, have jumped on with us. So yeah, we're kind of uh, looking after the uh, the Mustangs, and hopefully we can develop that team into a really competitive team and get some really good culture in there. Obviously, as well, you got heaps of sponsors thanking you throughout the seasons, and as well, family. Who do you want to thank? Oh, hey, just um, you know, obviously we do have a lot of sponsors. Um, uh, we've got, you know, obviously MMS Group, what we own, and Mo Motex, what Jordan Jordan and his, his family own as well. So uh, Mac, Mac Built Engineering, really awesome. Obviously, the Leach Motorsports and Linton for Jordan looks after him. But, you know, we uh, we try and not have too many sponsors on our cars. You know, we, we like to race for fun, and, and um, sometimes sponsors can expect a lot and put a lot of pressure on you. So uh, we try and eliminate that.
Well, there he is, the 591P of Wayne Hemi. As we head over to you, Bianca. Yeah, mate, I think uh, Wayne Hemi needs to take his favourite niece with him to Europe. But, hey, I'm down here with James Clark. He is driving the 29G machine from Gisborne. But, listen, you live all the way down in Waikanae, so you've probably had more stress getting up here than what you have of what's going to happen oh, in about an hour or so. Oh, yeah, it was a bit of a journey yesterday. Yeah, we left at about 10am and didn't get here till uh, quarter past six. So, yeah. yeah, it's been all on the whole weekend. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been good. Yep. And, of course, we follow you up and down all the time. This car is an absolute weapon. You proved that last night in um, in the practice, but of course I said to you, mate, how was practice? And you said oh, you were just cruising. I was like, what? Yeah, no, we um, we had a few issues at the 248s in Palmerston, so we just went out there last night, and basically shake the car down and make sure everything was doing what it was meant to do. So um, we were happy. So yeah, did a couple of runs and um, yeah, the track was good. So yeah, happy with that. Yep. And we seen you out there at about six o'clock in the morning working on your car. You just doing a final couple of checks just to get them done. Yeah, yeah, we just uh, like to go through everything, make sure it's all good to go, you know, there's, yeah, the more you can check, the, the less uh, dramas you have during the night, so yeah, everything's good, so we're, uh, we're excited, yeah, we're ready to go. And how happy were you to see the track today? It was totally different surface to what it was last night in the practice. Oh, yeah, 100%, we were having a few beers last night, and Red was, and his team were out there flat out to, oh, uh, yeah, who, who would know what time, um, so credit to them, it's, it's looking really good, so it should be an awesome racetrack um, again tonight, so yeah, yeah. yeah. And we do have to acknowledge them, because they worked extremely hard last week for the, the teams racing, they kept that track going for, what, 12 hours they were racing on it, so I have full faith that it's going to give you a really nice uh, smooth surface for you to be racing on tonight as well. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, they do. Um, they do countless hours that nobody sees. So you know, into way into the next days, you know. So it's just like um, it's it's massive. And uh, credit to them, really. Um, we're uh, we're all racing on the same track, and you know, so they provide a good one for us. And now uh, I'm looking forward to it. So it should be a good night. Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Listen, we're about an hour away for you guys to jump in the car. We'll let you get to it. We wish you all the luck. We might see you on the road again. But hey, please don't start that super up. It's six o'clock tomorrow. Oh no, no promises. No promises. We'll see how we go. To Night. Awesome yeah. mate, back to you Gabe. Here we are, we're here with the 24R car of Kyle Ashton all the way from Rotorua, brought the sun with you, have you? Oh we tried to, yeah, hopefully it stays. Obviously New Zealand Championship hasn't been contested in a while, you're really keen for that one? Yeah, yeah you got it, everyone is, you can't beat it. As well, re repping that Ashton name, is there a wee bit of uh, responsibility to it this weekend, trying to get that NZ on the car? No, we just all go racing as it is and if one of us beats the other it's good. Is there a wee bit of sibling rivalry in there? Nah, nah, never is. <laughs> and as well, obviously the groups, obviously you've got about 18, 19 cars, only four qualify. It's going to be hectic quite uh, from the start. Yeah, yeah, the first race, that's where you've got to make up all your ground and then go from there. What grids do you have for that first race? Uh, grid four. So right near the front, eh? Right off the front, outside, first race. Go, go like hell. As well, obviously, representing the Rotorua Club, you've got a wee bit of a um, target on your back potentially? No, 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 there's no targets on anyone's backs anymore. We're all mates. What do you reckon about this old 100 plus cars racing here for this weekend? It's made this class definitely the premium class in New Zealand Speedway, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, well, all 100 cars out there can win. There's no cars that couldn't do it. So, yeah. And as well, sponsors on the car you want to thank? Oh, just all of them. I don't know them all, but they're all on there. Everyone knows who they are. And there he is, the 24R car of Kyle Ashton, all the way there from Rotorua as we head over to you, Bianca. Yeah, mate, I'm down here with the 13P uh, car. We're with Lucas Hay. Now, Lucas Hay, you're sitting here very nervous, but it's OK. First full year in a Superstock, and, of course, that means that this is your first year competing for this title. Yeah, first year running a Superstock at the New Zealand title, so second time here. Yeah, um, yeah hopefully it goes better than the last time. What happened in the last time? Oh, last time at practice we kind of crashed the car a little bit, so... I don't think practice scouts. It's all about what's happening tonight, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah we came up last time for a rain out, so it's not that bad. Yeah. This time we've got good weather, so... Yeah. Well, you're down the best end of the pits too. We've got a bit of shade down here and you're just chilling out. But tell us, how are you feeling right now, being your first title contention? Are the nerves starting to kick in a little bit? Yeah, they kicked in when we got on the car to come up here. Like, yeah. Some of these guys in my group, they are yeah. bloody good. Um, I've looked up to a few of them, watched them do teams racing, so nah, it's, yeah. it's bloody cool to be rubbing paint with them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how does that make you feel? Like, say, you've looked up to them for a number of years, obviously. Now you're racing with them. Are you going to, you know, given the chance, if you need to get them out of the way, are you going to do it? 
You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> so, so that's a yes. Yeah, you got to help your club mates out. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. not, we're not here to screw around. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Palmerston has bought a really strong contingent with them, as has Rotorua. So you know, it might just come down to, like you say, you got to help your teammates out, eh? Oh, totally. You've, you've, you got to get as many as your club mates through, because at the end of the day, we want, we want the title to come back to Palmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. absolutely. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'll let you finish with a few last words. Is there any uh, sponsors you want to give a big shout-out to? Yes, I've got to thank my uh, fiance. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be uh, racing, so she's hiding in the trailer in there. <laughs> she, she's my biggest sponsor. Um, yeah. My work, Stroutman Hopkins, um, Ace Performance, Lamp Race Cars. Yeah, without them, I'd be screwed. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, it's your first time. Take it all in, mate, because you'll never get this first again, so enjoy. Yeah, sweet. Cheers. Thank you. Awesome. Good luck. Here we are, here with the 23R car of Kendall Ashton, all the way from Rotorua. Bought the sun with you, have you? Um, yeah, I did. <laughs> now, a lot of people have been telling me that you've got the lap record here. How do you, are you, you're not really claiming it though, are you? Uh, I know at one point I had it, but I'm not sure if it's been broken. So, mm, we'll see. <laughs> New Zealand Superstock Championship, it's always the big one. Obviously, any number on the car, that's what you want, isn't it? Yep, I um, just want to qualify and then tomorrow will be a different day and I just, yeah, just want to qualify, make my family proud and just reward them for all the hard work that they put into the car. So yeah. Obviously having that Ashton last name, obviously Father Lance, has that put a wee bit more pressure on you? Um, nah, we're all our own individual people so yeah, <laughs> not too much pressure, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself because that's when things start to go wrong. So. And as well one of the three females in the field? Trying to set the pioneers for future uh, female super stock drivers, aren't you really? Yeah, I just want those girls that race those mini stocks or even sitting up on the bank to see that girls are out here um, with the boys doing it so they can do it too. And as well, a few sponsors on the car you want to thank? Uh, or family members? <laughs> mainly my granddad and my dad and all my brothers. Um, they put a lot of time and effort into the car for me um, and always get it going good. So I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my family. Well, there she is, the 23 R car of Kendall, Geno or Kendall Ashton, sorry, all the way from Rotorua. Yeah, and then I come right down the other end of the pits, and I'm here with uh, another, none other than Quinn Ryan. Quinn, I mean, it's so relaxed down here, it's ridiculous. You would not believe that within an hour you're going to be strapping yourself out and going to absolute war. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> no, definitely looking forward to it. It's nice to see the sun out, and yeah. uh, it's actually nice to get a bit of normality in and... Yeah, yeah, get it back into some racing. You know, it's a bit of a bit of a haul all the, yeah. coming all this way. So, not nah, stoked to be here. Eh? And once that sun goes down, I mean, we're used to racing in full daylight. It's going to get cool and it's going to get dark really quick here. Do you think that's going to affect you at all? Uh, nah, I don't think so. Hopefully, it actually you know keeps the moisture in the track because yeah. um, obviously here it gets a bit slick. So, um, yeah, no, nah, don't think so. Yeah. Now tell us about your haul up here, you're of course from the Hawke's Bay, you've seen a lot of devastation in the time, um, I mean you're up here, you're going to take, you do it for the Bay, you and uh, I mean Randy's got an A on his car, we won't talk about that, but he's from the Bay as well, so it's really nice that you guys have made this huge journey up. Yeah, hey look, you know the last few weeks in Hawke's Bay have been pretty, nothing but devastating really, um, got a few few close mates that have lost literally everything, so she's been a pretty hard few weeks, but um, stoked to be here representing the Bay and yeah, I'm just thankful that, you know, all my family and, and all that, though my close ones are okay. So I'm um, nah, happy to be here and fortunate to be here. Yeah. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. We are all fortunate to be here. It was absolute, complete devastation. So, like I say, it's really nice that you boys came up. But, hey, lot, a, a lot of emotion, of course, if you are going to take it home, that'll just put the icing on the cake. But, listen, I'll let you have the final uh, word. You've got a heap of sponsors to thank that helped you get here as well. Yeah, most definitely. Hey, sponsors are, you know, wouldn't be racing without them. So um, Eastworld Engineering, uh, massive main sponsor. Um, Repco jump, jumped on board this year. So big thanks to them. Garage 16, um, Ace Performance, the list goes on. Aztec Shock, Steve Jude Motors, Misfit Productions, Revolution, Mag and Tyre and Trade Zone, Napier. So um, all put in a massive effort. So hoping to do them all proud this weekend. Absolutely. I mean, you do your sponsors proud both on the track and off the track off the track Quinn so we wish you all the best before we do run away though I just wanted to note that you were super super quick last night um, with the track changing conditions do you expect the same kind of pace? Um, I like to think so yeah um, yep no definitely uh, yeah probably a slick track tonight I'd say um, it was real drivey last night obviously with all the water that went on it um, but I'd say it'll go a bit black tonight there's a few more cars on the track so um, yeah nah just stick to it and yeah. Game face. Yeah, game face on. Go go for gold. Gabe, straight back to you down the other end, mate. Mark Decky, all the way from Mount Bonganui, mate. She's, uh, you brought the sun with you, haven't you? Yeah, no, we've had the sun over there. We were actually talking about it 
last last week. Actually, Bay Park's probably the only North Island track that's got the most racings in this year. Obviously, your season. Have you raced too much over there at Bay Park, or or just consistently throughout the year? Uh, just consistently. I'll be sharing my car with Dylan Towler. Uh, he, he's also from the Mount, so he races my car and the teams, and uh, I race the New Zealands and the Grand Prix. And uh, I think Dylan's going to go down and do the uh, North Islands in my car as well. You've got the New Zealand Superstock Championship, over 100 cars now. What do you reckon about that? Obviously, been racing Superstocks over 30 years now. Well, back in 1993, when we actually got three NZ at Waikaraka Park, we actually had 135 cars. So uh, that was a challenge then, and I think even with 103 now, I'll tell you what, we're going a lot faster. Yeah, a lot, lot faster. Obviously, you didn't come out last night for the, sta um, for the shakedown. Was that just because you just wanted to save the car, really, for tonight? Oh, we go way back... Many, many years ago, I actually used to be in the Waikato Wanderers as well, so I know this track pretty well, but like Kerry actually. As well, you've got a few sponsors on the car you want to thank for getting you all the way here to Hunley International Speedway. Yep, I'd like to thank uh, Hydrolink, uh, First Call Recruitment uh, and Scrapman. As well, there he is, the Mark Decky car, all the way from Mount Monganui. Thank you for that one. Cody Mack, mate, we were just having a really good conversation. You need to explain to everybody what's been going on this week. It's been huge. Yeah, we've, uh, the team's had a big week. We... Um, Went to qualifying and managed to win the race for the GP for the qualifying, but um, during it we blew a head gasket on the motor, so left the GP early, pulled the motor out, whipped it to Wellington. Um, Mark Maholland, Lama Engineering, did the business, yep. got it back Wednesday night, drove through the night, Dad did, yeah, got here on Thursday morning, put the motor in, and here we are. What time did you finish working on it this morning? Uh, when we loaded up, so about 12.30. <laughs> oh, mate, no pressure. I mean, that's a huge, huge week. Um, you didn't make it to practice, obviously. The only driving you've done in it since you got the engine in there is literally onto the track and back. Yeah, I think the motor's been running maybe 40 minutes max since it's been together, so it's a bit unknown, but... Hey, we're ready to get into it. Hey, and you can't just go, oh, well, we blew a head gasket, we're not, that's it, we're done. You have to give it a go, otherwise you're just not in the game, eh? <laughs> There's only two meetings we'd do all that for, and, yeah. you know, the New Zealand's and Teams Champs, and, you know, a couple of years ago when I made my debut at Teams Champs, we did the same thing a week before, we had the motor out, so, yeah. and it went well, so fingers <laughs> crossed we've got a good meeting coming. Hey, no pressure, so um, if it doesn't go well, who are we going to chase down, Dad? No, oh, never. Not dad, eh? Nah. <laughs> um, nah, we'll, we'll have a look. Look, we've got um, a couple of Auckland boys in our group. Um, and, you know, we'll see. It, it really comes down to whether or not we want to make lifelong enemies at the end of the day. But yeah. if the people that are up there that I want to be up there are there, and we'll, we'll go to war for our club mates and, yeah. and possibly our mates if none of our club mates are up there. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. And I think it's all really quite na naive of us to think that it's, individual, no one's going to help anybody. It's almost track against track, team against team, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, and it should be. Yep. That's how it should be, you know. And, and if I, like I said, if I've got no club mates and maybe I've got some personal mates up there, then yeah, let's get the bumpers out. So yeah, absolutely. And you're a fan of the bumper, Cody. We all know that. Yeah, love it. <laughs> 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 hey, listen, well, we're right that you're here because, that, like I say, that's a huge, huge week for you. Well done on getting the car ready. Well done to all your crew and that. You bet, they're all over here looking, so you better give them a big shout out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I said, Dad went over and above what, yep. you know, took the week off to did what he needed to do. Jamie Scott, Northwestern Equipment, Bryson Kelly, Marks, Measure Up Construction, Simon at DS Construction, Ken, Bernie, my brother, everyone has just done 110%. Without any one of those guys, we wouldn't have made it. Yeah, 100%. Hey, for everyone who's working at home, uh, watching at home, for those who don't know, 72A, Cody Mack, he's an absolute weapon. I promise you, if you keep your eye on him, you will not be sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hope you have a good night. Hey, you too, Cody. Good luck. Right here you are, hey, with the 88P car. Jack Miles, we'll just get you a stand here, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> all ready for a New Zealand Superstock Championship? Yeah, yeah, um, just like uh, all the others. We've sort of been to a few now, so uh, there's a lot of luck, luck involved with these. Um, it's going to be pretty tough just to qualify, so just go over everything with a fine-tooth comb and make sure nothing's going to hopefully let us down. And I think we're the first race out tonight, so um, track will probably be quite heavy. Just change the car a little bit for that and um, hope for the best. Obviously, you came here for the shakedown last night. Just the one uh, race for you, though. How'd that one go? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to run my car again. It's been a few weeks since we've raced, so uh, just make sure everything was 100%. Because, um, yeah, if you have a minor little issue tonight, it's your, your whole weekend over, effectively. So just want to make sure that we have the best chance to try and get through. Has that kind of really been your season, a wee bit of stop and starting, not really racing too much, or have you been racing quite a bit over there in Palmy? Oh, we've been doing what we can. Yeah, the weather's been a bit of a battle for everyone. Um, but, yeah, we've got reasonably... Heavy work commitments as well, so just trying to fit in around all of that. But um, yeah, uh, it was quite 
well, it's probably not what everybody wants to hear, but it sort of played into our hands when it rained out the first time round because we couldn't make it the uh, when it was meant to be run. So, yeah, it works out a bit better for us this time of the year. So we're here now and hope for the best. It works out for me too because I wouldn't have been able to go to that last one as well. Obviously, got that Myers last name. Has that obviously come with a wee bit of pressure over the years? Oh, no, nah, you just got to keep pretty relaxed, really. Um, Scott was always the same, you know, the old man. Was, you know, it's well, more of a social thing for him, you know. <laughs> His racing was just part of it. But, no, nah, it's, it's fun. It gets us all away and okay. out from work and whatnot. So, okay. good thing to get us all together. So, we just, you know, take it pretty seriously now. But at the same time, we're, we're here to have fun. So, yeah, don't want to put too much pressure on yourself. Obviously, you've got a lot of South Island fans you were just talking to me about not able to make Battle of the Stocks, but hopefully try and make that stampede. Yeah, yeah. That, well, we, um, with work, we, we sponsor the stampede, have them for some time now so yeah that's the intention we'll try and get both cars down there for that um yeah run over two nights so now it should be good We've got a lot of family in that nelson yeah what's it going to take to try and get an nz on the 88 p car eh? oh a few friends a lot of luck and um yeah no nah, a good reliable car really is the is the ultimate and as well sponsors and family you want to thank for getting you all the way here to huntley international speedway yeah a lot of people that get involved and help us out it's a pretty lean crew up here this weekend with us so just big thanks to everybody you know I'll, like I said before, with work and everything, I couldn't do it without everybody that helps us. Um, just don't want to be singling anyone out, but um, just want to say hi to Deb and Margaret at home, that, uh, the kids there, so hi to all the kids. They'll be watching, no doubt. Um, yeah, we'll be hearing them screaming from here. Yeah. And as well, obviously, can, or hopefully good luck for tonight. It's going to be a hard one qualifying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, we just need to knuckle down in this first one, hopefully go forward. We've sort of got 11, 11 grid in the first one, so... And so pin our ears and hope for the best try and get sort of up near the top sort of five to six in each race and should hopefully be enough I would have thought. Alrighty there is the 88 peak out of Jack Myers as we head over to you Bianca. Yeah mate I'm down here with Dale, um, Dale Stewart who's driving the 94 R car. Now the R cars, Rotorua of course, have got the biggest contingency here so what are you uh, betting your hedges on what's going to happen tonight? Oh, I think if we can get out of each other's way, we'll um, have a good chance getting through, I think, eh? So, um, no, nah, it's looking good. It's good actually having a, a good good number of, of field, you know, of, of road oil cars. And um, every other year it's normally like Palmy, you know, they, yeah. they, they, they outnumbered everyone. So um, if we can get, you know, a good handful of road oil cars to that final, I think we'll have a good chance, yeah. And that's what it's about. We were just talking to Cody Mack who said, listen, it's all about team and team and team and tracks and what have you. You feel the same, obviously, because you couldn't do this without some of your uh, track mates, right? Yep, exactly, yeah, yep, without, you know, I don't know, you know, a lot of our, um, you know, fellow Road All Club guys are actually your good mates as well, you know, you, you get on, you go see them, you go see each other each week, you know, and actually um, build that bond, and um, yeah, that is, yeah, a lot of um, a lot of helping, but also a lot of luck. Yeah, 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 and luck is a really, really important work that we probably should talk about, because you can have the car, you can have the skill, you can have the crew, you can have everything like, but 99% of what's going to get you through tonight till tomorrow is luck. Yep, 100%. You've got to get around that corner. You've got to keep those four tyres pumped up and um, and point in the right direction. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, luck, luck is um, definitely got to be on your side, for sure. Yeah. Tell us, Al, how do you prepare for a big meeting like this? Um, it, it's all in the garage. You, you have um, a few quiet beers and get get the boys around and you start um, swinging spanners and uh, yeah. and just pointing holes at everything in the car and, and just get it all 100% or 110% before you even load it up. So, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot, lot of work goes in, in the garage at home, and um, yeah, we're actually, I, th I think the car's good to go after um, Palmy team, so, yeah, yep. yeah. And tell us, your crew is standing here behind you, they're going to know this car inside and out, so if anything does go wrong, they can literally spring into action without you having to say anything to them. Yep, for sure, yeah, they um, yeah, they, know, they know the car just as well as I do, and um, they don't actually need to be told what to do, so, yeah, they, they um, well, also my brother next to me and, um, and, and Robbie Morris, they all... We all help each other out and um, yeah, we all get into it and we'll get that car back out on track for the next race. Tell us, how long has your crew been crewing for you? Because it's, I mean, they all become family really, don't they? Yeah, they do, yep. So um, probably for a period of probably at least six, seven years at least. So, you know, and, and, and you only got to send that quick text message and um, ask if, if anyone's keen and, and you, some puts your hand up every time. So yeah. you, you're never going anywhere by yourself. So it's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so, they're, like I say, they've been with you six or seven years, uh, they're almost family. When you get hurt, I mean, this has been a really bone of cont contention late lately, yeah. they're not going to let you back out on that track, are they? They're going to be saying, Dale, park up, mate, that's it, you're done. Yep, that's it, yeah, so um, I got I got a bit of a head knock down in Palmy uh, four weeks back, and um, yeah, the crew, they just they just took over, and um, yeah, they, they, they sat me down and yeah. told me what was what, and um, yeah, the 
you know, just make sure your head's all nice and cleared up before you actually jump in that car. And it gives you a little bit of confidence as well that they're not here for the ego or just for the win. They're here for you and they actually, your safety is paramount about amongst everything. Yep, yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, they, they don't really care actually of the result, but yep. you, that's that's just a bonus if you can um, come away with a bit of a bit of a flag or, or a change of number, that'd be even better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, listen, uh, we've probably been talking long enough. You need to get pre prepared. But listen, you've got um, a couple of sponsors that you're going to need to thank, so we better give them a bit of credit. Yep, so um, this year I've got um, J.A. Russell that's come on board, and um, they've helped out big time, actually. So they're actually part of the old owner of the car, So yeah. that's um, and he's actually here helping pick crew, so that's awesome. And then I've got um, one of the main ones is my father-in-law, Ivan King, and from King Commercials, and he... He um he helps out during the weekend and yeah every our weekend so it's awesome to have him on on board and um and yeah rips in well his name is actually pretty pretty awesome and then um then I got my workplace that I actually yeah I work for um at Rotor so um Lakeland Steel they um they just provide a workshop there I can just do whatever I like when I like and um and it's given me that freedom so they actually can go out and get his car 100 percent and and ready to go and then obviously um the engine builder Terry O'Connor he um yeah. He always helps out, but this car's actually only only new to us, and it's, it's got a CSL engine in it. But um, Terry will be um, he's always there to help out, so yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. Hey, um, just one last word. Do you think you can beat your brother over here, just quietly between you and me? Oh, he's gonna have to get in the car first. He's actually handed it over to Robbie Morris. So, oh. so um, I don't know. I hope I can beat Robbie. <laughs> so I think we're right. <laughs> yeah, mate. Hey, either way it goes, any way it swings. We wish you all the best, yeah? Awesome. Thank you very much. Cheers, Dale. Back to you, Gabe. Right here we are here with the 88 V car of Josh Kahui. Came out last night, you had a wee, or the track was a wee bit too wet for you, was it? Oh, yeah. Um, it was definitely wet. Um, hopefully tonight might be a bit slick looking at um, the weather and, yeah, no, it's good. Obviously, race street stocks for a wee bit, haven't you? Uh, no. Oh, is that Brad, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yep, yep, yep. 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 Now, nah, sorry about that. And as well, earlier in the season, you were representing the Wellington Club. Now, see, you've got a V on the car. What's uh, what's up there? Oh no, nah, no, nah, nothing, nothing there. Just uh, wanted to teams race and uh, got opportunity with Wanganui. So, yeah. Just wanted to go out and smash some cars, did you? Well, just get opportunity to be honest. Yeah. And how was that? Did you get, gain heaps of experience from that? I was a uh, sixth driver at um, Palmy Teams, and um, yeah, no, it was good. It's good to be around the team, obviously, try and get a bit of insight potentially for later in the year, or for later years. Yeah, 100%. And as well, obviously, we've got the Bought the Sun out for you. How good is this, eh? Oh, yeah, it's great. It's good. Better than rain, that's for sure. And obviously, we've got over, over 100 cars here to compete the New Zealand Superstocks. This class just gets bigger and better every season, doesn't it? Yep, definitely, definitely. And as well, obviously, sponsors and family members you want to thank for getting you all the way here to Huntley International Speedway? Uh, yep. Uh, we got uh, obviously Tinsica Wellington, MTF Finance, uh, JR Concepts, Allied Electrical, Dream Windows and Doors, uh, Macho Waker Top 10, Swayze Contractors, uh, Bridgestone Winery, Trade and Clearance, and Wellington Top 10. There he is, the 88 car of Josh Kahui, all the way from Wanganui via Wellington, isn't it? Yeah, mate, you got it. <laughs> there he is, Josh Kahui. Oh, over to you, Bianca. Hey, guys, so I'm down here. This guy needs no introduction. Jaden Ward, 99, at 99, what the heck, 971C. Harley Rob, yeah, well, he's at home probably watching. Hey, Harley, how are you doing? But, mate, you were fashionably late. You rocked in after the driver's meeting this afternoon. What was going on? Oh, I missed the ferry. Um, got delays there, mate, so I got held up. <laughs> Jaden, we all know you live in Palm, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, did you get just stuck in the roadworks? Yeah, lots of roadworks on the way up. We um, left a little bit late. We had the castle on the diner at 1.30 this morning. So, yeah, running fashionably late, but hey, we're here and we'll get into it. Yeah. Tell us, if it's on the diner at 1.30 in the morning, were there any issues that you had to iron out or was this just final testing? Yeah, we've had a few issues with our uh, electrical issues. We keep blowing coils and whatnot. So, Keith Stewart thankfully sorted that out for us. Went into the computer and fixed a few things. So, um, and, we, and we've got a new exhaust system this week too. So we wanted to tune all that up and get that running right. So, yeah, no, we're all under control. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, there's no pressure, of course. Do you, are you confident in the car, though? You're all good to go? You don't feel like, oh, God, there's just too many gremlins? Yeah, no, I'm very confident in that car. That car's awesome. Um, second nature to me, that thing. So, yeah, looking forward to getting out there tonight. And fingers crossed the car is 100% and we'll get free clean races. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, um, listen, we're going to wrap it up and continue on down the line. We've got so many cars to get through down this end, but listen, I'll give you the last word. You need to mention a couple of awesome sponsors that you have. 
Yeah, obviously, thank you. Big thank you to Malcolm and Megan from Suck It Up. Without them, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. Kiertek Automotive, that diff's been out of the car this week. The gearbox has been out of the car this week. It's had a major rebuild, so big thanks to Anton and the team at Geartech. Yeah. Um, AA Plumbing, um, who else we got? Track Grip, Helen Back Haulage, SCS Engineering, all the boys help out and get us where we are. So, yeah, thank you. Do you know what? I actually feel that, like I put more pressure on you guys when I answer, I ask you about your sponsors, and you have to rattle them all off, and the pressure that you feel when you're on the track. Yeah, it is, it is a bit of pressure because you you got so many and it's hard to hard to remember them all. But uh, yeah, it's a bit more pressure than being out there. <laughs> anyway, Jaden, always nice talking to you, mate. Uh, even though you did turn up late, fashionably late. But we'll head back down to you, Gabe, down the other end. Yeah, we're here with a 31 W car of Josh Patterson. Josh, first New Zealand Superstock Championships. How are you feeling, man? Yeah. Uh, we're actually pretty excited. The nerves are starting to kick in, but we'll be sweet, hopefully. <laughs> Obviously, bought the sun out. Not really used to that in Wellington, are you? <laughs> No, no, wind and rain. <laughs> yeah, I used to live there for two years, so I know exactly what it's like. Well, over 100 cars here, that's got to be a good feeling, isn't it? Trying to race with the best of the best. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, and that's the only way we're going to get better is racing with the best. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Obviously, goals for the weekend just at the first front. Want to qualify? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> um, yeah, just finish all three races and see where we're at. Should be good. And as well, you've got heaps of sponsors on your car. I want to thank you for getting all your way up here to Huntley International Speedway. Yeah, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Mike from F FH Group. He owns the car and um, lets us live out our dreams. So um, we can't thank him enough. Dad at CDC for all he does. Action tyres, vertex, lubricants and display works. And there is the 31 W car of Josh Patterson all the way from Wellington. Cheers, man. Good luck for the weekend, eh? Cheers, mate. Thank you. As we head over to you, Bianca. Yeah, hi, guys. I'm down here with the man of the moment. This is Ross Ashby. This is an absolute weapon, 38M. First time we've seen it seen you in it last night and you were off the rails quickest by far yeah no it's um obviously only a borrowed car because um mine's mine's out of action at the moment but um yeah, it's definitely a bit of a weapon it's a car that frankie wayman was driving so we all knew it was fast and um when i got the offer to drive it for Pollux, um i just jumped at the opportunity and yeah we got in it last night and it was it was a little bit off for at the start but we just worked on it I think I've probably done about six runs, and by after our sixth six run, it was just better and better. And um, yeah, we're doing mid 16, so we're happy with that. Mate, you've got to be happy with that. But tell us, how does it compare to your car? You said that it's a little bit broken. Did that happen at team? Yeah, I had, I had got a, bit, a lot of bit damage from Palmy team, so um, we've been work, we've been working away on it. And um, I mean, if I hadn't had this opportunity, we probably would have kept going and got it going. But um, with Pollock's being my main sponsors, um, they offered me the opportunity for this, so we sort of backed off the tank and worked on this last week and got this all prepared, and so I can't thank Thomas and Wayne from Pollock Cranes enough for the opportunity. Yep. Tell us, I mean, this might be a little bit of a loaded question, you might not be able to answer it right now, but there, is there any way that you might be able to do a bit of a change and get rid of the tank, or, I mean, you're a, you're a one of our tank drivers for God knows how many years, Ross. This is a totally different kind of car, different chassis, different feel, different speed, everything. Do you think this you could see yourself in this in the future? Um, yeah, like, it's like you just said. I'm, I've, I've been a tank man all my life. So I've raced. Um, it'll, it'll take a bit to sort of uh, get me out of it. Um, an, an option we have got is, is going for the engine type that these cars have got because obviously... Um, this one here's got got a lot more horsepower than I've got in the engine I've got in my tanker, um, and I think if we if we done that, um, I'd probably tanker probably be on the money anyway. So, short question is uh, at this stage I'd I'd probably just stick with my tanker because um, that's what I've got, and and I mean to shell out to get another car on the go is um is a lot of money. So I'll basically just roll with what I've got at this stage. And if I'm being honest, I don't think super stocks in New Zealand would be the same if you're not in a tank. But hey, we can have as much fun as this in it while we can, eh? Yeah, oh, that's right. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of tanks around now. And it was, it was a sad day this morning when we yeah. when we drove out and left it in the shed. But um, it is what it is, and I've just got to um, uh, get it fixed. I mean, it, it, I took a big hit at Palmy, and it looked yeah. after me. I, didn't, I walked away, didn't even get hurt. So, I, I mean, I owe a lot to my car, and I, and I bought that car myself, and sort of pride myself on my tanker so at this stage I'll just hang in with that yep. And we've got to admit I mean we have to address that hit, you just pulled hard right at teams down the front straight there, that was definitely the, the ballsy move of the night so like you say you feel safe in your tank, you know your tank we're going back to the tank. Yeah well I, d I just um, feel when my crew and everybody backs me up on it I just, if, you go to, if you're going to go to Palmy teams you need to go there and prepare to put your body and your car on the line if you're not you might as well sit up in the grandstand and eat hot dogs with everyone else. <laughs> so um, yeah. if you're not going to go there and give it give it your all and put everything on the line when you need to, 
I don't see why people bother going, but um, I might think twice again about doing a pull-out <laughs> to see how it goes, see if I need to or not. Well, I wasn't looking. I was like, oh, my God, what, what, how is he going to walk out of this? So we're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're, even though you're in another car, we, you know, appreciate that you're, the time that you've taken to explain all that to us, and we just wish you all the best of luck. Yeah, I, I mean, the car's, car's good, and um, I've been around long enough. I know, I know where I need to put it on the track. Yeah. It's just... Um, Hopefully the other 20 guys in the, in the heat can stay away from me, leave me alone and I'll be alright. Just leave you to it, eh? We'll all be good. Yeah, hopefully. And um, I mean, there's a lot of luck involved, so we'll just go out and do what we can do. And um, if, if we get through, yeah, it's all good. If we don't, well, we just roll with it and come back tomorrow night. Yeah. Listen, always nice to talk to you as always. Like we say, we wish you all the best of luck. Appreciate the time. We'll hopefully catch you up later, maybe on the podium, eh? Awesome, cheers. Hey guys, I've stealed um, Asha Rees. You are a very busy man, Asha. Everyone wants a piece of you today, so it's now my turn. I had to fight everybody off. But tell us, Asha, I mean, you are the defending 1NZ. You've had it for a number of years now. What's it going to take for these people to take it away from you? Oh, hey, it's probably going to take a lot, but at the same time, it's a bit of luck that could not go my way and it ends up someone else's. And at the end of the day, we all take the same risk. We put it best into our cars, and if it doesn't pull off, it's just what we got. Yeah. Tell us, Asha, I mean, you're not a nervous person. We've, we've spoken to you many, many a time before. We know you quite well now. I've never known you to be one full of nerves, but are they starting to set in now because you are the defending 1NZ? Nah, nah, there's no nerves in this game. I've been here my whole life, and, hey, I'm lucky enough to get the number at the moment and honoured to have it, but I'd be just as happy to see it to go to someone else, and, hey... If they've worked for it, they've worked for it and they deserve it. 100%. I was just saying earlier um, on today, Asha, that whoever does get that top position on the podium tomorrow night will be so deserving of it because the calibre of racer that we have here this weekend is just outstanding. Oh, 100%. There's 100 odd cars here that are just unbelievable. When you look at the dress of them, they just look perfect they, and they sound good. So hopefully those guys have put the work in the shed and they can pull off a number for themselves. I'm happy for anyone to have it as long as they've deserved it. It's good. Yep. And um, like I say, as long as they deserve it, when we say deserving, we, be, we mean good, clean racing, um, just get it done. None of this uh, business that everyone's been talking about in the past couple of weeks. Oh, definitely. It's got to be clean. And if it's not clean, it's got to be dealt with. Other than that, have fun and enjoy and let's put on a show. Asha, um, we wanted to speak to your brother and your dad. We can't find your dad. He's disappeared. He's probably out helping one of the many, many Reeds chassis that you have down here. So we'll cut back over to Ethan, who's standing just behind us. But hey, on behalf of myself, the Pitts team, and everybody watching, we really, really have enjoyed you being number one for this period of time. You have represented it so well. Uh, and we would just wish you luck. I mean, it's hard to defend again, but hey, mate, if anyone can do it, you can. Oh, cheers. Thank you. It's uh an honour to have it, and it'll be an honour to maybe defend it. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Absolutely, Asha, we'll let you get ready, eh? Hey, we're going to just swing around now. We've got Ethan standing over here, sorry. Um, Ethan, mate, you're, you're, you're quite relaxed. We just uh, spoke to your brother really quickly. You're the current... Um, sir, sorry, Michaela, we need to come over here, Ethan. Michaela's yelling at us. We're going to go <laughs> fully her later, eh? Hey, we'll give her a laugh. I'll just go on this side. Hey, um, what's it going to take? Ash is not full of nerves, you're never full of nerves either, but what's it going to take either to get another raise on the podium with the 1NZ to help Asher, yourself or your dad? Um, back to the nerve thing, there's always nerves, we sort of try and contain them. Um, definitely, definitely uh, a bit nervous and whatnot, but yeah, I say contain them back and hold them back. But uh, in terms of the podium thing, I mean, hey, we've got qualifying tonight, um, would be cool to see Ash go back to back. Would be cool to see another Reese car on the podium or Reese name or more, you know, Josh Prentice over there as well. Um, but in the day, if we all qualify and... Uh, Heat three rolls round in our favour or not in our favour. We'll be helping one of the one of the boys out to get home, and uh, yeah, if not, they'll be, they'll be having me. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% and we've seen that a couple of weeks ago I mean you guys, even though that Josh isn't family He's family and he's going to help you out 100% He's always putting his body and his line on the car to help you guys And vice versa, eh? Yeah, and I say he's not immediate family But he pretty much is family in Speedway World um, he's, he's part of our Gisborne Club as well as uh, as well as the Reeds clan He always has been and always will be as far as I'm concerned So if he's on points, we'll have him If we're on points, he'll have us, that's how it goes yeah. Of course, I'm a little bit biased. I mean, I'd love to see you win, Ethan, but hey, uh, I sponsor Josh, so I'd love to see him out there. He's so deserving. He's been, you know, doing the hard mahi with you guys for so many years. How cool would it be for him to make it up there? Yeah, no, it'd be awesome, and it was quite cool to see him over the 240s a couple of years back on the podium there. But uh, like I say, there's 100 other two competitors here that are uh, definitely keen for that, that one spot, and they are as, as committed, but Josh is definitely one of a kind in terms of commitment and, uh, and passion level, so he, he definitely deserves the podium, but like I say, so does everyone else, so it'll be good, be good.
Even if um, the Rees aren't up on podium tomorrow, I mean, you've got so many Rees chassis here. How good would it be if we had a Rees chassis one, two and three? Yeah, it would be pretty cool. Um, I mean, it would be cool to have a family one, two, three, but if we have a chassis on the podium, it's always a bonus. Um, but, I mean, hey, like I say, three race or three qualifying races tonight for each competitor and uh, we'll be out there trying to do what we can to get through and if not we'll help one of the boys in, in my group to get through and yep. we'll go from there. Yep. Listen, we're going to leave it with that, um, only because we need to, do, you know, do a few announcements upstairs. But like I say, you guys are in such hot contention. You're definitely the favourites of the track, of the country, anyone who's uh, watching at home. So good luck, Ethan, to all three of you. Please pass that on to Pete. He's not here. He's hiding from us. But good luck to you all. Yeah, no, and I just want to quickly add, um, big ups to the likes of Pitts and, the, and Jace for coming up here. Obviously, it ran out and never ran out flipping so far. <laughs> and just big, big, big hats off to Red and his team for once game persisting, putting this meeting on. Um, crack a day. Yep. Hopefully tomorrow we can draw some more crowd being a sit day and if not be on the live stream and you'll be watching us do what we do. So thank you. You ready? Let's go. Yeah, we're ready, right? <laughs> awesome. We'll head straight up, up upstairs for those announcements. Well, thank you very much, Bianca, and uh, great to hear that last hour or so chatting to the drivers and just uh, getting their thoughts on how it's all going to unfold uh, across the course of this evening. Uh, my name is Paul Hickey. Pleasure to be your lead commentator tonight here at Huntley International Speedway for the Pollock Cranes 2023 New Zealand Superstock Championships. We've got three of us up in the box. Craig Tonkin alongside me, who is the uh, regular commentator here at uh, Huntley Speedway. And Craig, how good is it to finally get this New Zealand Superstock Championship underway? Man, it's unbelievable. Big uh, big shout out and welcome to everyone here tonight. It's fantastic whether you're here on site or on the live streaming, but what a day, what a night, what a weekend. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it certainly is. We have got uh, just over 110 competitors uh, back there in the pits. They've done their grid draws. We are yet to see those, uh, but what we do need to explain uh, to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is just uh, obviously with the the delay in the meeting, we do have a few things to run, t uh, run through with regards to your programs and the groups tonight, uh, but Craig, just quickly, um, you know, it's been a, a long time coming. Exciting for the club to to make it happen tonight, and, and the weather's looking good. Oh, definitely is. I know we've we've been itching to 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 make this happen. It's been a long time, but um, yeah, as I say, looking out here, the weather we we couldn't have asked for anything better. It's fantastic. Talking to the guys, the the drivers, the crew, they're all raring to go. So now, nah, looking forward to it. It's going to be epic. <laughs> I tell you what, it's not just uh, them who are raring to go. <laughs> Every single person in the venue is raring for things to get underway tonight. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, as you did come in tonight, if you uh, grabbed yourself a race program, just to confirm for you that that race program, if you've brought that tonight from uh, from up at the merchandise area uh, or at the gates tonight, that is the race program that was originally printed for the meeting in early January. So all of the groups... Uh, and the write-ups and, and stuff, and they're not quite relevant and pertinent to this weekend. Uh, so as far as those groups in there go, those are no longer relevant. Also, if you printed the list of groups off the internet uh, earlier today or, or last night or a couple of days ago, there have been changes, Barry. Oh, yeah. Firstly, before we get there, Barry, welcome along. Nice to have you with us too. Yeah, yeah here we well, go. Nice of you to join me. I've yeah. been sitting here in the sunshine uh, <laughs> since it very early this afternoon and uh, enjoying every minute of it, I must say. All right, so, so the groups, um, like we say, are different to what's in the race program. And if you're sitting at home watching through the live stream, you, I don't know whether there's been any updates go up this afternoon, but they're certainly different to what was online yesterday. Yeah, and uh, that was it. There was, uh, you know, a few more withdrawals down to 113 cars, and unfortunately, quite a few came out of one particular group. So we finished up with some groups with 20, one with 16, and that that can't happen. So they've had to juggle them around. Uh, we've got five groups of 19 and one of 18 now. We are not far away from going racing here at Huntley International Speedway. Welcome along uh, to those who are, boy, at the turn one and two in the sun feeling for you guys well we know what it's like <laughs> it's like a sort of here in the commentary box but uh, hey we're not moaning because we'd rather have the sun than that uh, other weather phenomenon uh, that was called summer we are about to head down onto the infield that means stand up for the national anthem on this beautiful super stock sunny evening Ei hoa atua o nga iwi matara 
Atafakarongona me arohanoa ki ahua kote pai ki atoito atafai mana akiti amai ote aro. God of nations at the feet in the bonds of love we meet hear our voices we entreat God defend our free land God pacifics triple star from the shafts of strife and war make her praises heard afar God defend New Zealand Kia ora tato. The national anthem of New Zealand. Right, we uh, can hear the engines behind us in the pits. We are not far away from seeing the dirt fly. We've got two more groups to get through. The Barry Featherston group is what we are doing, and we do have the grids available now. Let's bring it on. They are here. We are here. It is time for the Pollock Cranes. 2023 New Zealand Superstock Championships qualifying night. To those who are here at the stadium, we welcome you along. And to those watching through the Pits TV, let's take a look at how they line up. In the Frank Van Runhoven Group Heat 1, Chad Ace, Shea Hambling on the front row, Gavin Tunnifar, Kyle Ashton on grids 3 and 4. Then we go to Seth McConchie and Wayne Hemi on row 3, Blake Adamson and Dale Robertson on grids 7 and 8. Ella McRobbie, former 1NZ stock car driver, sits on grid 9. Wayne Moss from Stratford on grid 10. Then Jack Myers and Paul Maybe on grids 11 and 12. It's Zane Dykstra, Jamie Ferguson on grids 13 and 14. The Grand Prix champion, Ethan Rees, 127G. Uh, sorry, the World 240s champion, 127G, Ethan Rees, alongside Paul Fazy, who starts on grid 16. Uh, then we've got Bunce, Stanaway and Barr to round us out at the back of this opening lineup for the Frank Van Vroenhoven Group, heat number one. And so these qualifying races tonight are 12 laps. They still make their way out the gate. Here comes this lineup of race cars. Paul Hickey and Craig Tonkin on commentary through the course of this evening. Expert comments and points and updates from Barry Brown. Pit side. Bianca and Gabe giving us those interviews and we have got Stu Russell on the mic tonight as well rushing up and down the pits giving us important updates on damage and who's in, who's out and where we stand across the course of this evening. There's a 351 of Paul Vasey uh, who's one of our uh, giveaway sponsors tonight. Uh, we'll let Craig tell us a wee bit more about that a bit later on this evening. Chad A sits on pole in the number four car. He'll be looking for a quick getaway from there was having a few issues at the practice initially uh, a few weeks back. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The green flag about to drop. The Pollock Cranes, New Zealand Superstock Champs qualifying. The Dutchie Group, heat one of three, 12 laps. And the starter's hands and we are underway. And it's Shea Hamlin who gets the initial jump from the outside, but then Chan Ace comes through nicely. The track a bit wet, straight out to the wall goes Seth McConchie. Dale Robertson gets caught in there, Wayne Moss as well. Quick move from Ethan Rees down towards the back. We've got one that's come to a stop uh, in the turn, but mobile now. So it's Chad Ace with Wayne Hemi, then Shea Hambling, Gavin Tunney Far. Right there. Hemi a wee bit wide, bounces off the concrete wall in the 591. Alan McRobbie with some issues. We've got the 15 car in the concrete wall. Down in turn three and four. And Shea Hambling's gone in there hard as well. So this track just catching a few of them out at the moment. 
But it's still Chad Ace. Oh, and he's going to overcook it. Chad Ace is the race leader. And he spins himself around. Wayne Hemi's going to take the lead now. Oh, we've got another cruncher down there as uh, Ferguson into the side of Seth McConchie. Seth McConchie's got some major back end damage in the 272, so he's going to have to retire and pull off to the infield. Got the 38V and the concrete down here just on the entry to turn one as well, Paul. Yeah, look, this, out of your vision. this track, uh, it's caught a few of them out, I think, with uh, the slippery nature of it. One who hasn't been caught out, though, Wayne Hemi, is motoring in the number 591. Had an early issue, I think it was lap two, when he ran out wide into turn three. Uh, but he is running first. Gav Tunnifar in second. Then it's back to Ethan Rees. Uh, sorry, Paul Vasey, then Ethan Rees in the top four. Then Hambling and Dale Robertson has made a good recovery from that initial uh, getting caught up in the opening turn. And he is up into sixth place. So the laps, we've had five, seven to go. Right, Zane Dockster has finally uh, got out. I think he's three laps down now, but at least he'll pick up some points and uh, ahead of those guys that are parked on the infield. Oh, and Paul Fazy's just spun himself around in the 3-5-1. Also caught out there for a moment was, uh, was Ethan Rees. So here's the race leader. The Red Walker, the 5-9-1 of Wayne Hemi. In behind Paul, maybe in the 15. Just easing off the gas a wee bit there. Dale Robinson clocking the fastest lap of the race so far in 18.736. Through comes James and Moss. On the infield, Jack Myers is gone. Seth McConchie on the infield. Ashton's gone infield as well. Yeah, Jack Myers only did two laps. I'm surprised we didn't notice some, something so bright go missing early. <laughs> well, there's been plenty going on. This track is catching a lot of these drivers out in the opening heat of the night. The Pollock Cranes Superstock Championships. And a change at the front. Wayne, Gav Tunnifar goes to the lead. Wayne Hemi ran wide, so Tunnifar's through to the front. Uh, Ethan Rees right there as well. Dale Robertson in the mix, getting real busy right up the front with four laps to go. So Tani Far, your race lead. Oh, wait, him, he's gone off song. Yeah, now, I think right front tyre possibly, in which case... He'll, he's got to pull off. Yeah, he, if it is a flat tyre, may just be suspension. We'll have a look this time around. So but, some issues there for Rees coming off the turn as well. Waiting for that white flag. There's still a couple to go. It is a flat tyre in the 591. So in theory, he's, he will, that's it, that's the rule now, isn't it? He, Love he, it or hate it. Yeah, he will get disqualified if he... Uh, White flag drops. One to go for Tanifa. He takes a punch from Rees. Ethan Rees goes to, through to the lead on the last lap. Dale Robertson, red lights are on. Reds are on. It is the last lap. So it's Gavin Tunnifar, Ethan Rees, Dale Robertson, Shea Hambling right there as well. Look how close they all are. One, two, three, four. Chad Ace has recovered up to fifth place. Seriously. Here we go. Is, is this to send Wayne Hemi off? That's the only thing I could uh, yep. imagine it is, yep. yeah. They, he's been sent to the infield. So what a start to the night, dominating the first race. And uh, that is now a DNF and zero points. Picking up springs and a few bits and pieces that have dropped out the back of the 24R. So, they, you know, there's two of my picks from this group gone, Wayne Hemi and Jack Myers, well, uh, they, both they, on the infield. They were two obvious picks to yeah, qualify, oh, oh, totally. weren't they? Exactly. So we've got Stu on the... Uh, Mike, as I mentioned, he'll be giving us uh, damage updates. We'll find out what the problem was there, obviously with the uh, 88 of Jack Myers, who pulled off very, very early in the race. So race leaders on the back straight. Here we go, Green and Tunny Far gets a little jump up the inside. Rees is out wide. Who's going to get the best run off here? It's going to be the Ethan Rees, one, two, seven. He'll take the chicken flag. Tight fight to the finish. That's a great recovery for Dale Robertson to get back up into third place after getting caught up uh, in that spin in the opening lap. Chad Ace, also early race leader, spun himself around but was able to recover to fifth place. 
All right, here we go. There's your top ten. Ethan Rees in first, Gavin Tunnifar in second, Dale Robertson, then Shay Hambling and Chad Ace. Uh, then we went Rebecca Barr, Alan McRobbie, Wayne Moss, Paul Vasey and Blake Adamson. Then Ferguson Bunts, uh, oh, then we're, these are going to be some DNFs here. Wayne Hemi uh, won't be in 13th, he'll end up with a DNF. Uh, so we'll take those top 10 as they stand. Um, just trying to look at the, the group we've just had. Uh, the just trying to look at some some of the big moves here. I think oh, Barry, you, you're looking at that, are you? No, uh, just looking there. Oh. See, we've, we've got Hemi sitting there in 14th at the moment, and Zane Dykstra 15th. So uh, Dykstra will obviously move up one place there. All right, so chicken flag for the one two seven of Ethan Rees. And he takes the chicken flag, and uh, he's actually one of those drivers that's on a qualifying streak. He has qualified for the last six New Zealand Superstock Championships. Stratford, Palmy, Auckland, Christchurch, Wanganui and Rotorua. And that's how you want to start this qualifying process tonight. So those on the stream getting some uh, replays from that opening hit. So there's Seth McCotchy getting turned around. There's Jack Myers. He was sitting right at the back of that. Look at that. Dale Robertson drops right at the back. Ethan Rees right at the back there as well. Uh, so some big moves, uh, so Barry's got the grid positions now. As we... Just trying to look here and see the 88 and what might happen there, no. So yeah, we saw a lot of drivers getting caught out there uh, early on in the piece. Shea Hambling running wide there and then into the uh, parked car of Paul Maybe. There's the Dykstra car ending up down in the concrete wall in turn one. So out come the cars for the next Heat, and this is the Red Wooten group. So let's take a look at how they're lining up. Brody James and Ron Ty on the front row. Hayden Chapman and Hilton Parker on grids three and four. Then we go to Josh Prentice, uh, the number five on grid five. Mackenzie Whitaker and Kahui on six, seven, and eight. Gary Lonigan, a winner last week in the team's champ for the stock cars. Out here in the super stock now on grid nine. Then Orr, Nielsen, and Mooney on grids 10, 11 and 12. Booker and Joblin, um, two famous uh, Taranaki names on grids 13 and 14. Then Wooten and Ashton, two famous names from the Waikato on the next row. Hay, Clark and Rumney wrap up the starting grid for the Red Wooten group heat one. Barry. Yeah, just looking at that first heat there, yeah, the, the biggest mover. Some certainly dropped back through the field and came through again. Yep. But as far as effectively gaining the bonus points, yeah, Ethan Reese, grid 15 to first, so plus 14. Down the other one in the double figures, Rebecca Barr from grid 19 to sixth, so plus 13. So great drive by Rebecca. And uh, that means with a couple of other starts, she's got a grid nine and a grid two. She can sort of hold her place in those. She's in a great position to qualify. Yeah, that's a good start for Rebecca Barr, as we mentioned earlier on. Three females have uh, entered this New Zealand Superstock Championships, and we've got uh, one of them out here in this one. Hard to miss the bright pink number 23R of Kyle Ashton. So this is the Red Wooten group. We talked about all of the groups being named after some of the legends of Waikato Speedway. Paul Wade and Jared Wade, New Zealand champions, Kevin Free, three-time New Zealand champion, Frank Van Brunhoven never quite got to that top step of the New Zealand championship, but one of the uh, real characters of Speedway through the uh, 80s and 90s, and of course the uh, Red Wharton group named after the a long time promoter here at Huntley. Who's probably done more laps around Huntley <laughs> Speedway <laughs> than all those other drivers yes. combined, I would think. Exactly. So. Uh, Barry Featherston, uh, also didn't, Barry Featherston there as well, as I was, uh, didn't mention him as we were making our way through. Another one who, what, three times two wins in. Yeah, he only contested the New Zealand Championship four times. Mm. He got a third. 
and three seconds, yep. and two of those seconds were losing runoffs uh, for first. Yep. And that's what he said. He should have learned from the first <laughs> one what not to do and uh, did exactly the same thing, got, got beaten again. But, yeah, third and three seconds, we're going racing. All right, here we go. This is the Red Wooten Group, Heat 1 qualifying at the Pollock Cranes. New Zealand Superstock Championships at Huntley International Speedway. And we are going. Brody James will lead them in. Oh, he's gone way too quick. Ends up out in the concrete. Chapman goes through to the lead. How about this? Look at the 5G car. How good does the Josh Prentice car look this weekend? We've got a couple going around. Oh, big bit of steel. I think we've got a side rail off. Uh, that Matt Nielsen's car. Wooten and Mooney caught up and down there. Car who he spun around. Oh, Brody James. That car is um, looking very second hand coming off turn four and not going anywhere. Jeez, I thought I saw a big bit of steel come off uh, a car over there. We've gone red now. Ah, oh. and around came the 599, the Thai car. Uh, Ron Ty, he was running up in fourth place and he's ended up piling into the back of those two cars uh, that have stopped down there. So Regan McKenzie uh, and Josh Prentice. Uh, the, also Josh Prentice has uh, piled in there as well into McKenzie's car. So we take a look around the track as they... 3-2-1, Hilton Parker currently sitting in second place now. He's moved up to second. And Damien Orr in behind him there in third. So, 2-4-7, Hayden Chapman is still your race leader. So, reminder, ladies and gentlemen, no live streaming from the crowd. If you are in the crowd, please no live streaming. No live streaming being allowed. Okay, we've got a replay coming up. So we can see McKenzie, and then uh, Prentice goes into the back of him, and then in comes Ty. So they're running at the front of the field. Just getting caught out there coming off turn number four. So we're going to take another look at that for those uh, watching our live stream tonight. So we see here, there's the stranded with two cars there, the James car. That's what sent Prentice wide initially, uh, and Chapman just gets through. So Prentice has taken the lead, and then Ty gets caught out down there as well. So it was the, the James car which was sitting down lower on the track. That's been the initial thing that's made Josh Prentice uh, run it a little bit wider, and then into McKenzie, the 49, uh, who was damaged there. So Josh Prentice in the five. We'll loop around. So he's lost a few spots. He was the race leader coming onto the pit straight. So now he's dropped down to. Jeez, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six spots uh, with that little incident. So just so you know, we are running 19 points for a win. 18 for a second place. But you have to finish the race to score any points. So if you don't cross the line, you, you could have done all but one lap. Could have been first for that entire distance. But I saw with Wayne him in that last one. He'll score zero points. I tell you what, the after the reds took him off. Hey, just looking at the um, the 87 yeah. car of Brody James, that bumper is well and truly whipped around his front. It looks like a mini stock bumper. It does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, green lights are go. And so problems for the 13 of Lucas Hay. He's uh, struggled a bit off the start. So Hayden Chapman is your race leader. Here's a big group of cars. James Clark there sitting in ninth place leads that group. Who's this? Oh, there's car who are getting caught out. Mooney just pushes hard. The two Wanganui cars having a coming together. So it's still Hayden Chapman, 247. Hay spun around in the number 13. Uh, on the pit straight. 247, your race leader. Hilton Parker with some pressure on him from the 81 of Damien Orr. Now, Parker runs wide. Damien Orr up the inside. Moves into second spot. T 
Tell you what, Kaylin Mooney and Matt Nielsen, they are trying to run hard up through the field after a few early mishaps in the opening heat. Oh, around goes Ty. We've got a two-time New Zealand champion out there in Simon Joblin in the 72. He's making some moves now up into the top six. Maybe it's seventh spot for the 72. Oh, and Ty just gets himself moving again, so Ron Ty has dropped right back through the field. He's lost well over a lap in the 599. So 247, 81. Here comes Hamish Booker in the 82. Looking on the pace as well. He's up into fourth place. So the race leader coming up to put a lap on Kendall Ashton in the 23, who was the lap record holder here at Huntley Speedway. We've got eight laps done, four to come. So still 247. Just holding it comfortably at the moment. It's been a good drive from Hayden Chapman at the front of the field. But Damien Orr is closing that gap. The Aucklander came onto the scene a couple of years ago in the Super Stocks, started traveling. And has been there or thereabouts. Just gets it a wee bit wrong there though. There's going to be a lap to go. With the white flag out. And here we go. Last corner lunge from Damien Orr. Can't get him though. And Chapman will take the chequered flag. So the Red Wooten Group, heat one. Oh, some issues there. It's the 15 of Ethan Whitaker. A few pops as he came around onto the pit straight there. So your unofficial top 10, Hayden Chapman, 247A, takes the win. From 81R, Damien Orr. Then Hamish Booker, 82S. 321W, Hilton Parker in fourth, Josh Prentice. Early leader rounds out the top five. It was then James Clark, Gary Lonigan, Simon Joblin, Kaylin Mooney, and Matt Nielsen to round out the top 10. There is 11 down, 19, and the fastest lap of the race in that one, a 17.279 from James Clark. So we'll get some analysis and thoughts on that one from Barry once he's uh, Worked all of that out. What a lineup in that one. Yeah, certainly. I think the uh, biggest mover at the quick glance was um, uh, where are we? 70, 72 Simon Joblin uh, yep. from 14 up to 8. So, yeah, nobody made a huge amount of ground in okay. that one. All right. No, no major moves there. I suppose we are talking fields of 18 and 19. Yes. So, it, it is a little bit different from a, somebody moving from a 26 up to a 10th, mind you. Um, we, may, we may see those kind of moves happen. It is the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Superstock Championship. Reminder about the merchandise uh, here up in the uh, turn three, up in the back corner in turn three. There is the official New Zealand Superstock merchandise that you can grab. Of course, last weekend uh, here at Huntley, we had the New Zealand Stock Car Teams Championships. There's also some of that remaining uh, merchandise and that is for sale this week uh, this weekend at a discounted price uh, so you can head up and check out the merchandise uh, so just seeing some replays here I did wonder what happened to uh, Big Rumney uh, son of former New Zealand champion Lyle Rumney just got caught up in uh, some of that early mix up there is Prentice when he was leading the race and then was never able to really recover from that he uh, only picked up another spot or two um, after that initial drop, Kaylin Mooney and Josh Carr, who were the two V cars inadvertently kind of coming together there. All right, so I think we're going to head down to the pits and uh, we've got heat one winner.
Bianca is with Ethan Reeves. I sure am. Hey, Ethan, sorry, I'm pulling you away from Josh and your busy business, so we'll make it really quick. Mate, you came off the back and took that away very convincingly. Well done. Oh, yeah, sort of, well, sort of handy, really, everyone is sort of spinning out and crashing into each other, but I was just trying to keep it low and carry on, but... Uh, Pretty hard work out there, especially you've got a couple of guys out there that don't know what they're doing and they're just full noise and it makes it hard for everyone else that's trying to go good, but that's what it is. I'm happy with the win, don't get wrong, but it's definitely going to be challenging the next couple, that's for sure. Well, Ethan, you're coming off the middle and the front in your next couple away, so that's going to give you a little bit more of a head start. Yeah, like I say, that was my, that was my back grid, so it's always a, a bonus to get a good one out the way first and then we'll go from there, but like I say, it's going to be pretty tough out there and we'll just have to sort of take it race by race now. Yeah, mate, good luck, put it there, great win. All right, thank you, Bianca, uh, Ethan Rees. I'm just uh, looking back here. I think we had, in 2021, did we have the, I think we had the Grand Prix here um, in Huntley, and Ethan Rees was the winner of that. That was Ethan yes. Rees, Asher Rees, and Adam Joblin. It was just after Asher. Asher was the new New Zealand champion. That's right, yeah. Uh, and then we came here, and Ethan It was only about two or three Prix. days later because of the uh, <laughs> six days we spent in Rotorua. Uh, so, look, we, we know that Ethan Rees, well, nobody... Second guess is the fact uh, that he knows how to win. You've, you've got a uh, few more notes there, Yeah, Mary? a couple of others, yeah. Hamish Booker, I hadn't actually noticed. He'd uh, plus 10, 13th to 3rd okay. in that last one, so a great run. But James Clark, who uh, I was saying last night, I was expecting a good run. He was uh, grid 18 up to 6, so biggest mover, James Clark. All right, let's take a look at the Paul Wade group, and it is the two six cars on the front. Uh, we've got Paul Gaskin and Liam Marsh on one and two. Then it's the new South Island champion, Alex Hill on grid three, Maddie Wise racing out of Palmy on grid number four. Uh, and then we go to Dylan Ashton uh, on grid five, and Tom Hughes, the 707 on grid six. Jordan Deere and Zach Lenny on grids seven and eight. Uh, then it's Tom Cooper and Philip Gargan on grids nine and ten. One of the local stars, Aaron Alderton, 218H, alongside uh, is there on grid 11. We then go to Eustace Harris, the defending champion, Asher Rees, will start his opening defence on grid 15. Tyler James is there on grid number 16. Then we go Dykstra, Dickey and Hunter to round things out in the way they line up. Hey guys. Yep, Stu, go. Yeah mate, hey, I just jumped down, down the uh, pits at the far end. Jack Myers is there just changing his steering arm on the 88. It actually uh, broke up on the steering box, so it's in a real annoying place, but they're getting on the job. Wayne Hemi, obviously, uh, just that outside front flat, and uh, he's pretty gutted because the car was still hooking up and handling quite nice too. And the Ashton car uh, broke a right rear shock, and it's done. Uh, it's cracked a weld in the uh, cross member of the rear of the chassis, but that should be fine. They'll weld that back up, but uh, yeah, a bit gutting there for Mr Hemi. Yeah, uh, it certainly is. It's... <laughs> It's one of those rules I think everybody kind of oh, ums and ahs over, and especially, and, and I think Barry, we, we were talking about this earlier on, and yeah. you know, do, do you say, look, at a New Zealand Championship, let's forget about that rule, but it's a tough one, isn't it? You, you kind of can't, I, I think what Wayne did, slowed right down and was driving around out by the wall. Trying to hide it, yeah. Trying to hide and it. He, he's, not, you, he's not the first person to try that. No, and you also, of course, you're not flicking the dirt up over the fence no. if you're right by the wall either. Which so. is what the issue is, isn't it? That, yes. That's why they've, they've changed, the, they've put this, brought this rule in. Okay, uh, here we go, it is the Paul Wade group, and oh, they are going to do, do a, a lap, Paul Gaskin uh, will lead them away. Uh, yeah, so that, that's the rule. If, if you puncture on one of your outside tyres, you have to retire to the infield. Yep. And that, that is because the cars are still trying to go fast and the dirt was being flicked up into the crowd. For Wayne Hemi, his car was hooking up big time. He was race leader. He was clearing away from everybody. That happens. A tangle up with the back marker. And... Uh, and so he had to retire. So it's the two sixes on the front. Paul Gaskin from Wellington and Liam Marsh in the 6R car from Rotorua. They will lead the group away. All right, here we go in the starters' hands. It is the Paul Wade group, 12 laps, heat one of three. Oh. And the green flag drops and we've got 12 laps. And again, here's this push and there's a few of them out to the concrete. Oh, New Zealand champion up the wall. The 1NZ rides high up the concrete. He's going to come down. 
that wing though, look at that. Is he going to be able to see out of there? The New Zealand champ, the defence, almost up and over and out in turn number one. He's got a puncher. Is the inside? No, it's just some, some damage. The car's still running all right. We've got those two cars stranded up in the corner. But the one NZ is really struggling. He's got a flat inside front, Tasha Rees. Out front, though, it's the New Zealand champion, Alex Hill. He runs it wide. Jordan Deere up the inside. Liam Marsh, 6R, hasn't moved. Now he is. And now he is mobile. 581. Jordan Deere, the race leader from the 95 of Alex Hill. Well, Hill just gets it a little bit wrong through the turn. Oh, so does Jordan Deere's got a problem. The 581. Again, is it a puncture? Yeah, is I it? think right rear. Right rear's gone in the 581. Because, oh, we got, who's this? Someone's just, uh, Aiden Eustace. His back end has collapsed in the 97. Has it ever? That is, uh, that car's riding low, baby, riding low. Okay, so that's kind of changed things up. Alex Hill, the 95, your leader from Manny Wise in 136. Paul Gaskin in six, and he's got issues too. So Paul Gaskin runs wide, out to the concrete wall in one and two, loses four or five spots. Aaron Alton and just slammed into the concrete wall between turns one and two. Oh, Eustace is back underway. The 97 car is mobile again. Yeah. So that shock completely away on the 97 car. So the one NZ Asher Rees is now up into 12th place. He's going to dive up the inside of the 33. Robbie maybe. Started from grid 15, so he's actually made progress despite the state of the car. So looking for our race leader. And it's the new leader, Matty Wise, has gone to the front. He's got a couple of back markers between himself and Alex Hill as well. So 136, 95 and 89. Tyler James has moved his way up into third place. Tom Hughes, not far behind, as Ashton runs it real wide in uh, turn number four. Ashton put a bit of pressure on Alex Hill for second place as they came off turn number two. So there's this little battle for second place. Onto the pit straight, 95, 422. Then it's back, a back marker in there and Philip Gargan who's a lap down. So white flag, next time around for our race leader. There it is, Matty Wise. He's got himself a good enough buffer here. Shouldn't have too many obstacles in front of him. You can see that gap back to the 95 as Wise just takes it nice and easy. Through turns three and four, one, three, six, P. will come home and get the checkered flag as 33 Robbie maybe pulls to the infield as well. So Robbie may be a late retirement. Aaron Alderton ends up with a DNF. And another big name falling by the wayside in Jordan Deere. Asher Rees, the defending champ, home in 10th place. Yeah, still not, not the worst, I guess, from grid 15. He's still made a bit of progress there anyway. All right, let's take a quick look at the uh, 10. Matty Wise takes the win, Alex Hill in second, Dylan Ashton in third, Tyler James 89G in fourth place, then another good result for an Auckland runner, Tom Hughes 707A home in fifth place. Paul Gaskin from pole position, few issues out there, drops back into sixth place, Gary Hunter up into seventh, Zach Harris 119 in eighth place, Elias Dykstra, then the one NZ of Asher Rees, boy oh boy that was so close uh, for Asher Rees going up and over in that opening corner and uh, well, the wing of that car, well, I said about the uh, wing that he initially had lined up for this one, the, uh, the big UK style fin, that only lasted one meeting uh, before it got banned. And well, that wing there, looking all nice and smart, that's lasted quarter of a lap. Yes, yes. So they'll have a spare one sitting in there, no doubt, but uh, 
not a bad recovery. He's going to need a couple of good uh, good races from his grids five and ten, though. Yeah, he is. Okay. All right. We're going to. Oh no, we're about to head down to the pits shortly. Uh, Bianca with another interview. Good drive from Maddie Wise in the one three six, um, and takes first blood in that opening heat. Right, let's head back down to the pits and Bianca is with Damien Orr. I sure am, right down the far end of the pits with Damien Orr, not taking away the first but very lucky second, that's still a good cater points for you Damien. Yeah, I'm stoked to um, come away in second and with such a good field as well, you know, it was good to get that under my belt in the first one and hopefully the next couple are clean. Yep. Talk to us about the track, it looks like absolute chaos through there. Uh, it's just sort of suss it out when you go round line up yeah. and um, it looks wet as down by the pole line so you never go down there you know yeah, yeah. you're only going to justify and, and lose out yourself so yeah I just hung out wide and kept it clean or well, tried to. Worked in your favour mate I tell you what so that was your middle your middle start next you're off the back and then you're off the front so still a good track to race on but of course like you say the competition's hot and heavy. Yeah come the next race they eh, will be down by that pole line and, and be getting into it it's getting quite slick up there high line so Exit of four is quite slick, so you get no drive off there. So we'll be trying to stick down low and just hopefully move forward in this next one. Yeah, mate, keep it low. Good on you. Well done for your second. Cheers, guys. It doesn't matter how hard the job is, we suck it up and get it done. No matter how dirty our hands have to get, we suck it up and get it done. Suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Out for suck, say, suck it up. Suck it up, suck it up, out for suck, say, suck it up. Suck it up and get it done with suckitup.co.nz. The St Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Can Do Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the Kinner is brought back to the purpose-built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Can Do Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Can Do Fishing Kinner, Fish or Power. Can Do Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you. Right, I'll just jump yeah. in real quick. Brody James is out for the night, so that's the. I'll just quick make sure the right car, a 7G car. The old front ends rent, rip, uh, ripped round on the right hand side. Yep. And Josh Prentice, they've just um, pushed the bumper out on that. I guess you'd say they overextended it, brought it back, welded up in place in the 5G. Just having a quick look at the 1NZ. Uh, they got the axle stands out. The wings actually already back up in place. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. So uh, Asher and the team getting to work on the 1NZ car. All right, a lot well, of suspension well, damage. I'm going to head down the other end and catch up with Jordan Deere in that because split way. Awesome. Thank you very much. Those pit updates. We love getting those through from Stu. Right, let's take a look at how we are lining up here. The 461B is on pole. 27W, 5R. And then 9R is not Brent Stewart. It is uh, Robbie Morris driving the 9R car. Kerry Remnant and Scott McEwen on grids 5 and 6. We've then got the 17 uh, on grid 7 and 9G on grid 8. Jamie Hamilton hooking up last night. Marshall and Marks on 9 and 10. Podium finish last week for Bryce Marks uh, at the uh, GP. Dale Stewart on grid 11 and Cody McKee on grid number 12. Uh, then we go to another former 1NZ, Randall Tarrant on grid 13, Jeff Kite 93H on 14, then it is Matt Pickard and Bryce Steiner on 15 and 16, and wrapping up the Jared Wade group heat uh, number one on the grids, we will have Mitchell Joplin and... Hemingway, Todd Hemingway in the 99M. Uh, look, for, he's been for mine. Still one of the quickest cars in the country this year. Uh, we'll look and see what he can do uh, from down the back of the grid. That's right, yeah, so he's coming down to the bottom gate here. So, yeah, sitting on grid 12. We well, should be sitting on grid 12. Yep, so you can just see there why the, the rest of the, these three cars just kind of hanging back. Uh, that should be... Uh, jumping in there, so they're just waiting. Here we go, and the three minutes is underway. The crew getting over now. Uh, Cody McKee um, out of Auckland. Got to say, last week, Barry, we had the New Zealand 
Okay. Um, I think we're going to head down to the pits. Right, we're going to catch up with the New South Island champion and uh, winner, Alex Hill. Yeah, mate. Quickly, while we've got the three-minute bell for Cody, hey, um, we're down here with the all-important mud scrapers. They're like the most important people on your crew right now. Yeah, yeah, no, they're going hard, cleaning it all up, ready for the next race, so it should be mud. Well, if that's the only thing that's uh, going on down here, then we know that there's no damage and you're good to go for your next race. Yep. Yeah, no, just a quick, yeah, just throw some tyres at it, some fuel and a um, quick bolt check and we'll be set to go. So Alex, I mean, how does that feel to come away with your second place? I know you started off third, so you, you advanced one place, but that's still a good uh, pack of uh, points for you. Yeah, no, it was pretty good. Eh? I'm kicking myself a little bit. I had the lead for a fair bit of the race, but um, especially off the start, got a big shunt into one, but I um, managed to keep it together, swing some laps together and um, get the lead for a while. And then, yeah, um, my mistake, yeah, uh, washed a bit wide, or like cut down low into the wet patch and washed wide a few laps and um, lost a few places. But, yeah, no, pretty happy to stay in the top two and, um, yeah, advance forward. Hey, mate, we have to uh, run back to the track, but, hey, good luck for the rest of the evening. Cheers, mate. Yeah, Alex Hill has been one of the regular visitors up here to the North Island uh, over the last couple of years from a South Island point of view, and uh, it's a good start for him in his chase for a New Zealand championship. Right, here we go. This is the Jared Wade group. 12 laps, heat number one. And the 461 sits on pole, Brett Kelly. And alongside Simon Davis in the starter's hands, and we are go. Oh, here we go, look out, the concrete down there. Nicholson maybe gets piled in there in a hurry. Bryce Steiner's gonna get caught up down the back with uh, Todd Hemingway in the 99. 17, a little bit uh, crossed up. We've got Davis out to the concrete wall in turns three and four. But it's Kelly, then Remnant. Kerry Remnant looking up the inside. Pickard is up into third place. Then Dale Stewart in the 94, Robbie Morris in the nine. Then five, Logan Nicholson maybe recovers from his firing into the concrete wall. No, actually, I think that might have been the 93 maybe that was uh, that car that went hard into the concrete. Problems for the 57 of Dylan Marshall, pointing the wrong way, sitting in the concrete wall in turn three. You see him there, and he's uh, dropping down the pack. He's only completed one lap. Needed to find a spot to get out of there. So Kerry Remnant, your new race leader in the 19. And opening up a bit of a gap. On Brett Kelly. Picard moves through into second place in the 307. Three wide coming off turn two. Nicholson, oh, we got a little rub there as uh, Robbie Morris got caught up, and that just sends him out to the concrete wall. That was a tangle up with Randall Tarrant in the 66, the former New Zealand champion, as he looks to make his way up. He's up into sixth, uh, seventh place now in the 66A. The two Auckland team cars are doing battle there together, Randy T and Cody McKee as Dale Stewart just ran it a wee bit wide in the 94 car, coming off turn four. Doesn't lose a spot though, so it's still Kerry Remnant. 19M, your race leader. 461 drifts wide, Brett Kelly. As Dale Stewart passes his old car. That was the car that Dale Stewart was running at the beginning of the year, the 461. Now Dale Stewart, 94, up into second place. This is coming up to complete nine laps. The 15B of Scott McEwen got some damage to the inside rear, still continuing to circulate. Again, he can because it's the inside. Likewise with Dylan Marshall in the 57. Those two running down though in 17th and 18th place. Simon Davis still on the infield. Uh, so that'll be a DNF and zero points for the 27 car. Race leader, Kerry Remnant out front. This is a great battle for second, third and fourth. It's now Picard, Kelly and Stewart. A lap ago it was Stewart who was the lead car. Just got it wrong there again and here comes Randy T to put a bit of pressure on the Rotorua driver. White flag is out. One to go. And here is the man in the Pollock Swanson car, Kerry Remnant. 
Long time stalwart of the Superstock scene, never been on the podium at the New Zealand Championships. Can he make it happen in 2023? That's the start he wants in qualifying at least. 19M, Kerry Remnant takes the win. And a couple of big late moves from Randall Tarrant has got him up into fourth. So we'll let the dust settle on that and take a look at your unofficial top 10. 19M, Kerry Remnant takes the win from 307K, Matthew Pickard. Brett Kelly out of the Hawks Bay, 461 in third. Then it's the former New Zealand champ, 66A, Randall Tarrant in fourth. Dale Stewart rounds out the top five. Then 9G, Jamie Hamilton. 9R, uh, that is Robbie Morris. Logan Nicholson, maybe. Cody McKee and Scott Joblin uh, rounding out the top ten. Jeez, Jamie Hamilton, I didn't even see Jamie Hamilton out there. There is just so much going on on the track and so many stars to look at. I tell you what, there's so much going on in the pits as well. I just jumped down the far end and they've actually discovered that the uh, steering box has gone on the 6W car, but to uh, get to it, they've got to pull the radiator and all that out. So they get to that. Not sure if he'll be out in the next race, but either way, working on it. Uh, 88 Jack Meyer is going to head out in the next one. They're bolting that all back together. Jordan Deer, right rear was gone on that one. No uh, suspension, just the right rear. But yeah, those tyres are really catching out some top runners. They are. Thank you so much for the update in the pits. We've got uh, Craig Tonkin. He is out and about as well. Uh, he's got some giveaways. He's up doing that in the crowd right now. Not sure whether he ended up with a microphone or not. Uh, but look out. No, he didn't. He's, he's back. You've been out there and done some of those, have you, Craig? Yeah, mate. It's uh, been fantastic. Just giving away a whole lot of giveaways from Repco. So big shout out to, uh, to the guys from Repco Huntley. Thanks for that. Um, now, I will be coming around shortly and uh, I'm going to have a question for you. You need to be able to tell me which stock car is, uh, is sponsored by VZ Engineering. And I want you to be around about 16 to 18 years old and uh, be interested in welding because I might have a welding question for you as well. But uh, yeah, I'll be popping around probably after the next race and uh, I hope that we'll have a mic with me so I'll let you know where I'm waiting. Thank you, Craig. Uh, so Barry, you've uh, taken a look through that one, and uh, what have you got? Well, it's the first race we've had where we sort of haven't had one of the superstar drivers score a DNF on mm. the first three races, 88P, 591P, 581P, yeah, all Palmy cars, all that you would have expected, not just to be a qualifier, but a potential winner at the end of the weekend, all, all scored a DNF, but that one, yeah, good to see Kerry Rennan get a win, uh, like you say. Hasn't been on a New Zealand Championship podium in all these years. Uh, won a team's, won a Grand Prix many years ago, I seem to remember. Yes, he did. Uh, was, was that in Gisborne, I think it might have been, that he won that yeah, a few years I think back? It, I think it could have been. And, uh, so, uh, yeah, good to see him uh, get a win first up. He's done a lot of laps around this Huntley track. And, uh, boy, you, you can see the... Uh, the pounding of the super stocks at the speed they throw them into the corners how black the entry to turn one and we can see now uh, turn three same thing turn three yeah where the water truck's just about to go it's just gone black with the weight of uh, throwing those cars in sideways 1500 kgs heap of horsepower all right let's take a look at how they are gridding up it is uh, Cody Chatfield uh, who is in the 741. Remember back originally it was supposed to be Jared Wade driving yes. the uh, the Silver Bullet. Championship winning car on pole position. Richard Gaskin outside him on grid two. Then we go to AJ Axtons and Brad Cox said the Rotoru appearing on grids three and four. Uh, on to the next row, it is Thomas Van Amsterdam on grid five, and then the 15A of Carl Pegg on six. Brendan Ty and Luke Irvine make up row number four. It's the Barry Featherston group. First heat, Tyler Walker, another former 1NZ on grid nine, and the new New Zealand Grand Prix champion, Tim Ross, in 144G on grid 10. Costello and Ward are on grids 11 and 12. Shane Malsop and Joseph Carter, grids 13 and 14, and behind them are Daniel Burmester, and also in the 717, so a change here, we've got Dan Pollock 
uh, driving the 717 this weekend. And then the back three, we're going to go Mike McCarthy, Quinn Ryan and Tyler James to wrap up the Barry Featherston grid. Um, we've just had word that the 24R Ashton car is out uh, for the night. So that is Kyle Ashton. He's out for the night with uh, some rear end issues. Well, yeah, we saw that in that opening heat, didn't we? Uh, so Cody Chatfield will lead this field away from pole. AJ Axton's uh, behind him. Just harking very quickly back to that uh, last group, the Jared Wade group. Matthew Pickard in the 307K started grid 15, finished second. So one, one of those names that uh, people wouldn't have looked at a lot coming into it. Yep. And we've seen a lot of these uh, hot shots so far. We've had DNF. These guys like Matthew Pickard with a drive like that. Got a couple of grid draws, good grid draws to come. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're going to see some new names in that final 26, I think. Oh, oh, and look, you know, I, th I think we are tonight. And, and we've had this conversation, Barry, off mic about some of the stars who aren't here. Obviously, let, let's talk Keegan Levine, yeah. um, who was, uh, you know, here last weekend. Uh, so, and then with him not coming, Ethan Levine's not come. So, those are two who you would expect to yes. be on the podium, uh, uh, to be in the finals field. To be field. in the finals, yeah. Um, the retirement of Jason Long, if he, you know, he would have been in the finals. Uh, 3NZ Mitch Vickery choosing to take the rest mm. of the season off after a big crash. You'd expect him to be in the finals. William Humphreys has taken a season off. You'd expect him to be in the finals. Uh, well, there's somebody else. We had six names earlier on, you know, or who would be first picks yes. to be in the finals. You take them out, and now you, you mention your Jordan Deere, Wayne Hemi, um, who have fallen by the wayside, Jack Myers. And Jack Myers, yeah. You know, there's, there's 10 cars, 10 drivers who you would have expected to be in the finals. Somebody else has to be in those spots. Well, that's right. Those three already, the 88P591 and the 581, they'll be looking at the rep charge yeah. tomorrow night already. Barry Featherston Group, it is heat number one. Chatfield and Gaskin on the front row. 12 laps, three heats tonight for qualifying for the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Superstock Championships. A couple of former 1NZ stock car drivers in this one. There's that cruncher into the concrete wall, almost up and over. And that's going to take those two out. It's, I think it's uh, the Tyler James, and that's Tim Ross, who's got caught up under there. Luke Irvine, the number four R car, that is red. Surely we're going to go red here. Surely. Because here we go, this is going to happen. Oh, that was close. Like, they're not going anywhere, are they? No. What? Like, surely. Not without help, anyway. No. Tim Ross desperately trying to get out. Cody Chatfield, your race leader, from AJ Axton's, then tie. Now we go red. Oh, just as another car comes in behind it sideways. Okay, sorry there. Um, it's the Carl Pig car. The boat that I thought I called it is uh, Tyler, Tyler James, I think. Uh, sorry, Trent James. Both with the white, the, the Rees cars, the white bit of blue and red on them. Uh, but it is actually the uh, 15A of Carl Pegg. So Tim Ross, oh look at that. You, you go from the high yes. five days ago of winning the New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix. Uh, and now you don't even get a lap into qualifying for the New Zealand Superstock Championships. Here's something for you, Barry, while we've got a bit of time. Yeah. Um, uh, last week in Auckland, uh, Bryce Marks on the podium, second place at the New Zealand Superstock Grand Prix. Um, when, who do you think was the last Auckland Superstock driver to be on a podium at a Speedway New Zealand event, a Grand Prix, a New Zealand Champs, a North or a South Island Championship? I'd like to think there's been one since day 10 into 1989, hasn't there? Yes, there has. One. Well, I don't know. No. But, uh, OK. You've actually said his name. Dave Tennant was the last Auckland registered superstock driver to be on a podium at a Speedway New Zealand event when he was on the podium at the New Zealand Grand Prix in 1999. Oh, OK. So it's been 24 years Jeez. since an Auckland driver was on a podium. Uh, and Bryce Marks did it. Uh, last weekend, which was uh, which was great to see. Yeah, it certainly was, and uh, yeah, won that won that run off in good style. Uh, one that's not going to do any good this weekend, though. No, Dan Pollock walking away from the 717 already. 
parked that up. So uh, he was going good in practice last night too. Each time he went out, turned in plenty of laps. And uh, yeah, he, he was into the 16 second bracket wow. by the end of the night and there was only a few doing that. So I wonder what's happened in that car to get him out. Right, we've just had word the 6R car. So that is Liam Marsh has been excluded from the meeting for not apply, not putting on the right safety gear. So that's obviously been checked after the race because he did go out there and race. Uh, he's now been excluded from the meeting. Yeah, I believe uh, helmets, they basically, they don't get checked before the race. They can check them any time during the meet. Yep. If it's not right, you're gone. All right, so we're back underway. The 741 was your race leader. He's going to run wide there, coming off the turn. So AJ Axton's 14R up to the lead, tie right on his tail. Then it is Chatfield and Mark Costello. So Mark Costello ran well. Oh, we got Brad Cox hit around down in turn number three. And four, stranded across the middle of the track. Uh, Mark Costello was here last weekend in the support classes for the teams racing and uh, looked really quick in the 198. I think that's red lights probably just to retrieve some of the uh, car number four, which is dropped off by the uh, exit gate. Oh, and for, for Brad, the pits down here. Brad Cox said um, at a stop up in turn three and oh, four. as well, okay. So yeah, there's just multiple parts of bodywork being thrown across the pit gate there. And uh, just as it went red, he actually slammed into the wall again between turns one and oh. two. So, but I think it was in the area where there was already no bodywork left on it. So. So as it stands at the moment, the race leader is the 14. Uh, down there in turn four, 14, 669, then back to the 198, 741, 46, so your top five. So again, a reminder, as far as official results go, uh, we have been told that they will go up on the Huntley International Speedway Facebook page. So look for those uh, official results there. They may be just pictures of the sign-off forms from the referees uh, and from the electronic lap scoring, but they will be going up on the Huntley International Speedway page. Then as we do move into round two and round three uh, in the commentary box, we will get that in updated info. So we will be able to keep you updated on points and how they stand through the course of the night as we look for the top four only, remember? Yeah. Even though the groups have shrunk in size a little bit, Paul, it's still still not easy, is it? No. Look, um, a, a DNF, as we've seen some of those guys have, to come back from a DNF to still finish top four, meh. Yes. Uh, highly unlikely. Um, you could maybe, because the groups are now 18, 19, you could maybe afford a bad one. Uh, if you could call Asher Reese's 10th place as an example, it, it is quite. It is a bad finish. It, it was you, a bad finish, you, you but do, he did still make ground yeah, from he where he started. He so, um, you know, but, but not, yeah, you'd definitely normally be looking in, in a group this size, in a field this size, you'd be wanting to be to feel safe, be kind of having three top seven finishes, maybe an eighth. Yeah. But I did. Asher, was it Asher Reese who did the same thing at the, the World Two Forty this year? Yeah. Had a bad first heat and then won the next two from memory and, and scraped in. Yeah. So uh, mm. I mean, yeah, he's he's got the quality, the car, the talent to do it. Yep. Not everybody has. He's not the only one that has. But yeah, we have seen him do that before. We have a bad heat one, and uh, lucky it was his back grid, I guess. And uh, yeah, he's got a couple of more forward grids, so he probably does need a couple of wins mm. to uh, secure that place in the top four. Um, yeah. 20% of the time, the defending champion doesn't qualify. Well, that means 80% of the time they, they do. do. Yep. So. Uh, yeah, we've certainly seen a few that haven't, that's yep. for sure, over the years. They, uh, sometimes they're just a target. Um, remember down at Stratford when Jared Wade won, Wade Hemming was just targeted in every heat as defending champion. Oh, the race leader runs it wide as he got tangled up there with Shane Malsop, who's a lap down. And so that's let Brendan Ty through to the lead. So 669 is your race leader. More of the number four bodywork comes off the Rotorua car.
669, Brendan Tyre running hard and fast at the front. The two Rotorua cars battling for second now. 14 and 198. On oh, they tangle! Quinn Ryan gets caught up in there. Who sneaks through? So Costello continues through. Richard Gaskin has snuck through. Daniel Burmester is through. Quinn Ryan, he's dropped big time. He's dropped uh, down to eighth place, was running up at fourth. Yeah, he'd come from grid 18 too, yep. so he'd made a huge amount of ground, Quinn Ryan. Yep. Uh, he's probably, he's running out of laps to pick anything up here. So Jaden Ward now has jumped up into second place through that melee. Brendan Ty not being challenged. The only car that's really challenging him is the, the one now that's a lap down, Shane Malsop, who he's got some issues with. So it's 669, down the main straight he goes. He's got the length of the straight over Jaden Ward, uh, the former 1NZ stock car driver. Can he add? A New Zealand Superstock Championship to his CV. Certainly got the talent, the pace, and the race craft to do it. Part of that successful Glen Eagle side and Palmy. Oh, oh no, he's blown a tyre, he's blown a right rear, Jaden Ward. And he pulls off. There is another one, and he will be gutted. Would I, as they all would be. Oh, this is going to be a very, very strange looking New Zealand Championship finals field. Tyler Walker is going to pull off. Oh, the chicken flag has dropped in amongst all that. How close was Jaden Ward? Yeah, one lap, one, one lap, lap to go. Needed. Wow. <sighs> well, well, well. Here's your top 10, although that's uh, incorrect because Jaden Ward won't get 10th place. Brendan Ty in first, Mark Costello in second in 198, so he managed to get back up there. Richard Gaskin, 22W third, 172P, Daniel Burmester in fourth, then the 56V of Trent James, 46B, Quinn Ryan, home in sixth, Cody Chatfield, for seventh place, AJ Axton's recovered for eighth, Shane Malsop in ninth. And then I think it'll be Thomas Van Amsterdam uh, who will move up into 10th place. So Barry's running the numbers. We'll take a look at some of those big moves. Well, it was definitely Jaden Ward. It was. From, <laughs> from down the back of the field uh, and running up in second place. Oh boy. A lot of big names falling away early on. And of course, the, the thing is the Ripper Charge, um, which is what you know some of these guys now are going to have to qualify through. Just looking at seeing how the Ripper Charge is decided, um, it'll be positions five through eight in each group will move to the Ripper Charge, plus the next two overall top point scorers. So I, there's still this opportunity for these guys to try and get into the top eight, but again with the DNF. So there's that incident early on. So there's the four and how that all gets damaged. And then you've got Carl Pegg sitting up on top of Tim Ross in that opening collision. Boy, look at what we're seeing here tonight in turn one and two, and this is qualifying. What's it gonna be like tomorrow night when we've got the top 26 going hard into turn one? There we go, I did miss that one um, earlier on in the race, did catch one of the replays uh, for a moment there, and Mike McCarthy getting tangled up with uh, Trent James. And so here's this, uh, the, the another bunch of cars tangling. Oh, that's where Shane Malsop dropped down the back. There's Jaden Ward pushing his way up the inside of Daniel Burmester. And there's that tangle between the two Rotorua cars who were running second and third at the time. AJ Axton's is getting a little bit sideways. And Costello into the side of him. Technical Welding Services Hamilton are specialists in the transit concrete mixer industry. From chassis drop-off to a full working concrete mixing, the team will take care of the job from start to finish. Full engineering services and general sheet metal work can also be undertaken. 
Need a quote? Call 07 847 2031. Or visit our website, www.techwild.nz. Technical Welding Services Hamilton, we are the experts. Hi, I'm Brittany Carpenter, driver of 85 GM, based out of Greymouth. I use wholesale tyres, coloured chrome rims on my car. If you're looking for something unique and different on your car, contact Wholesale Tyres to get these coloured rims. Or get a hold of them on Facebook at Wholesale Tyres, or go onto their website, which is www.wholesaletyres.net.nz. See you trackside. Need coloured chrome rims? Wholesale Tyres. Good rims, better prices, great people. So this is the Kevin Free Group, three-time winner of the New Zealand Stock Car Ch- or Super Stock Championship uh, over the years. Once in the 60s, once in the 70s, and once in the 90s. And it is Blair Ashton who will start on pole in 21R. Murray Kitt is, uh, on grid two. Then it is Steve Hampton and Ross Ashby. Uh, on row two, Ashby in the Rees chassis, not the tank this weekend. Thomas Slater there as well, another one of those Pollock cars. Uh, then it is Dave Hunter, 52A, Max Holloway and Brett Loveridge on row number four. It is uh, former 1NZ, Peter Rees, won it back in Wellington. Can he do it here in Huntley? Starting on grid nine, then it is Hughes. Clarkson, that's Brooke Clarkson, another one of the females in the field on grid 11, and Jacob Buckrell, uh, who's looked pretty impressive in his first big season out in the Super Stocks. Brett Nichols up from Nelson alongside Adam Joblin, uh, Mike Honick and Steve uh, Stefan Roygaard, grids 13 through 16, and this is the 18 car group, so it is Josh Patterson and Matt Jarvis on the back row of the Kevin Free group. Just looking back at that Barry Featherston one, Trent James, who you thought was in the big pile-up right at the start, Paul, but uh, grid 19 up to 5th, plus 14, that's as good as anybody's done tonight. Quinn Ryan got back up to 6th after getting into 4th and then uh, dropping back several places, so he's a plus 12. And Daniel Burmeister, didn't really notice him much in the group, but uh, grid 15 to 3rd. So another plus 12, so yeah, there's a few guys making the big moves, while some of the real big names are uh, sitting right down the bottom at the moment. Definitely are. We've got uh, Craig here. I've just jumped in. Paul's just uh, diving off for a bit of a drink, so I'm going to take the next couple of races. But uh, just a reminder that I will be wandering around looking uh, for some kids between sort of 14 to 17. Uh, I need to know which uh, which car is sponsored by Bayzines and Engineering, and I want you to have some sort of interest in welding. Big hint there. I'll have a nice, uh, a nice, fantastic giveaway to you from uh, from the guys at Bayz Engineering. But we're about to, uh, we're looking like we're going to get started into this. The water truck's just uh, heading off the track now. And uh, so we are here with Paul Hickey, Barry Brown, and myself, Craig Tonkin. So uh, welcome to all of you again. It's so far, it's been a fantastic night, and it's only going to get better for the rest of tonight and for tomorrow. But uh, we're looking good. Gates are shutting. But the revs are coming up. It sounds like we're looking to get underway. All the, all the officials moving into where they need to be. We are going to be racing. We are racing. We are green. Car number 21, Brendan Ashton, straight off off pole, but uh, big contact straight into turn one. Car up on its side already. So major car park down on uh, outside of turn one. Already looking like an Auckland motorway on a Friday night. But pointy end of the race coming out of turn four and onto the front straight. We've got the 10 of Peter Reeves holding up front. We've got Brendan Ashton, 21 out right behind him. But of course, there's a lot of carnage down on turn one and turn two. Still under green, still racing. Guys here trying to get the cars sorted, but we're looking at Peter Rees, 10G in first place, Brendan Ashton, car number 21R, in second with Sam Hughes right on his tail in 77G. In fact, Sam making the pass, but we have gone red. Going red just to uh, check on some of these cars. They're not, not moving, not getting out of the way. So. But uh, so the, the officials just going over to check on them, make sure there's uh, there's no major drum, drama there. And there to 62 of Adam Joplin was uh, stationary right in the middle of the track there. So not, not the best place at the speed. The uh, guys are hurling into turns one and two at the moment. No, definitely not. Just having a look at the replay now on the live stream. But yeah, these cars pointing skyward. Ross yeah. Ashby was in the middle of that somewhere. He, he's managed to... Yep, Steve Hampton involved there, but they've managed to keep, keep 
keep coming your way through. We've got uh, Adam Jobman heading to the infield. Pull, yep, pulling up in there. So uh, he, his race is done on this on this occasion. I think think we'll add that to the list of big <laughs> names gone. And um, yeah, I, I mean four four Palmerston North cars out of the six, and because. Jane Ward might have a C on it, but it's a, a bad night for Palmerston North so far. It definitely is. It's, it's not looking good. So just in the last checks, looks like they're hooking up one other car. Uh, that was a car. Yeah, car number 17 of Murray Kit. He was one that was pointing skyward, so obviously his, uh, his race is done. They're so just going to be loading them up, getting them out of the way. So as you say, Barry, it's, it's definitely shaping up to be a, a very interesting rest of the, the night and into tomorrow. I expected it to be a, a pretty rugged contest. This is a pretty difficult <laughs> track to tame around here. It's, uh, the concrete wall is certainly not very forgiving, forgiving but I, I didn't really expect what we've seen from round one of the qualifying heats, really. This is more like you'd expect with the aggressive driving of uh, round one possibly tomorrow night. Oh, exactly. Or, uh, or, or round three tonight, but boy, those guys are just going for it. Going for gold straight off. Hey, uh, Stuart, with the pit mic, if you can make your way up to the commentator's box sometime, that'd be great. But we are racing again, we're underway. Straight back into it. So as I said before, Team G of Peter Rees, that's your race leader. That's the one to keep an eye on at the moment at the pointy end of the, uh, pointy end of the team. Coming out of turn four now onto the, onto the front straight. So we're only three laps down, nine to go, but we're still looking at Peter Ree, Sam Hughes, Brent Loveridge, Jacob Buckle, and Brendan Nashton in your top five. And a bit of gap, but uh, they, all, they all bunch up into the corners, so it still could be anyone's race on here. Let's say four laps down, eight to go. Action of plenty right the way through, running a real wide line out of turn one and two. Obviously that's where the guys are thinking they're giving the traction at the, mo at the moment. Peter Rees has shown us how it's all done. Quite comfortably out, out the front. But he's got Sam Hughes right, chasing him as much as he can to make pass on there. So far we've got a bit of contact down on turn four. Nothing major there, all cars have managed to get clearing out of the way. So five laps down, six at the end of this one, six to go midway through the race. Still looking at Reeves, Hughes, Loveridge and Buckroll and Ashton in your top five respectively. But uh, action of plenty, as we say, from the first the first heat of the night. As we're saying, you'd be expecting this sort of racing uh, tomorrow night, but these guys don't want to give an inch. Up the front, looking pretty safe. Further down the field, you've got the cars making the moves. They're the ones that need to need to get up there. Of course, we've got the likes of Kit Slater, Jobin, parked up on the infield, so uh, their race is done. But eight laps down, four to go. Still looking the same water up the front. Peter, Peter Reeves, Team G in first place. Sam Hughes, 77 G in second. Brent Loveridge, 16 B in third. And Jacob Buckrell, 99 B in fourth. So fairly safe in the, in the top five. Sixth and seventh at the moment is where the battle is on between the 2-2-1 uh, and of course the 58K of Roygaard. Roygaard. Okay, coming around, 10 laps down, two to go. Gonna be looking at the white flag this time round. Peter Reed showing us how it's done in the first heat. So going from go to woe basically on the front. Reed, Hughes, Loveridge and Backroll. Bit of pressure for third and fourth at the moment. And fifth and sixth coming down the, the back straight into turn three and four. Looking at the white flag this time. One to go. Peter Reed's well and truly out front with Sam Hughes on his tail. And then a gap back to Buckley, Loveridge and Ashton in your top five. But uh, without putting the kiss of death on it, it's going to be Peter Rees in this race coming out of turn four to take the chequered flag. That's how it's going to finish up. Team G, Peter Rees, first place, 77 G, Sam Hughes in second place, 16 B of Brett Loveridge in third place, fourth place, 21 R of Brendan Ashton, fifth place, 221 A of Brooke Clarkson, and then we're looking sixth place of Stephen Roygaard. We've got Hunter, Nichols, Jarvis and Buckroll. Okay, so, so just looking through, we've got uh, Peter Rees, race leader, top 10. Then we've got Sam Hughes, Brett Loveridge, Brendan Ashton in fourth place, 221A of Brooke Clarkson in fifth, Stephen Roygaard, Kiki Card, cut number 58, 
Sixth place, seventh place, 52A, David Hunter. Eighth place, 99B of Jacob Buckrell. Brett Nichols coming in at, uh, at ninth and 48N. And rounding the top 10, you're looking at Matt Jarvis in, uh, in car number 798. So uh, that's your top 10 for this race, and that's how it's going to feel up for the, for the end of heat one. But uh, as we're saying, Barry, it's, uh, it should be heat two and three. So uh, some fantastic racing early on in the night. Yeah, I didn't see what happened to Jacob Buckbrow, but he was in the uh, in that sort of battle for second and third yeah. with the lap to go. He's finished up 10. Yeah, see, so what happened, he, he came under a lot of pressure in that last lap, and going into turn three, there, there were six of the battling there, so yeah, he's gone from fourth to tenth. But actually, if you look on our la on our um, electronic lap scoring, he hasn't even actually officially yeah. completed twelve laps. No, he um, hasn't. So he was so out of control coming down the pit straight. Uh, he's crossed the finish line on the infield, so hasn't actually been registered. So yeah. watch this space. Uh, Stu Russell's just quickly joined us upstairs. It's it's pretty rugged out there, Stu. Yeah, yeah it definitely is, and. Uh, to be fair, it's mostly steering arms and steering boxes, a, a few steering boxes to be fair. And they're in those awkward places where you've got to take the radiator out. Some yep. of them. So steering arm, a lot of tyres gone. Obviously, we know the outside ones because they pull the infield. A lot of inside ones too. Uh, a few broken shocks all all around. Uh, that first round of racing, it's the track's rough as well, but also the racing's rough. I was talking to Asher Reeves, and as he said, it's not often you bend steering arms, but they're coming so intertwined with each other. You just clip each other, bends an arm, steering goes. Mick Rumney was down there bleeding the steering because he, he thought he had a problem. But it, it could just be the well the fact that they're coming so interlinked with each other out there, so close to racing, yep. and the track obviously putting them offline. Uh, yeah, round two's out now. We'll see who's survival of the fittest from here. Well, that, that's what it could be. Uh, thank you, Stu, for that update. Now, Craig is uh, about to head out. He's going to have some giveaways, so look out for him in the crowd. And uh, Craig, just quickly uh, tell us what you're going to be doing out there. Good. I'm going to be heading down uh, down onto the back straight. I've got a, a fantastic prize from Bayes Engineering. What I'm looking for is if you, you need to tell me which car is sponsored by Bayes Engineering, and then there's going to be another question about welding. I'm looking for, for kids, boys and girls, not worried between 14 to 17 with interest in welding. I'm heading over there now. I'll call you after this race. All right, let's look at heat two for the Frank Van Vroenhoven Group. Jack Byers starts on pole for maybe on the outside. Then it is Zane Dykstra and Jamie Ferguson on grids three and four. Ethan Rees, heat winner, starts on grid five. Paul Vasey is there on six. Then it is Bunce and Stanaway on row number four. Rebecca Barr and Chad Ace on grids nine and 10. Shay Hambling, Gav Tanifar, grids 11 and 12. Then we go to Kyle Ashton, who I think will be a DNF. -y. I'm sure we got that report he was out for the night. Seth McConchie, DNF in the opening heat, starting on grid 14 in this one. Wayne Hemi, DNF in the opening heat on grid 15. Blake Adamson out of Stratford on grid 16. And to round us out, Dale Robertson, Alan McRobbie, two former 1NZs, Wayne Moss uh, in the 25S car down the back on grid 19. So that's how they line up. Here we go, round two, and I think Stu said it, um, survival of the fittest, and who's, who's going to persevere here and, and this is it we've seen so many drivers kind of drop out drop back in that opening heat I suppose all it takes is for another four who had an okay a good run in the first heat to fall off here with a flat outside front or a flat outside rear and be forced to DNF that kind of evens things up a little bit well it does you can finish up with some very low scoring good. qualifiers yep. possibly so uh, Jacob Buckrell I see the um manually put him back in on that lap, okay. so he finished up eighth, so he did gain a little bit once they credited him with the 12th lap. All right, here we go, race two for the Dutchie group, the Frank Van Vroenhoven group. Myers and maybe off the front row. And the starter's hands have got a couple of empty grids out there, actually. So Jack Myers, he will need to make some hay while the sun shines here, he needs this win, Jack Myers, after a DNF in the opening heat, starting on pole. He's going to have Dykstra and Rees chasing him down. Look at that. Look how much more calm and collected they were <laughs> into turn one and two. Maybe they've learnt. 88, you're racing it. Shea Hambling looking impressive. Barges his way up to second place, past Rees, past Dykstra. But now Rees comes back at him. Here comes Rebecca Barr. She is on the charge. She had a great finish in that opening heat. Wayne Hemi, another one who needs to 
score well in these final two heats tonight. So that pace is picking up the track. Coming on and these drivers just desperate to score points and even more desperate to not puncture. So Jack Myers leading from Zane Dykstra. Dykstra with the fastest lap of the race now is 16.707. And this group just, I think this is the, the, really the first time tonight that we've just kind of got into a groove and they are all just out there racing hard. There's been nobody who's spun, nobody who's dropping back to kind of start causing a little bit, oh, and as I say that, commentators yeah. curse, <laughs> Rocco, Seth McConchie. You know, they were they were all just running hard and fast. And the problem was when there were cars spinning left, right and centre, all of a sudden, within two or three laps, the entire track is full of cars. That's right. Track's a little bit dry this time, I yeah. think, too, isn't it? Yeah. Which is helping. But look, uh, Now, look at this. Look how carefully Jack Myers is being passing Seth McConchie. He doesn't want to risk running his car up against the 272 because that's a great tactic it's always been something the drivers have loved diving down the inside side rail to side rail to punch them out of the way to make a pass nowadays the drivers are a little bit too worried to do that because yes. they could punch up so yeah jack myers just uh, tiptoeing past the 272 back in the pack good battle going on between uh, paul vasey wayne hemi uh, rebecca barr and Chad Ace, who's in there as well. Now Vasey runs it wide. Hemi tries to barge up the inside. Makes the pass. Shea Hambling, the benefactor there though. Oh, Hemi out towards the concrete wall. Paul Vasey not giving him an inch. So that is nine laps gone now for Jack Myers. Zane Dykstra. We're getting these cars down into the 16 second marks now. Which is a lot faster than that opening race, as you say, buried the track. A uh, bit dry, we haven't seen much water going on it. They are running a bit quicker. Yeah, you've seen the, uh, the odd time under 16.5 as well, so yeah, they're flying now. So it'll be white flag out now, Jack Myers. Just tiptoeing around and he'll take the chicken flag. And home they come. So a couple of things for us to start looking at now. We've got the big moves as well as the official points but let's take a look top 10 how they came home in that one Jack Myers a good win uh, for the former World 240s champion Zane Dykstra in second Ethan Reeves the current World 240s champion in third Rebecca Barr in fourth Shea Hambling 7A rounded out the five then it's 351R Paul Vasey 591P Wayne Hemi 4K Chad Ace 89W Dale Robertson in ninth and Gav Tunnifar home in tenth place um, so well, I suppose it's it's more a case of yeah, let's how how those points shaping up, Barry. Yeah, well certainly after two heats, Ethan Reese sitting pretty on 36 points at the moment. Where's he starting on in the last heat? He's grid 10, so about mid grid in the last one. He's on 36 points. Second, you mentioned how impressive Shay Hamblings looked, and uh, both heats sitting the 7A, 31 points at the moment. 34P Rebecca Barr on 30 points and 89W, 28 points. Fourth equal for 75K, Gavin Tanifar on 28, 4K, Chad Age 27. So uh, tied for fourth equal at the moment between Dale Robertson and Gavin Tanifar. All right, uh, we'll just take a quick break there, Barry. We're gonna head down to the pits and Gabe is catching up with uh, heat winner 10G, Peter Rees. Yeah, that's right here with 10G, Peter Rees. Started off grip position nine, first heat. Gotta be happy with that win, eh? Yeah, it was like, uh, like the way it's partnered for me, so I'll take that one, yeah. Obviously New Zealand Super Sock champion, uh, but previously before, was there any nerves or is it just another day's racing really for you, isn't it? Well, it has to be nerves, otherwise we wouldn't do this. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, so you get nervous, like, what's going to happen in the first corner? Are you going to get through the, the, the drama and all that? Um, yeah, I mean, there has been nerves, but, but that one paid off good for me. And obviously that inside grid draw really helped you, just trying to sneak down the inside, trying to avoid all that major damage happening into turn one and two, wasn't it? Well, to be fair, the inside hasn't helped a lot of people tonight, so the track come good for us. The track looked really hard work for the first four or five races. So we were lucky to be last. Um, I guess that's what they do the draw for. Um, yeah, and it just played in my hand. The track's actually blackening off in places, and we, we can't get low yet, so it's still pretty wet out there. What do you got your grid draws for your next couple of heats coming up? Well, I'm off 18 and then two. So you got a back one and a front one, just trying to get as much points as you can with that grid 18, isn't it? Yeah, it's handy to get a, get a, get a win off grid nine, so if I can get 10 or 12 places with my 18, you know, and then my two, I hopefully... You know, it can fall in, fall in place for us. Oh, there he is, the Heat Race winner, 10G Peter Reese. Good luck, and good luck for the rest of your night, eh? Yeah, he, like I said, you know, it's all that experience, isn't it? You know, just talking about picking that first corner and talking about what he's got to get in the rest of uh, the night tonight. Right, let's take a look. Heat 2 for the Reed Whitten Group, Matt Nelson, uh, former North Island champion. 147k on pole. Caleb Mooney, he was here in the team's racing just uh, five short days ago, so starting on the outside of the front row. Hamish Booker and Simon Joblin, two-time New Zealand champion, starting on grid four. Uh, then we've got Tony Wooten and uh, the 23R uh, Ashton car, starting there on grid six. Then it is Hay and Clark on grids seven and eight. Mick Rumney and Barodi James round out the top 10. Then Ty and Chapman, who won that opening heat, starts on grid 12. Hilton Parker and Josh Prentice on 13 and 14. Then Mackenzie, who we saw uh, stranded outside the pit gate there at one stage and uh, causing a few issues. He starts on grid 15. And Whitaker on grid 16. And then Kahui, Lonigan and Orr starting down the back. Now we've got one car over there already on the infield, just coming off turn two. I can't see the... Yeah, 15. Uh, it is I the 15? Is. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, so the 15. Paul, can I uh, jump in, mate? All right, yeah, jump in there, Craig. Sorry. Thanks, mate. No worries. I'm over here on the back straight. I've uh, got someone with me. So what's your name? Emmy Hawley. Hi, Emmy. Hey, uh, I understand you are keen to learn to do some welding. Yeah. Yep. Okay, can you tell me... Which car is sponsored by Bayes Engineering? 351R Paul Brazy. Fantastic. And tell me, what are the three most common types of welding? MIG, TIG and R. Fantastic. Okay, that's all you have to do to win yourself a great home welding unit. So uh, back over to you guys. Congratulations. Yeah, that is cool. Well done to her and uh, thanks to uh, Bayes Engineering for their sponsorship of uh, that welder. And I believe we might have another one tomorrow night as well. So. Uh, problems for the Ethan Whitaker car. Obviously, just uh, happy to leave him. Uh, just maybe from the angle we're standing, looks like sitting very, very close to the pole line, but uh, I guess they're happy with him. Uh, we've got the wander down the grid here. See, we're down to 15 cars starting. So there's a couple of empty spots on this one as well. So we're underway. And Matt Nielsen is going to jump to the front. Kaylin Mooney slots in behind. And then Simon Joblin into third place. So again, similar scenario here, isn't it, to that last heat. We're just seeing just a little bit more calm and collected into the opening laps of the second round of racing. A couple bouncing off the concrete. Oh, problems there for Ty and Chapman as well. The Heat 1 winner has got some big issues. He's dropped right down to the back of the pack, Hayden Chapman, bar one. Kendall Ashton just uh, struggling a little bit in the 23. So Matt Nielsen leading, 147, and Ty pulls to the infield. Ron Ty in the 599. Oh, big cruncher. As uh, Lonigan comes together with Hilton Parker, 
in the 3-2-1. He took a couple of big hits there, did Hilton Parker, coming off turn three and four. So he's going to retire to the infield. So we talked about these other drivers maybe falling off, making things a little bit easier for those guys who had DNFs or bad runs in the opening heat. But we're not seeing it here, are we? In the first two races in this second round. Into turn three, Josh Prentice looks up the inside of Kalen Mooney, makes the pass, James Clark right on their tail, then the 7R of Michael Rumney out of Rotorua, here comes Clark looking up the inside of Mooney, so Mooney's just gone a little bit off song now, he's going to drop another spot, the two Rotorua cars looking up the inside, Michael Rumney and Damien Orr, the second placing in the opening heat for the 81, and he's now up into seventh place. Bouncing off the concrete, the 26 of Kalen Mooney. Race leader comes around to complete nine laps, three to go. For the 147 out of Kiki. So it's going to be interesting to see what the track guys decide to do here because while the track is drying out and we're seeing uh, an improvement in the racing, the dust is starting to come up now, big time. So white flag will come out this time for Matt Nielsen. There it is. Ron Ty actually pulled off and he's ended up coming back onto the track. Must have only been a very short time on the uh, infield. This means we've got a few of the same front runners from the opening heat. Have ended up at the pointy end of the field in this one. Uh, Joblin Prentice or Hamish Book is up there. So let's take a look at your top 10 in a moment. We'll let the dust settle. There it is. Unofficial top 10. Matt Nielsen. Home first. Simon Joblin gunning for three New Zealand championships this weekend. In second, Josh Prentice in third. Then James Clark, 29G and 81R. Damien Orr rounding out the top five. 82S Hamish Booker, 7R Michael Rumney in seventh. Then 71H Tony Wooden, 88V Josh Kahui, and 95A Gary Lonigan round out the top ten. Reminder, um, as we understand it, official results are going online to the Huntley... Uh, International Speedway Facebook page uh, as and when they are available from the referees. Barry, uh, there we go, two heats for the Reed Wooten group. Yeah, just keeping an eye on the lots of Jack Myers in that last one. Oh, yes, yep. even, even though he won that race with zero points in the first heat, he's still only up to 11 and he's nine points away from the top four. So uh, with only 19 cars in a group, He's going to need some people to have a bad run. Yep. And he's got grid 18 in the next one. And, so see, and, that, and that's what we, that's what I just noted partway through that race is, you know, there's, there's less DNFs happening this yes. round. So, you know, it's a problem. Uh, right, we can just go from the uh, Kevin Free group. Heat 1, 31W, which was... Josh Patterson. Josh Patterson disqualified. He did not re-enter on the same straight or corner as he left the track. So... At some stage, he's, he's come off on the straight, possibly. Rejoined in the next corner or vice versa. If you come off down the straight, you basically have to, to loop back around. Which we saw, you know, a couple of drivers being very careful with that last week yes. at, the, at the team's oh, racing. certainly. We? Okay, uh, so the Red Wooden Group, we've just seen them on track. Yeah. Um, and points-wise, Damien Orr leading the way. Very, very close, this group. Yeah, 33 points to 81R, Damien Orr. 5G, Josh Prentice on 32 points. 82 is Hamish Booker, 31 points. And then uh, a tie for fourth at the moment, that all-important fourth spot. Uh, 29G, James Clark with 30. 72P, Simon Joplin, 30. And right in behind, Matt Nielsen with 29. And the 147K and the 247A of Hayden Chapman, 28. So uh, only a few points between the top seven there. Mm. Uh, only four spots available, so that... Last heat in the Red Wooden group is going to be a beauty.
Uh, and I think Hayden Chapman will have his back grid one. I think I think he's had his uh, front in the opening heat, yes. which he won. Yeah, he will be yeah. uh, two four seven p. He will be starting a long way back, I think. It's action for the whole family. With 23 tracks around New Zealand, there is no better way to spend your weekends than at a Speedway New Zealand track. Here they come to the start-finish line again. There's something for the whole family. Street cars, saloons, stock cars, sidecars, midgets and much, much more. Pack up the family and make a trip to adrenaline-filled, action-packed bashes and crashes that only Speedway can deliver. www.speedway.co.nz to find out the track nearest to you. Speedway, it's our summer thing. What you think you do with your four-wheel drive. What you actually do with your four-wheel drive. No matter what you do with your four-wheel drive, we've got the right tyre for you. So come on down to Mag and Turbo. Are you building a new commercial business or home? Or is it time that your existing premises had a repaint anywhere in the South Island? Then Anderton Decorators have you covered. From floor to ceiling, wall to roof, Anderton Decorators offer the latest techniques, equipment and technology to make even the hardest tasks seem simple. Anderton Decorators also has the expert team to take the frustration out of your next project. Call Shane today on 027 Painter. It's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators. We have you covered. So that's what it is, remember the top four will go through to tomorrow night. Here's the 1NZ coming out the pit gate. Let's take a look at how they line up in the Paul Wade Group Heat 2. We'll get Craig to call this one for you. Aaron Alderton, local boy, starts on pole. Robbie Maybe in second, oh, sorry, in grid two. Aiden Eustace, whole lot of issues in the opening. He, he starts on grid three. Uh, then it is the 119. V Harris car sitting on grid number four. On to row three, it is Asher Rees, the 1NZ, and Tyler James, 89G, on grid six, Elias Dykstra and Mark Dickey, the Bay Park pairing on grid seven and eight. Gary Hunter and Paul Gaskin round out the top ten. Uh, Liam Marsh, uh, I think now that's, we did get that call, he'd been excluded for the rest of the night due to his incorrect safety gear. Yes. Uh, so that should be an empty spot on grid 11. Alex Hill, uh, great result for him in that opening heat starts on grid 12. Matty Wise and Dylan Ashton on grids 13 and 14. Tom Hughes, Jordan Deere on 15 and 16. Deere needing a couple of good results to go his way. Uh, then it is uh, Glenny Cooper and Gargan rounding up the back rows. Just um, one. harking back to the Red Wooten group, Damien Orr sitting top on points at the moment, Heat 3, Grid 1. So uh, he's had a second and a fifth so far, so he's made some big moves right from the back of the grid in that one, Grid 19, I think, through to fifth. So uh, he's done all the hard work, now all he's got to do is keep out of trouble. Exactly, definitely do that, and, uh, and his for the taking, really. It is, yeah, certainly uh, as far as qualifying goes. And he was one, when we practised back in January, he was one of the uh, the three quick cars too, I remember that night, along with Jacob Buckrell. I can't quite remember who the other one was, but uh, Damien Orr getting the job done so far. Looks like he's heading up to be another great race coming up. So a couple of... Uh, one, in, one empty grid spot so far. Pole, pole position. Aaron Alderton. Alderton on pole? Who, yeah, did. Uh, He's not there, no. No, he hit the concrete wall and turned two really hard in the first so heat. Pole position empty and uh, empty grid further on in the field, but uh, we're looking good. Revs are coming up, gates are shut. In the hands of the saddle, we are green, we are racing! A bit of contact straight into turn one and two. Straight into the wall, three of the cars parked up themselves over there, but coming down the back straight. Clear distance for the first, second and third place at the moment, but uh, further down the field, cars are trying to sort themselves out. We've got one on the infield, but at the pointy end of the track, we're looking at car number 119 of Zach Harris in first place. Tyler James, 89G in second. Paul Gaskin, 6W in third. First and second starting to form a bit, nice little uh, bit of a buffer there. 
third and fourth is where the race is at the moment between uh, Dykstra and Gaskin. Dykstra coming up on the inside and making a nice pass. He's going to be able to make it stick. But we've got, no, we've got uh, Harris up front. 119 CF Harris. Tyler James, 89 G in second place. 1 NZ, Asher Rees working his way up through the field up into third place. Gaskin dropping back to fourth. All safety through the track at the moment. The 85 of Tom Cooper running real wide out of turn four. But we're looking at three laps down, nine to go. Quite safe and sound out the front at the moment. Coming up on the inside. Trying to make a, make a presence, make a pass. You've got the one in Z up to second place now. Tyler James still up at the front. One in Z of Asher Reeves coming up in second place. Making the big pass now. We've gone red. Missed where we've gone. We've gone red. Uh, down on uh, turn one and two. Let's see who's down there. Uh, Gary Hunter, yep, 93R. Just uh, half in, half, half off the track and half on the track, so move him out of the way. So at the moment we're looking at, uh, on the board here, Tyler James 89G is still in front, but looking out there in real life it's going to be real tight because Asher Rees is right next to him. As you know, he's made the pass, so Asher Rees sitting up down the back straight in first place. Tyler James 89G sitting in second place. Then we're back to Zach Harris third and Paul Gaskin in fourth. Lights are out. We are racing. So just confirming Asher Reeves just making that pass and making it stick. Coming around five laps down, seven to go. One NZ Asher Reeves up the front. Zach Harris, 119, second place. And then of course the, uh, the car 5M of Dykstra. Elias Dykstra in third. Coming around midway through the track. Fastest, fastest lap so far, but looks like we've got uh, car number 89. Looks like uh, Tyler James could be a bit of front suspension issues there, but uh, still, still circulating. Let's say six laps down, six to go midway through the track. Asher Reeves, one NZ still up in front. Zach Harris still up in car number two. Matty Wise up into third place, made the pass on Astra. We've got uh, Dylan Ashton, 4-2-2 in fourth, and Elias Dykstra in fifth place. But Asher Rees out there now, fine form, making the, making the race his own. Getting a nice, comfortable buffer. Going to be three laps to go after he completes this one round. Quite a gap back to second place, but second, third, and fourth is where it's, where it's at at the moment. Real tight between Zach Harris, Dylan Ashton, Matty Wise, second, third, and fourth. Looks like Matty Wise making, trying to make the pass up into third place. Can she make a stick? She's going to almost make two on that, but Matty Wise up into third. Rees, Asher, Wise, and Ashton, as I say, dancing for second, third, and fourth at the moment. But uh, one in Z, Asher Rees. Comfortably out the front, white flag, one to go. Just has to bring it home. Matty Wise up into second place, Dylan Ashton down into, up into third. Jordan Deere in fourth place. But it's going to be one and Z. Asher Ease coming around to say the checker flag, he's got it. Heat two of the Paul Wade group. One and Z, Asher Ease. One through six P of Matty Wise in second place. And then 422R of Dylan Ashton taking out third. So we'll wait for the wait for the dust to settle. And I'll run through the uh, the top ten as they come to me. But uh, great race there for Asher Rees, one in Z taking it out. So as I say, Asher Rees up in first place, Matty Wise in second place, Dylan Ashton 422R in third place, Zach Harris fourth, Jordan Deere in fifth place, 581P, 5M of Elias Dykstra, sixth place, seventh is Zach Glenny, eighth place, Tom Cooter. Cooper, sorry, Aidan Eustace, car number 97A and 9th, rounding out the top 10, Paul Gaston, 6W. So those are your top 10 for the Heat 2 of the Paul Wade group. Barry, how are we looking on points? Yeah, what that's done overall, certainly the big loser in that one was Tyler James, he was leading the race, then dropped to second behind Asher Reese, but he was still quite clearly the points leader, got tangled up and... Uh, He's dropped all the way back to eighth on points. Where did he drop back to in the race? 14. Wow, down to, yeah, 14. Yeah, so uh, points-wise now, 136P, Matty Wise leading on 37 points. 
422R, Dylan Ashton, 34 points. Asher Reese already into the top four. The 1NZ on 29 points. And uh, grid 10 for his last heat, so he still needs another good finish. Uh, 119C, it says Zach Harris, 28. I think that's a V. 95N, Alex Hill, one point behind, sitting in fifth place and owned on 27. In the 5M of Elias Dykstra on 25. So your top four at the moment, Matty Wise, Dylan Ashton, Asher Reese and Zach Harris. Bit of water going onto the track, which is... Uh, we thought that might start happening. Uh, just dried out just uh, a little bit too much, I think, after that opening round. Although these guys are coming out the gate now are probably thinking, oh, don't put too much on there. I must admit, when I was out, out ra roaming around before, it was very hot and muggy and, and it was even getting dusty out there, though the track looks wet, so we definitely need it. Yeah, all right, here we go. The Jared Wade Group Heat 2, and it will be Dale Stewart who will start on pole. Cody McKee alongside Randall Tarrant and Jeff Kite on row 2, grids 3 and 4. Uh, Matt Pickard and Bryce Steiner on row 3, then it is Mitchell and Joblin on grids 7 and eight. Todd Hemingway on grid nine, Brett Kelly on at ten. Simon Davis didn't have a good run in that opening heat. Uh, he starts on 11 and Logan Nicholson maybe on grid number 12. Robbie Morris in the 9R car. Heat winner Kerry Remnant is there on grid number 14. Uh, then we've got the 15V and 17H on 15 and 16. Then it is Hamilton, Marshall and Marks. Uh, to fill up those back three grid positions in this heat. So, looks like at least we've got we, a full grid on this one. Yeah. See, is that no? We've got there is no. an empty one there. Ah, uh, yep. Uh, so where's that? That is uh, row six on the inside. Grid eleven yeah. is empty. A little bit more water just uh, onto onto the track, and so it looks like red will be. Coming off, and we'll be getting this race underway. Race 10, Heat 2, the Jared Wade group. So, a reminder it is the top four that go through to the finals tomorrow night. That gives us 24 qualifiers. Then it comes down to that Ripper Charge race. Two more from the Ripper Charge to take these spots. Hey, if I'm hearing rightly, uh, the 1NZ car finished that race with no brakes. So, uh, just letting them get into it, and then I'll uh, catch up with Astra in a moment, but they're full into the 1NZ. Okay, all right, thank you for that update. Uh, nice and quick from the pits. Um, no breaks, I suppose. Probably not really how you want to finish a race. Well, well uh, he, he was probably lucky. He was he was running out on his own there a lot of the time, wasn't he, Asher Rees? So it's not like he was needing to. Exactly. Well, it depends on how he drives. But anyway, no, let's hand over to <laughs> Right, we're getting into it. Rev's coming up in the hands of the starter. Looking good. We are racing, we're green. Car number 72 a straight out into it, Cody McKee. Straight off grid two and into it, but going real wide. Lots of cars getting, getting tangled up down into turn one. But uh, I think it was the Cody McKee 72A was the winner out of that, coming out wide and straight off into the lead. Nice little healthy gap forming, but second and third are right on his tail. Cody McKee 72A out front, Bryce Steiner 118R. Second place in Dale Stewart, 94R in third. The 461 of Brett Kelly just having a spin on the uh, on the front straight, but uh, back underway, back into it. Action and plenty, two, three wide coming out of turn four. Cody McKee is still taking the uh, the top spot. Dale Stewart, Stewart, 94R up into second place. Randall Tarrant up into third. Contact in the wall, sparks flying down into turn three. No change in the top five, still looking at McKee, Stewart, Terence, Steiner and Joblin. Jamie Hamilton moving up into seventh place. Jeff Kite moving down a bit into ninth, but uh, action to plenty. Four laps down, eight to go. McKee running nice and tidy up the front. Oh, Stewart makes the dive though, he's made the pass. He's made it, he's made a pass, he's gonna make it sick. McKee coming around the outside, but no, Dale's got it. He's made the pass up and under. 
McKee doing everything he can to get back into it. Looking on the inside, it's going to be a drag race down the back straight. Who's going to be brave enough? It's going to be Stewart, I think, on the wide line. Bit of contact from McKee, pushing wide, but uh, actually it looks like Tarrant's going to make, be the winner out of that one. Definitely is. Randall Tarrant, 66A, from third place up at the first. The other still tied up, going into turn one and two. They're not backing off. McKee and Joblin there, well, that'll be interesting to watch. They came off on the straight, entered in turn two. Yep, that's going to be an interesting one to see how that goes. But point the end, we're looking at Tarrant up the front, Stewart in second place, Jamie Hamilton in third, and then of course Stone and Joblin, more to see what's happening there. 73 going for a big spin, that's Bryce Marks going straight towards the safety crew in the middle, but he's parked up so far on the infield. Eight laps down, four to go. Tarrant, Stewart, Hamilton, Steiner and Joblin in your top five. 73 heading back out onto the track now. See, and he's done the right thing. He has, yep, came got back out to of, Got out of control and uh, came back onto the track on the straight. Must have been a bit of concern for the safety guys, though. He's coming at them pretty quick, but uh, I'll be interested to see what happens out of Joblin and Steiner, but uh, that'll be sorted out after the race. Randall Tarrant, 6 6 eight, your race leader. Nine laps down, three to go. Coming through to so action of plenty. Okay, Scott Joplin making the move up. We're now looking, Terrence still up in front, but Jamie Hamilton now up into second place. Scott Joplin up into third. Dale Stewart back down into fourth place. No, no, he's dropped way back now. Oh. He got spun up there. Sorry, missed that. He has yeah. two. Looking at white flag out now, one to go. Randall Tarrant is your race leader. Just needs to bring it home safely. Tarrant and Hamilton, McKee, Joplin, Stewart in your top five. Is it going to finish that way? Checkered flag done and dusted. So 66A Randall Tarrant is your race leader. And Jamie Hamilton 9G is in second place. But uh, be interested to see what comes of the uh, some of the techniques, shall we say, used in there. The car spun out on turn two at the end of it. But as the dust settles, we'll, uh, we'll bring the top ten to you. So as I say, 66A of Randall Tarrant, first place. Great to take the win. 9G of Jamie Hamilton in second place. Cody McKee, 72A in third. Scott Joblin, fourth. Brett Stewart, 9R in fifth place. Bryce Diner, 118R in sixth. Kerry Remnant from the Mount, 19M in, uh, in seventh place. Eighth place, Dylan Marshall. Ninth is Todd Heming Hemingway and Matthew Pickard. Running out the top ten. Oh, got a feel for Dale Stewart in there. He, uh, he was actually, when he was running up there in fourth place, with a couple of laps to go, he was leading the group on points. Yep. And he's dropped from fourth all the way down to, in that race, down to 12th place. Uh, so now he's still in the top four, but he was comfortably in the top four. <laughs> so unofficially at the moment, we've got uh, Randall Tarrant, 66A, on 35 points. Jamie Hamilton, big charge uh, in that one. Second equal on 32. Heat one winner, Kerry Remnant. He had some issues in the first corner. He was one of those cars that got caught up in turn number one, which was like, oh boy, here we go. Uh, so, But he's had a good recovery, uh, and he is second equal on points on 32. Then we go, it's the 9R of Robbie Morris that has come out to fourth place. So Dale Stewart, who was leading the group on points when he was sitting in fourth place, is now down in ninth place, uh, eighth place in the group on 23 points. So big drop for him, gutted. Uh, for the Rotorua racer. Uh, Cody McKee, actually, so we've got fourth equal between Robbie Morris, Cody McKee, and Matthew Pickard. And then another two points back is Scott Joblin. Now, we did see that moment though. Cody McKee and Scott Joblin uh, tangling. They came off the track almost in front of race control. Uh, and then re-entered the track over in turn four. We did get that word earlier on that, uh, sorry, into turn one, into turn one. Now, Barry, we did have somebody earlier on, we did get official word that somebody was disqualified for that exact move, so we'll wait and watch that one. Hey, got some... Uh... Yeah, it certainly, certainly shows, Paul, that the uh, referees are looking for that sort of thing tonight. I think it was the 31W. That's right, it was, now, yes. I didn't see where that happened, but this one's happened right in front of the referee's box. So... Uh, I don't know where he'd be looking to be able to miss that one, so no. I think it's pretty hard that he would have done. And uh, uh, the tyre marks have gone now, the water truck's been down, but you can actually still see them across the grass. 
and uh, they were definitely on the straight when they left and uh, most of the way around turn one just about to turn two by the time they um, re-entered yeah and you kind of like they were tangling um so but that's hey not guys i'll just jump in real quick yep. Goes yep. yeah so down in the pits got out uh, of the 971 car Jaden ward he's actually out for the night and uh, probably fine he's going to be out for the whole meeting as you said he dnf that first one he's battling with some brake dramas uh yeah even as he said it's just just not worth trying to uh get out there and uh go hard he said it's might as well just focus on battle of the stocks next week yeah that is of course th th there's a few people with that in the back of their minds look battle of the stocks is one of those major meetings uh every year and we know there's uh, always a few uh, well, a lot of our top drivers do head down to Christchurch to be a part of that every year, and uh, there's been a few dramas over invites and uh, people being uh, left off lists now after missing a year or two, so there's a lot of drivers just focusing, well not just focusing on that, but with one eye on that next weekend, maybe not wanting to do too much damage here this weekend either. I suppose it depends on where you're at in the standings, but yeah, you hear that, Stu, uh, with Jaden Ward, and that does make sense uh, that... You know, he's pretty much out of the running, and that's where his focus now already is on uh, the big Battle of the Stops meeting in Christchurch next weekend. Mark Costello sits on pole. Jaden Ward will be empty on grid two. Shane Malsop and Joseph Carter on to row number two. Uh, Burmester Pollock, McCarthy and Quinn Ryan make up the next two rows, and rounding out the top ten is James and Pulsiter from the earlier heat, Cody Chatfield. Then it's Richard Gaskin and AJ Axton's on grids 11 and 12. Brad Cox said, Tony Van Amsterdam on 13 and 14. It is Peg and Ty on 15 and 16. And rounding up the back three, uh, Luke Irvine, Tyler Walker and Tim Ross. Barry. Yeah, Tyler Walker also out for the night okay. and out for the meeting. He's blowing the clutch and it's blowing the bell housing to pieces as well. Awesome. Thank you, Stu, for those uh, updates. That's what we want to hear, all that stuff of who's in, who's out. We see some of the work going on here. Look at that, uh, the one NZ car of... Asher Rees, those who are on the stream watching across uh, New Zealand and uh, the globe. Josh Prentice uh, helping in there as well, part of that uh, wider crew. And so they're doing some uh, adjustment work there. So yeah, we take a look down and so, okay, we know Jaden Ward is gone. Uh, and Tyler Walker, two former New Zealand stock car champions in this group. They are both missing. Um, so we take a look and see how many other empty spots there might be down here. Yes, Dan Pollock made it back out. There's only 16. There's 16 that have made it out, so that must be another one. So Dan Pollock was in the 717, wasn't he? Yes. No, see, I don't see him out there. Uh, so he pulled off quite early he um, did. in that opening heat, yeah. so he's missing as well. So we've got three who are missing from this one. Race at 11. Of our 18 race program tonight. Qualifying night, the Pollock Cranes, New Zealand Superstock Championships. Heat two for the Barry Featherston group. Mark Costello, all alone on the front row. And at the start, his hands. Green flag is up, down, let's go racing. So Mark Costello leads them away. Showed a good clean pair of heels. Oh, Mike McCarthy gets collected big time on the side of the car coming off turn two as he got spun up. Missed who that was, he went right on the side of him. It's Daniel Burmester and Quinn Ryan battling there for third and fourth. There's McCarthy's car still sitting there. Both these two had good finishes in that earlier heat out front though. It is Mark Costello, Shane Malsop. Ended up a lap down in the opening heat, Shane Malsop. So again, he'll be after a good points haul in this one. 198, your race leader. Mark Costello from Shane Malsop. We've got uh, a lap runner in there that is uh, the Trent James car. He's a lap down. Shane Malsop looks up the inside of him. Through turns three and four, up the inside, the 71. The Palmy car passes the Wangadui car. There's Daniel Burmester leading that next group. It is Burmester, Ryan, and Carter. That's a battle for third and fourth. We've got somebody in the wall down in turn. Oh, boy. So somebody in the wall, and then we've had a car spin up, uh, and AJ Axton's has gone hard into him. 
Axton's desperately trying to get that car fired up. Sounds like it might have uh, refired now. So I can't quite tell who that is. Uh, down there in the... Okay, it is... Oh, it's Van Amsterdam. Van Amsterdam's the one that the stoppage is for. So it was the 18 uh, of Joe Carter who spun up in turn one and two. And then, yeah, AJ Axton's in the 14. Uh, collected him. They both look to be uh, ready to be mobile once again. So I think they've, they've both lost a couple of spots because it was... Carter, then Axton's, then Chatfield. The way they were running as they came across the start line at the end of the last lap. And you can see Cody Chatfield in the silver bullet. Um, 741. Sitting around there between the tractors and where that action is happening over there with uh, Thomas Van Amsterdam. So, race leader, the 198, Mark Costello. Sitting just about to come into turn four. Yes, that car's had a few track letters on it over the years, hasn't it? The Silver Bullet. Oh, hasn't and it? And I mean, it's still a competitive car today, and it's uh, probably under different drivers being contracted half the tracks in the North Island and its, <laughs> and its lifespan. So. Oh, and, and it's uh, been on the podium at this New Zealand Championships mm. uh, over the years. So we've just had to play around here too, and we can actually bring up the individual heat one, heat two. And later on, Heat 3 results. Cool. Just to uh, refresh the memory where they <laughs> finished in the earlier heat. So, Mark Costello leading Heat 2 at the moment in second place in Heat 1. So, man, that consistency counts. It certainly does. Green flags, we're racing again. Costello clocks up another lamp. Shane Malsop, though, is right on his tail now as they fire it down into turns 1 and 2. Then the back marker in there, then uh, it is Burmester and Quinn Ryan, 172 and 46. Then look at the gap back to fifth place, uh, Cody Chatfield. Oh, we've got one around, and the, right in front of the leaders. So Mark Costello, that's Carter who's gone around again. So Mark Costello had to take evasive action, zipped around the outside. So he's going to drop back into second place. Shane Malsop is your new leader. Quinn Ryan has got by Daniel Burmester in amongst that as well. Uh, and now Quinn Ryan putting a heap of pressure on Mark Costello for second place. Oh, Malsop just gets it a little bit wrong that time. He was just tiptoeing past Joseph Carter. Malsop runs it wide. He's got a good little buffer though over Costello. So this is the battle for second. 198 and 46. Costello just in front of Ryan. Shane Mouse up in the gorge, leading the way. It's just so used to seeing so many of these Rees chassis around nowadays that it's, uh, you don't often see or be able to say, oh, look at that. And the race leader gets taken out by a back marker and again, second punch at it. Oh, sorry, that was Gaskin that time. So now look at that, the top three, they're all coming together. Mouse up. Quinn Ryan, and now Burmist is up to third, uh, and Costello's dropped to fourth. So it was the 56 of Trent James took out Shane Malsop uh, as the race leader, and it all kind of closed up from there. Half a lap to go. Malsop on Ryan. Ryan comes in with the bumper. Malsop tries to break to hold the spot. He could just do it here. This is going to be tight. Whoa. And officially, that's going to go to Shane Malsop. I'm just going to see if I can find the difference there. <laughs> that there, you don't see them that much closer. From first to second place, 0 0.008. So it's at 8 one thousand of a second. <laughs> Wow. It takes me longer than that <laughs> to snap my fingers. <laughs> Shane Malsop takes the win. Quinn Ryan home in second place. Mark Costello in third. Daniel Burmester in fourth. Tim Ross hardly mentioned his name in there because there was that big gap going on, but he's come home in fifth place. He needed that. Uh, Cody Chatfield, uh, 741 in sixth. Then Carl Pegg in 15A. Paul R. Luke Irvine in third. 669W Brendan Ty in ninth. And Trent James 
rounds out the top 10. A let down, so that just shows you how spread that field was. And Barry, where are we at on points? Yeah, Mark Costello certainly that consistency. He dropped a couple of points in that race though, but he's still got a total of 35 from a uh, second place and a third placing. 35 points, 172, Daniel Burmester. 16 points and 16 points for 32. 46B, Quinn Ryan, 14 points and 18 points also for 32. So they're on second equal at the moment. And fourth equal, 71K, Shane Melsop and 669W, Brendan Ty. They're both on 30, so they're three points clear of Cody Chatfield. So at the moment, you've got uh, one car on 35, two on 32, and two on 30. So that battle between Burmester, Quinn Ryan, Shane Melsop, Brendan Ty, there's four of them right in it, and uh, only three places up for grabs. If, yeah. uh, if Costello, he's got a back rid in the last one, but he's shown enough pace to make you think he'll get to the top few anyway. Yeah, Brendan Ty probably in one of the better positions. He's starting up on grid seven. The rest are kind of down towards the back. Yes. Uh, and that one, Quinn Ryan. Uh, oh, sorry, Quinn Ryan's on grid four. So you, you'd probably say he's, yep. he's looking pretty good. Uh, for that final heat. When my secrets they sealed, we talking bellies and Benjamin's not the cross and blue shield. The word that's been a poetic, never feeling pathetic. Slamming shit down like y'all just popped a damn diuretic. Me and Tyro, we know it. With our six shit, we'll show it. And for the subwoofers, fucking man, you know it, we'll blow it. All my people in the crowd, we put this shit in motion. This a fucking wave, we bigger than the ocean. The St. Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Kandu Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the Kinner is brought back to the purpose-built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Kandu Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Kandu Fishing Kinner, Fish or Power. Kandu Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you. With the Reaper Charge, which I've just noticed, hadn't seen this, uh, carrying on the theme, kind of, but it is the Farum Boot Reaper Charge. So, of course, who are the, the two drivers who won the two most, well, only two New Zealand championships that were uh, held here, both under different formats, of course. Joe Farum with the three heat format and then winning in the runoff. Craig Boot with that uh, one race final uh, experiment, two year experiment back in 1999. All right, let's take a look at the Kevin Free group, Heat 2. And it is Hughes and Clarkson on the front row. Jacob Buckrell and Brett Nichols on the second row. Nichols getting caught up in that um, first lap issue in the opening uh, race for this, along with Adam Joblin in the 62P. Mike Honick on grid 6. Stefan Roygaard and Josh Patterson uh, on grids 7 and 8. Jarvis and Ashton on grids 9 and 10 with Kit and Hampton on grids 11 and 12. Ross Ashby, grid 13 in 38M, uh, and the other uh, Pollock Cranes car alongside Thomas Slater in the 7H. David Hunter, 52A on grid 15. Max Holloway, 81V on grid 16. And rounding them out in this one, Brett Loveridge on grid 17, and heat winner in the opening race, Peter Reeves starting right down on grid 18, which he, you know, highlighted when he was uh, in that interview. Uh, that needs to try and pick up as much here as he can. That's the thing. You need to do that work in that back grid. Uh, and it looks like it could be a full grid down there. Just maybe one grid empty in behind Matt Jarvis. So... Set to go. The Kevin Free Group, race 12, end of round number two.
in the starter's hands. Green flag is up, let's go racing. Big kind of jump to the infield, uh, that was Ross Ashby, and he's actually ended up losing a few spots there in the 38. Both the Pollock cars losing out big time in that one. Out front, it is the South Island star, Brett Nichols, who is your race leader. Oh, tangling up down the side is Ashton and Honick. Down the pit straight. And the Pollock cars, yeah, they had a whole lot of, both had some issues there, did they? They've dropped uh, right to the back, missed that. As Nichols leads them through. Is that Jacob Buckrell who's ended up in the concrete wall in turn three? One of the fast cars, he's got the car mobile, he'll look to flick it around here, Jacob Buckrell. Needs to find that gap. Now we're going to go red. Oh! He mucked around a long time and, oh no, oh no sorry, it's for the Ashton car. <laughs> We're sitting behind a computer screen for me, didn't see the number 21. Sitting down in front of race control. Um, uh, so, just trying to find there, was it? So Jacob Buckrell's in ninth. Maybe that was Steve Hampton over there. Just can't quite see properly through here. We've got one on the infield. So I think that might be the Steve Hampton car on the infield. And yeah, Jacob Buckrell uh, over was that car that was parked up in turn three. So race leader Brett Nichols. Heading down into turn number three now. Back to the 31W of Josh Patterson, Brooke Clarkson, out of Auckland, on grid three. Front row sitter Sam Hughes, fourth place, 2.6 seconds behind at the last end of lap. And then we see round the corner there, 81V, Max Holloway. Then to 274 of Mike Honick, we're underway. So Peter Rees, the 10G, up into 10th place. There's Brett Nichols showing a clean pair of heels in this one. Moment there for Jarvis coming off turn number four. Sparks fly into turn number three. Oh, and around goes the 2-2-1 of Brooke Clarkson. She was running well up the front. She's recovered nicely. Again, lots of push and shove here as uh, Joblin get oh we got big and one over goes Holloway Jacob Buckrell was there well there's the first big one of the night and I can tell you it was all captured on the cameras uh, we will look for that and uh, Joblin was involved in there Adam Joblin Max Holloway was running in fourth place heading into that and then that big kind of battle going on there between Holloway uh, Joblin and Buckrell all kind of got into each other. So the car back over, Max Holloway is uh, out and okay. Uh, well protected in these uh, race cars, uh, but his championship is over. Uh, Max Holloway, right, so we're going to go to a replay. So there we go. So Joblin puts the spin on um, and Oh no, so it's Roygaard. So Buckrell nipped up the inside and it was Roygaard uh, who got into the side of Max Holloway. And like, like you said, Barry, just thought, no, I've got to go through him. Yeah. Just kept his foot hard in it. Uh, so Joblin, the instigator there, is uh, Holloway just kind of, uh, that gap closed up on him. And the rest of the field came to him. And yeah, Buckrell nipped up the inside. And then it was Stefan Roygaard. Uh, who was the one pushing through? 
So he's got a bit of, you know, uh, Reese has got some points up his sleeve, so to speak, with only half race distance gone. Yes. He could still uh, close that gap a lot. Couple of cars missing the start there, Brooke Clarkson and Mike Honick. But our race leader, trying to find him in amongst the bunch. Here he is, just coming onto the pit straight. There's 4080 and Brett Nichols is your race leader. The 31W in second, then a long way back to the 77. But it is still third place. And Peter Rees all of a sudden up to sixth place. Another one around. Oh, it's Brooke Clarkson who's gone around. Then somebody's had to throw the car sideways so uh, to miss. And that's caused some issues for everybody else coming through. Oh, that was Patterson who was running in second place. See, now look at he's, he's circled around and he's going to go back on in turn yeah. one. So they've obviously been told tonight or reminded about it. So Patterson, he's dropped. Uh, but they had a big, big lead, those top two. So we'll see how far he's dropped down. Oh, Ross Ashby had a big poke at Brett Nichols, threading the needle down the pit straight there, Brett Nichols. Another one spinning up. It's Patterson again in the 31, so all of a sudden he's having a heap of issues. A flat right rear for the 7H of Slater, so he has to retire to the infield. Brooke Clarkson has pulled off onto the infield. That's a shame for her because she was actually sitting uh, fourth equal on points overall before and, her last spin. And then it makes all that, the chicken flag has come out. Okay. <laughs> Again, we don't see, we can't see it from, uh, from our spot, but Brett Nichols uh, takes the win. One for the mainland. Yep. Tick that one up. Brett Nichols, 48 in home in first place. Sam Hughes in second. Jacob Buckle, the 99B, in third place. Then Stefan Roygaard, uh, 58K. 10G, Peter Rees rounds out the top five. Then 62P, Adam Joblin. 16B, Brett Loveridge. 79H, Matt Jarvis. Then Mike Honick and Ross Ashby, your unofficial top 10. Right, uh, we're going to go to Craig in a moment because I think we've got something to draw, but just very quickly, Barry, how are we sitting on the points there? Yeah. Hey, just before you oh. do that, can I quickly jump in? Yep. I've finally got Asher Rees with me. Yep. Yeah, Asher, mate, hey, obviously the first race wasn't how you wanted it to go, but uh, a bit of redemption in that one coming off the win. Oh, it definitely wasn't the way we wanted it to go, but we did get there in the second one. Plus, uh, we had brake issues, that one no brake, so we were just there to hold on, really. You see that when you came in frantically trying to get those rears off and try and get it sorted. We saw the likes of Jaden Ward out for the night. How did you manage to get yours under control? Oh, I just got to hold on and get the guys. The guys there I got real good. They help out. So i got to thank them. And then driving out there, you've got to drive to the conditions. The tracks, it is, it is what it is for everyone. So just drive smart. Yeah, that's the one. You had a bit of uh, bent steering in that first one as well. You managed to obviously get that sorted and uh, the car was comfortable along the way, despite taking the win? Yeah, definitely, uh, been steering caused a bit of dramas in that first run along with a flat tyre, but got it comfortable for the second one and we're happy. Hey, all the best and hopefully we can see one NZ in the final tomorrow. Cheers, thank you. All the best, up to you boys. Okay, just looking at that Kevin Free group at the moment, they're leading on 36 points, 77G, Sam Hughes, 10G, Peter E second on 34 points, then three cars all on 30. For, third equal at the moment, 48N, Brett Nichols, 58K, Stefan Roygaard, 16B, Brett Loveridge, and the other one that's really close to them, 99B, Jacob Buckrell on 29. So six of them got a fairly good lead over the rest of the field at the moment, but only four spots up for grabs. All righty, we've just done a little bit of a uh, bit of homework in here. We've done a mini stock raffle draw. So uh, Tim, 21W, you're the winner. So uh, we're going to come looking for you, but uh, just a reminder, please don't uh, do not do any live streaming from the crowd, um, but also remember there is merchandise up at the, uh, up at the turn, top of turn three for sale. There's uh, hoodies and all sorts up there, so if you want some merchandise from this weekend and also some from last weekend, go up there and see the guys up there, they'll look after you. But a massive replay at the moment for those watching the, uh, the live streaming. Um, just a replay of the big rollover from earlier on in the race. Um, but up next we're looking at race Race 13, Heat 3, Superstock Dutchie Group coming out. Cars coming out now, so uh, looking forward to them coming out. Looking for 4K of Chad Ace. Uh, we've got 75K of Gavin Tanifar coming out. 
uh, Seth McConchie, Blake Adamson, 99S. All the way from Stratford, uh, Alan Mc McRobbie, 10R. Zane Dykstra, 38V. Ethan Rees, 127G. Uh, some big names in this group. 48B of Keegan Bunce. Uh, Rebecca Barr, 34P. Okay, here we are looking at the grids on, on the live stream. So uh, Moss, 25S, Wayne Moss on pole from Stratford. Uh, Barr, 34P in second uh, position two. McRobbie of 10R in third position four is uh, 12A of, of uh, Stanaway. Fifth, we're looking at Robinson, 89W on the outside there. Six is uh, Bunce of 48B, 99S, Blake Adamson. Uh, 351R of Paul Vasey on position eight. Position nine is uh, Wayne Hemi, 591. And of course, Ethan Rees, 127 on position 10. 11 is 272 of Seth McConchie. And uh, Ferguson, 96A on position 12. 13 is, uh, is Ashton from Rotorua, 24R. Position 14, 38V of, um, of Dykstra, Tony Far, 75K in 15th, and uh, Paul Maybe, 15R in position 16. Round out the top, uh, the, the bottom three, position 17, uh, 7A of Hambling, 88P of Myers on 18, and Ace of 4K on 19th. Okay, and just refreshing those uh, points at the moment, the 127G Ethan Reese leading this group on 36, going into this final heat. Uh, 7A Shea Hambling on 31, right down near the back of the grid. 34P Rebecca Barr on 30. Then we've got uh, 89W Dale Robertson, 75K Gavin Tenifar, both on 28. And the 4K of Chad Ace down the back of the grid, two on 27. So uh, there you're six. Basically, six and the four doesn't go. So uh, some of those guys down the back, too. So there is a bit of a chance that the likes of Paul Vasey and Zane Dykstra who's sitting on 25 points, 24 points respectively. Uh, then it's a gap back to Jack Myers on 19 and uh, with a DNF and one heat win. So um, yeah, he's sitting there ninth at the moment so he needs a fair bit to uh, happen ahead of him but we'll keep an eye on this under any red light that we get just uh, on who the top four are at that time. Definitely will do. Looking at there's quite a few empty positions too so a few cars haven't made it out which is obviously going to, uh, to to kill their chance for the night, but we are looking good. We're racing right into it. 34p straight out in front for Rebecca Barr. Oh, second place straight into it, but uh, action plenty already on the front straight. As uh, the, uh, the 591 of, of Wayne Hemi spinning around on the inside, but uh, Rebecca Barr being the winner there, but Keegan Bunce looking to, uh, to come up on the inside and make the pass. So at the end of one lap down, you're looking at Ethan Rees, 127 first place, Rebecca Barr in second place, Robinson in third, and Dykstra in fourth. But uh, got to spin out down on turn one and two, all under control, underway though, so no, uh, no concerns there. Bear in mind, these guys know what they're doing, they're looking for points in this, because this is what it's all about for this, uh, for this championship. Ethan Rees, 127, made the pass on Barr and up in front. Dykstra sitting back in the uh, fourth position on the points, so uh, trying to try best he can do to, to move way up. Currently sitting in fourth on the track as well. Uh, Ethan Rees currently leading the points quite comfortably and leading the race three laps down and into it. So coming around to finish the fourth lap. Barr making the pass, Ethan Rees dropping back, Robinson in second place, Rees in third. That's bringing Barr up on the points. Looking at Ethan Rees, Rebecca Barr and Dale Robinson in your top three in the points and top three on the track. Not quite in the same order though. Five laps down, seven to go. Barr out of first, Robinson second place, Dykstra third. Chad Ass moving his way up, now looking at uh, fourth equal in points. Rebecca Barr, nice lead up on the track in front of it. Action of Plumian, in th second, third, fourth. Rebecca on a great run, pulling away to take a comfortable lead, but Dice Trevazi and Robinson contact into the wall and through turn three and four. All under control, but bouncing off the wall. That's the 351 of Vasey, moving him down the field a little bit. Balls on on Zay. Zane Dykstra running fourth in points. He's going to want to at least get a couple more. Uh, try and get up into the first place to take the win on this. Currently running in second place. Eight down, four to go. 
Rebecca Barr nice and comfortable out the front. Zane Dykstra second place, Dale Robinson in third, Ethan Rees in fourth. Cars parked up down on turn one at the moment, but all under control. Drum avoided there, nine laps down, three to go. Comfortably out the front for Barr. Ethan Rees made the, made the pass up into second place. Chad running in third place on the track and on the points. Gavin Tanifar needing to uh, sit him just outside the top three. Ten laps down, two to go. Rebecca Barr, Ethan Rees, Chad Ace, Blake Adamson, Jamie Ferguson, top five on the track. Cars coming down to the slope, we've gone red. Up, parked over on turn three. That looks like car. And boy, those, um, other than Ethan Rees <laughs> leading on the points all the way through, about the next eight places have just been continually changing. Just been chopping changing and, uh, the whole time through. Yeah, Zane Dykstra got himself into the top four and then was spun out down here in turn one. Dropped about eight. He's back up to six overall on points. Shay Hamlin started this one from the back. It's taken a long time to get up there, but at the moment, yeah, Rebecca Barr's leading that chase behind Ethan Reese on points. Chad Ace has been well outside the top four and he's now back up to third. Oh, actually, yep, Rebecca Barr right, right down here in front of me. White flag as soon as they start, so actually one, only one to go. Last lap now. So Rebecca Barr, your race leader, currently second unofficially in points, coming around to take the race win. Has Ethan Rees got anything to catch? I don't think so. Coming down to get the chequered flag. That's a race win to Rebecca Barr. Second place, Ethan Rees. Third place, Chad Ace. Same three in the points. So that's how Heat 3 raced out into the Superstock Dutchie group is going to finish up. And there was a bit of a change in placings there for the back in the field too. So... Uh just go, yeah, just we'll, go. we'll just go through the top 10 of the uh, of the points on yep. here. We're looking at Rebecca Barr, first place in that race. Ethan Rees, 127 in second. Chad Ace, third. Blake Adamson, 99 S in fourth. Fifth place, Jamie Ferguson. Paul Maybe, 15 R in sixth. Zane Dykstra, seventh place. Eighth place, Gavin Tanifar. Alan McRobbie, 10 R in ninth. And ran out of the top 10, Wayne Hemi, 591P. Barry, all yours, mate. Alrighty, Ethan Rees, 54 points, quite clearly winning the group. He'd have been more than happy with second place there. 34P, Rebecca Barr, 49 points. 4K, Chad Ace, 44 points. And fourth equal, 7A, Shay Hambling, and 75K of Gavin Tanifar. So we'll have to wait till that result is declared official. But at the moment, there'll be a runoff for fourth place in the Dutchy group. And how about that, eh? Rebecca Barr, as it stands at the moment, uh, will qualify. And comfortably, And comfortably, too. yeah. Yes. I like that, that's it. I was watching that through through the race toward, when there was that stoppage. She had an eight-point buffer. Yes. Um, so she could have dropped all the way back to ninth place and still qualified. So confirming. Ethan Rees, Rebecca Barr, Chad Ace, then a potential runoff for fourth between 7A, Shea Hambling, and the 75K of... Gavin Tanifa. So, yeah, yeah it, it was interesting, wasn't it, um, Barry? You, you talked about Jack Myers. A few people having pokes at him. It was the same thing with Wayne Hemi. He had a couple of people going at him yes. throughout that race as well. No, it's certainly good to see you, Chad Ace Ooh. have a good, consistent run in yep. his car too, because it's it's uh, the big meetings. It's always on the pace, but he's had niggling little issues. It seems the last couple of years. Yeah. Probably more busy working on other people's cars than his own. All right, let's take a look at the lineup for the Red Wooden Group, how they will grid up in heat number three. Uh, Matt Nielsen uh, uh, will start on pole. Actually, I think that's the heat two grids, not the heat three. So we'll uh, see if we can get that one sorted. Damien Orr will start. It looks, it looks so Damien Orr must be on grid two. Okay, no, so Damien Orr's on pole, and he's actually... He's, he's bought it right out wide. Just look at him on the track. He's bought it right out wide. There's not going to be any room for him. Um, so they're going to make him... They're going to make hey, him while you guys in. are just uh, uh, hold on, deciding hold on, on the grid. Hold on, I'm just... Uh, we're just doing the grids now. Sorry, we'll come to you in a moment. Damien Orr will start on pole. Mick Rumney on grid two. Gary Lonigan and uh, James Clark on row number two. 
We then go to Josh Kahui and Lucas Hay on row three. Whitaker and Ashton round out the front four rows. Then it is McKenzie and Wooten on grids nine and ten. Josh Prentice and Simon Joblin both in that top bar running at the moment. Then we go to Hilton Parker and Hamish Booker on grids 13 and 14. Hayden Chapman and Kaylin Mooney on 15 and 16. Then Ty, Nielsen and James wrap up the group. Very quickly, Stu. Yeah, real quickly, I've got uh, Rebecca Barbet. You won the race and you just qualified through to tomorrow night. Bloody awesome. Yeah, pretty much. I'm speechless. I don't really know what to say. Yeah, first New Zealand champs there, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, you had a uh, good right. look at the track last week, but uh, we'll have to into the big show. We'll have to cut you there, Stu, because we are about to go racing. Officials are off. Damien Orr and Mick Rumney, the Rotorua to do a duo, are on the front row in the starters' hands. 12 laps. Heat number three. Who will take the next four spots in the New Zealand Superstock Championship Finals? Orr and Rumney lead them into oh, the turn. The 247's oh. over. That's Hayden Chapman, who won the opening heat, and he has gone over. Yeah, so he's still sitting in the top seven on points, and it was just ever so gentle. He just got turned uh, to the right. I thought it was actually going to come back down. It's basically just balanced on the side rail, I think. Probably has just gone past the point of no return, but it was so slow. He'd have had time to do his hair while he was going over, I think. It was just, <laughs> yeah, just, just such a gentle... Uh, that wasn't even a Tommy tip over, it was uh, less than that. But that's the end of his chances, obviously. So he was, yeah, he was in there with uh, a chance, that's for sure. Yep, he was in the top seven on points, and this group is the group that's very, very close on points. There's uh, only five points between the top seven. So Chapman is out. Here we go, we're gonna, we've got a replay. Yeah, you're right, it did just kind of sit there uh, for a little while, didn't it? Uh, do we just head? We just thought no. We've got a fish. Doesn't look as though the referees are making any changes to that um, heat. We've just had the points board up to us, but I don't know whether that's just come from the points team or whether that is official from the referees. And up and over goes Hayden Chapman. All right, lights are out. Here we go. Green again. Oh, James Clark's missed it. And we go red again. And this will be for the uh, 15, I think it is, over in the corner there, Ethan Whitaker. He didn't refire at the restart. So James Clark at the moment sitting fourth equal on points. That will have cost him a bundle. Yeah, would it? Because he lost a heap um, of time. He, oh, a heap of spots on that restart. He's trying to... So he hasn't crossed the line yet. No. No, so the, yeah, the points haven't updated yet. Um, They're still basically sitting as they were at the end of Heat 2. Because I, I think, did the lights actually go red before they got to the end of the lap? I think they might have, hence the reason why they wouldn't have updated yet. Yes. Yeah, I think that must have been the case. So we'll watch that closely here because officially no car has completed a lap um, on our electronic lap mm. scoring. So we'll wait for that to get updated. Four cars from each group advancing to the finals tomorrow night at the Pollock Cranes 2023 New Zealand Superstock Championships. And another two from that Ripper Charge race, which will be the first race tomorrow night. Reminder, racing starting at 6.30 tomorrow night, so you don't want to be turning up at 7 uh, for the start of racing and having missed the Ripper Charge. No, no, no. Right. 11 to run. Heat 3. So Joblin and Prentice having a big battle there. That is back for seventh place. Oh. And it doesn't look as though our points are updating. They're not. No. James Clark. Well, let's count him out. 
because he's gone to the infield. Oh, here we go. Now we are. Now we're updating. So, yeah, Damien Orr, Josh Prentice, Simon Jodlin, yeah. Hamish Booker. Uh, how they are at the moment. Clark's back. No. <laughs> he thought about it. Yeah. He did think about it. Gary Lonigan just outside the bubble at the moment. Needing to pick up a couple on Hamish Booker. So here we go. Who's, uh, are we going to see somebody do some stirring here maybe? Regan McKenzie? Or is he just circulating looking for points? No, he's going to pull to the infield, the 49. Gary Lonigan moves up to fourth place. Oh, it's getting tight on points, as we mentioned. We've got Joblin, Nielsen, Lonigan, and Rumney all within two points for, and battling for fourth place. As Simon Joblin just gets a little bit crossed up and parks Caelan Mooney into the concrete. And Joblin, has that caused issues for him? He drops back another spot, the 72. Simon Joblin drops back to 10th place. That's not what he wanted. He was right on the bubble. It's Damien or Josh Prentice and Hamish Booker looking okay at the moment. It's all Ron Rumney and Kahui in the top spots. Oh, Kahui goes to the concrete wall as he gets tangled up there with Mick Rumney. The car bursts into flames. Well, a bit of an exhaust fire it must have been. Just a, a shot as uh, he hit the concrete wall. Joblin back up to ninth. Joblin and Nielsen tied for points and Joblin is chasing down Nielsen. They are tied for fourth on points and they are racing down in eighth and ninth. That's the important one at the moment. Joblin just uh, drops back. Some issues there for the Simon Joblin car after you had that uh, little tangle. Oh, Matt Nielsen's... Oh, no, sorry. I thought that was Nielsen spun up. No, he's still running. We have got the white flag next time around for Damien Orr. And we've gone red. And yes, yeah, still that fire. I think that's Josh Kahui. So yeah, I did see those flames when he hit the wall. Yeah, it is Josh Kahui. Yeah, it looked um, like it went out again, yeah, didn't it? And, and I thought I thought perhaps maybe it was just a, a very quick exhaust fire mm. as he was trying to refire it. Uh, but obviously as he's come off the track, that was still on fire. Um, and he's the cause of the stoppage, so he will be told uh, that you have to head to the infield. He was right down on points anyway, uh, 15 points. So as it sits at the moment, we've got Simon Joblin and Matt Nielsen uh, f tied for fourth place and they are on the track, one behind each other. Uh, just trying to find them now. I think Matt Nielsen is too far away for Joblin to catch him with a quarter of a lap to go. So that's Matt Nielsen, um, kind of just about to enter turn four on the back of that bunch. Then it's probably 10 car lengths back to Joblin. Unless Nielsen gets caught up here. Not going to. So Damien Orr, Michael Rumney, Josh Prentice are the top three in the race. Damien Orr, what a great night for the driver of the 81R car. Oh, chicken flag drops. And Damien Orr, what a great night takes the win so Barry it's not about top tens it's about the top four in this one and how has it ended up yeah well Matt Nielsen grabbed an extra point on oh. that uh, last lap so Damien Orr topped the group 81R with 52 points 5G Josh Prentice 49 82S Hamish, S, Hamish Booker 47 147K Matt Nielsen 42 one ahead of Simon Joplin on 41. Oh. And then your other cars that will make it through into the um, river charge. 7R Michael Rumney, 95A Gary Lonigan, and 71H of Tony Wooten. That's if it stands. Those are provisional yes. results at the moment. So once again, the top four that go through from that group, Barry? Yeah, Damien Orr, Josh Prentice, Hamish Booker, and Matt Nielsen. So Nielsen grabbing a spot that was that so that's so crucial isn't it yes. um, he, he grabbed that spot uh, so he got past Tony Wooten 
uh, on the last lap. So yeah, they were running down Nielsen and Joblin in eighth and ninth. Yep. And then, yeah, on the last lap, he got past Tony Wooden to move up to seventh place in the race. Uh, but Damien Orr, um, and he has been one of the quick guys around uh, Huntley Speedway for the last couple of seasons now, hasn't he? Um, and I, I, you go back to, uh, I think it was Wanganui, two New Zealand championships ago mm. when Randall Tarrant won it. Damien Orr was the only Rotorua car in the finals that year. Um, and he's... Uh, back that up here as we see some of the replays. Hayden Chapman here just getting spun around there and that car just digging in and over he goes. James Clark was the one I felt sorry for there. The car was going fine until the uh, the first red light. Yep. Then there was a real delay for him to get going again. Then we had a second red light and it just never really worked after that, did he? Went to the infield, came back out, went back in, but he was sitting in the top four on points and starting on the second or third row of the grid in that heat so all he was really going to have to do was keep out of trouble it doesn't matter how hard the job is we suck it up and get it done no matter how dirty our hands have to get we suck it up and get it done suck it up suck it up suck it up out for suck sake suck it up suck it up suck it up Suck it up and get it done with suckitup.co.nz Technical Welding Services Hamilton are specialists in the transit concrete mixer industry. From chassis drop-off to a full working concrete mixing, the team will take care of the job from start to finish. Full engineering services and general sheet metal work can also be undertaken. Need a quote? Call 07 847 2031 or visit our website, www.techweld.nz. Technical Welding Services Hamilton, we are the experts. There's the defending champion, 1NZ. It's Philip Gargan, who will start on the front row in 27S. Gary Hunter, DNF, in the second heat. We'll see if he makes it back out uh, on the outside of the front row. Tom Cooper and Mark Dickey. Uh, on grids three and four. Zach Glennie and Elias Dykstra on row number three. Then 581 Jordan Deere and Tyler James 89G grids seven and eight. Hughes and Rees round out the front five rows. Then Dylan Ashton and Zach Harris on grids 11 and 12. Next row we see Maddie Wise and Aidan Eustace ahead of Alex Hill and Robbie Maybe, who's on grid number 16. And down the back uh, will be empty on grid 17. No Marsh, Aaron Alderton. Uh, we didn't see him in the second heat either. And Paul Gaskin uh, will be there, though, on grid 19 in number 6W. Points for this one, Barry. Who are we watching? Yeah, the 136 pair, Matty Wise leading at the moment. 37 points. 422R, Dylan Ashton. 34 points. 1NZ, Asher Rees. Uh, there was uh, problems in heat one. Good, uh, good race in heat two. So he's sitting there on 29. But right beside him, the 119V is Zach Harris on 28. 95N, Alex Hill on 27. And the 5M of Elias Dykstra on 25. So, uh, yeah, Reese is still going to have to be careful. He needs uh, another good race from grid 10. Definitely does. Well, it's uh, revs are coming up. We're underway. We are racing. Five minutes straight out from the outside lane into, uh, onto, into tight on the inside. Everyone's safe through one and two. Three wide through one and two for the front guys though. Meanwhile, big spin down the down the back straight for, looks like that was 20, 27, it could have been. But we're looking at Asher Rees up front. Points wise, he's still sitting, he's, uh, in fact actually points wise that shot him straight up to the front just to, coming in front of this one, so if he can hold it, it's going to be his to, his to lose. On the track, we're looking at Asher Rees, first place, Tyler James, second place, but points-wise, Matty Wise has just snuck, snuck in against, and up on top points, we've got Asher Rees running currently in second place points with Zach Harrison third. Those are your top three to watch. But uh, Elias Dykstra, he's back in fifth, and Dylan Ashton in fourth. The other ones wanting to do it. Four, three, three laps down, nine to go. Asher Rees, Tyler James, Zach Harris, and Elias Dykstra, Jordan Deere in your top five. Although Jordan's sitting, uh, sitting down a bit in, uh, in points. 
Many wise Asher Rees and Zach Harris here, top three currently on points. And Asher Rees, Tyler James, and Elias Dykstra in top three on the track. Four laps down, eight to go. Elias Dykstra sitting one point behind Zach Harris in fifth and fourth, respectively, so the other ones to keep an eye on. Elias Dykstra, five in, needs to make one more pass and has just done so back up, up into fourth on points and third in position on the track. Six steps down, six to go midway through the race. Asher Rees, Tyler James, Elias Dykstra, Jordan Deere, Tom Cooper, top five. Points wise, Matty Wise still sitting out there. Two points ahead of one NZ, Asher Rees, Dylan Ashton in third place and Elias Dykstra in fourth. He's fourth equal, so the 5M and the 119, two to keep an eye on because they're equal on fourth at the moment. Okay, awesome. Thanks for that. 581 of Jordan Deere just coming on to the infield. Issues for Jordan, so that's his race run. Eight lap downs, four to go. Asher Reeves still out in front. Tyler James in second place. Matty White sitting comfortable on point, so. Matty sitting currently in fifth place on the track. Nine down, Asher Rees, well and truly out in front. Tyler James at a nine in second place. Elias Dykstra, 5M in third. Tom Cooper, Matty Wise, Zach Harris, Alex Hill in your top seven. But points wise, Matty Wise sitting up there. Asher Rees still sitting comfortably in second place. Third place comfortably, Dylan Ashton. But Elias, Elias Dykstra and Zach Harris sitting equal, 42 points each. That's where the battle's going to be on this one. White flag out, one to go. Asher Reeves just got to bring it home. Tyler James, second place. Coming around out onto the front straight now. Checker flag, done and dusted. Asher Reeves, one NZ, first place. Tyler James, Adelon G in second place. Points wise, Matty Wise still sitting up on top of, top of points. Asher Reeves. Second place, Dylan Ashton, 42R in third. And then we've got Elias Dykstra in fourth. Sit on your points. Uh, top 10 for that race. Asher Rees, first place. Tyler James, second. Elias Dykstra in third. Tom Cooper, 85G in fourth. Matty Wise, 136P in fifth. Alex Hill, sixth. Paul Gaskin, Dylan Ashton, Zach Lenny in ninth, and Tom Hughes rounding out the top 10. But points wise, Barry, how are we looking? Yeah, well, Matty Wise led the points all night in this group, 52 yep. in the 136P, 1NZ Asheries. Drove a very comfortable race in that one, and as we discussed, he so often, if he has a bad one, he comes out and wins the next two, and he has. <laughs> so 48 points, 422R, Dylan Ashton, 47 points, good run. 5M, Elias Dykstra, 42 points, and that was looking like a runoff till a lap or so from the end. So there you top four. And the fourth of the river charge will be the 95 N of Alex Hill, one point out of the uh, top four with 41. 89 G Tyler James with 40. 85 G Tom Cooper with 36. And the 6 W of Paul Gaskin also on 36. Alrighty, so uh, looks like we've got a clear top four in that one. Yep. Looking in the Dutchie group, I think we're going to be looking at a runoff there. Uh, between at this stage between Shea Hambling and Gavin Tanifar for, for fourth. Uh, looks like we're just going to head down to Bianca. I believe she's got Hamish Booker down there. I sure have. Uh, huge congratulations to you, Hamish. And just to uh, confirm, this is actually your third time you've qualified for the title. Yep, that's right. Yep. Back in uh, Auckland a while, like a few years ago, and then in Rotorua last time as well. So it's been a long time since you have qualified, but hey, you've made it, and that was a tough group. You've come out here, you've been sucking up the water, it's really, really hot out there. Yeah, it definitely is hot. No, nah, it's good to qualify again, eh? I've never had much luck in the finals, though, so hopefully uh, tomorrow's a change of, change of it, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, um, tell us, how's the track actually holding up? Because it's so totally different from your first to your third race. Yep, yeah, it is definitely different. Um, I don't know, the car just seemed like on rails tonight, eh? It's just, um, even though the track was, well, I don't know, bits of it are completely different than other bits, but it was just going good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, I'm going to let you go because I know you want to watch this final race, but congratulations again. Well done. Yeah, sweet. Cheers. Thank you. Awesome. Cheers. Yeah, that is pretty cool for Hamish Booker and just kind of always 
you know, one of those other things that you start looking at how it's shaping up. What do we got at the moment? We got uh, two Gisborne cars, a couple of Palmy cars, one from Kiki. Uh, sorry, make that two from Kiki. A uh, couple from Rotorua. One from Bay Park. Uh, one from Stratford. Starting to take shape. Our finals field. Uh, here we go. The Jared Wade group. Heat three. And it's Bryce Marks who will start on pole. Todd Hemingway on grid two. Dylan Marshall and Scott Joblin on row two. Jamie Hamilton starts on grid five. Lance Mitchell on six. Then it's Curtin and Steiner on row number four. Scott McEwen and Matt Pickard round out the top ten. Kerry Remnant, he'll be up there on points, starting on grid 11. Jeff Kite on grid 12. Then we go to Robbie Morris and Randall Tarrant, grids 13 and 14. Logan Nicholson maybe and Cody McKee side by side on 15 and 16. Then it's Davis, Stewart and Kelly to round out the back of the starting grid for the Jared Wade group. And we will uh, go to Barry and get a points reminder and update who's in the running here, who's on the bubble. Yeah, former New Zealand champion from uh, a couple of runnings ago, 66A, Randall Tarrant, 35. Then second equal, we've got the 9G of Jamie Hamilton and the 19M of Kerry Remnant. And then we've got uh, four cars equal sitting there at the moment. The 9R, now remind me, you got to Rob, remind Robbie, me. This Robbie time. Morris. Robbie Morris, that's right. It says... Uh, Brett Stewart on our um, on our list here, which 28 points. Yeah. 72A Cody McKee with 28 points, and the 307K of Matthew Pickard on 28 points. Scott Joplin, Scott Joplin with the 52P, he's on 26, so he's only a couple of points out of that as well. So uh, still really the the top six here going for four spots, I think. Yeah, and again, no one's looking like super safe, are they? No. Um, you know, Scott Joblin, a couple of points outside the top four. He's got the best of the starting grids, uh, starting up there on grid four. The rest of them are kind of down towards the back, so... It's going to be a good battle through the field from them. And, and when you look at fifth through eighth as well, mm. um, you're looking at who's just outside at the moment. Eighth place is 94A Dale Stewart with 23. But those behind that are looking for the ripper charge... Mm. Um, yeah, you said a couple on 21, 20, 19 points. So there's, there's a whole heap of them only just out of that ripper charge place as well. All right, Cody McKee, we saw he, he called for a three-minute bell earlier on, and he's got I, similar issues again, has I he? I think he's booked these in advance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's down at the gate, so a three-minute bell uh, running for the 72A. And, and he's right in there. He's uh, one of those cars that's tied for fourth place at the moment, the 72A. That's right. Um, at least one thing, like at the moment, you've got three cars on 28 points. Unless they're going to dead heat the race, you know they're going to get separated. But then there's uh, other guys that are only a point or two away that can finish up slotting in between to still give us with some uh, dead heats. Because they, uh, the three sitting on 28, once they start scoring some more points in this race, they're, they're not all going to be equal after this race. But they yeah, very, very little sort of between second and seventh. In, uh, in the Jared Wade group. So McKee on the move. And into the wall very oh. gently. <laughs> he had that locked up a long way out too and uh, sliding gently towards the wall. They've just put a bit of water on the track. I guess he was doing a bit of brake testing and uh, yeah, seemed to turn right on him. I suppose he, at least he knows now. <laughs> where, where the, the wall is <laughs> <laughs> how well the brakes are or yes. are not working uh, so we do see one empty spot there in behind Kerry Remnant and in front of Robbie Morris on the inside row, Bryce Marks on pole, here we go race fans it is the Jared Wade group qualifying heat number 3 12 laps to decide who will be the top 4, who advances to the finals tomorrow night of the Pollock Cranes New Zealand Superstock Championships. Todd Hemingway with a great start from the outside. Kerry Remnant uh, down onto the grass there for a moment. He's up getting back out on the racetrack. Ooh. 
on oh, spin around down there down the main straight we've got a couple into the concrete oh we've got Kelly riding up over the Kerry Remnant car problems for Bryce Steiner so just trying to pick who that might be down in the wall down there McEwen uh, Kite and McKee maybe as Todd Hemingway leads we got more piling in there. See, again, that, that little bit of water's gone on. Yes. And it's just caused mayhem and chaos. I think that was uh, Bryce Marks went in fairly hard and bounced back round. He's nose on into the wall now. Not sure whether it was Cody McKee followed him in. I think it might have been. Yeah, McKee. Um, so you get to register a lap. Scott McEwen, Jeff Kite, Cody McKee, and Bryce Steiner. Yet to register a lap. Steiny won't. He's parked up in the middle now. Yeah, uh, and it looks like Brett Kelly has gone to the infield as well. He was one of those ones that was uh, pretty sure he went in over to the concrete wall over there as well. Well, maybe he's signalled them away. So the, the stoppage has to be for somebody. Um, so yeah, do we just kind of a bit blind in our spot to see what may or may not be going on over there at that uh, incident whether there is there doesn't seem to be a lot happening no um, again it could be like you say Barry it could be that argument no I'm okay I'm fine yeah um, don't touch me I'm ready to go racing again and if they're all saying that they're gonna have to make a decision on uh, well, who caused the red light yeah they? Well, well the referees will won't they they're like well we put the reds on because there were those three cars in the wall who hadn't moved so you got Scott McEwen um, oh here we go so we can see it now so you've got Cody McKee in the 72 Scott Job uh, Scott Joblin in the uh, 52 Dale Stewart is there in the 94 and Bryce Marks in the 73 no they sent the 93 H off who was right round here on the exit to turn four? Okay, well he's yet to he's yet to complete a lap. So he he must have been over in there at some stage yes, then. I yes, guess. he was. Um. Okay, we're, we're going. Okay, here we go. All right, so it is the 99 of Todd Hemingway, who's the race leader, from Lance Mitchell. Somebody in the wall down in turn one and two. But now all of a sudden, Randall Tarrant is the new points leader. And Robbie Morris just outside the top four. We've got another couple pulling to the infield. Bryce Marks and Scott McEwen. So this is good for those drivers. We talked about those cars who were up there on points starting right down towards the back of the field. And we're seeing... DNFs which is helping them gain the points but I suppose everybody's in that same boat so Kerry Remnant sitting on the bubble and he's down in ninth place at the moment in the 19 uh, he's got a couple on Robbie Morris so Robbie Morris needs to pass another couple of cars uh, but he needs to catch Randall Tarrant and Jamie Hamilton and He's got Randall Tarrant in his sights. Cody McKee as a back marker between them. But I don't see that being a likely finish for Robbie Morris. A lot of work to do with five laps to go. Todd Hemingway, still your race leader in the 99. Comes around, crosses the start finish line to wrap up another lap. Lance Mitchell, then Dylan Marshall, Jamie Hamilton are your top four in the race. But again, it's looking like a pretty clear-cut top four for your qualifiers with this one. As the numbers on trail, we've got red. So it looks to be some movement from the officials down in turn three. Something on the track, sorry, in turn four, something on the track there. So it doesn't look to be... A lot of aggro going in now in this one. They've got themselves sorted. And got into a groove and they just seem to be sticking to it. 
and it's going to leave a couple of people high and dry and outside that top four. Race leader included Todd Hemingway, he's down in sixth place on points. Two to go for Hemingway. Oh, does he just run it wide there? He has. Lance Mitchell to the front. Won't be too costly uh, for Hemingway. White flag out, one to go. In comes Mitchell. Makes the pass. Oh. Robbie Morris getting so close now. See, somebody had a yep. big shot at Jamie Hamilton on the last corner oh, there. Did they? Took him out to the wall, but uh, Hamilton got away again. So, I'm not sure who it was. It's a pretty committed dive at him, though. So, Todd Hemingway's going to take the win, uh, and he's not going to make that top four barrier. It's what it's about, the finalist. Who's there on the preliminary results? Yeah, he come from a long way back, but once he got to first, he couldn't go any further, yep. so he needed problems for other people ahead. 66A, Randall Tarrant, 50 points. 9G, Jamie Hamilton, 48 points. 19M, Kerry Remnant, 44 points. And the 307K, Matthew Pickard, 42 points. Now, Robbie Morris just one point outside, and he finished behind Matthew Pickard on the track. Yes. Um, he needed to make that one more pass, uh, but wasn't able to do it. So those top four again, Barry. Yeah, it'll be uh, Tarrant, Hamilton, Remnant and Pickard and uh, then Robbie Morris, Todd Hemingway, 52p Scott Joplin and 72a Cody McKee heading to the river charge. Then there's quite a big gap back to the rest of them. Mm, so Randall Tarrant, New Zealand champion, I was going to say two years ago, but it's actually what, three years ago, yes, isn't it? Uh, two runnings ago. Two runnings ago uh, with that uh, stunning victory at Ocean View Speedway in Wanganui. Tops the group, the Jared Wade group. And no surprise to see the very quick Jamie Hamilton uh, in there. And yeah, we talked about um, Matthew Pickard, just uh, he's kept his nose clean all night, Barry, and, and he's, he's come away with has. the spot. Yeah, yeah, great effort. Where are we now? This is second to last group. Barry Featherston group. Uh, making their way onto the track. It's the 22W of Richard Gaskin. It's his way out. Let's take a look at how they line up on the grid. Tim Ross needs a big one from uh, the front row. Trent James alongside 56V. Tyler Walker, I think we did hear that he was out for the night. Uh, Quinn Ryan starting on grid number four. Luke Irvine on five, Mike McCarthy on six, Brendan Ty on seven, Dan Pollock, uh, another one who didn't make group uh, the second heat, uh, set to start on grid eight if he makes it out. Uh, Peg and Burmester on row number five, Thomas Van Amsterdam and Joe Carter on grids 11 and 12. Then it is Brad Coxhead and Shane Malsop on 13 and 14. AJ Axton's on grid 15, and Jaden Ward will be missing from grid number 16. Then Richard Gaskin, Mark Costello, and Cody Chatfield right down the back. And we see Mark Costello, he's pulled out, and he's come to a stop at the yes. gate. Yes, yeah, your points leader, Mark Costello, 35 points. Got three points over Daniel Burmeister and Quinn Ryan. So, yeah, he just came straight out the gate and backed up. So he's obviously aware that uh, there's something required quickly let's hope the crew can uh, get whatever he needs fairly quick and mm. say so, yeah points leader he's a long way back on the grid but uh he doesn't need to get all the way to the front obviously so what's, what's he got up his sleeve he's got five points up his sleeve yes yep uh, so four people on 30 at the moment they've just moved them forward a bit to uh make room for the water truck so this is a, like and, and i know this um it, it is the same for everyone uh, I know that, but this, this three-minute bell becomes an issue at some locations around 
the country with the, with the way the pits are laid out. Yes. Certainly, you know, if, if you're parked way up in that, right down the bottom end of the pits, um, by the entry to the public car park, that is a long way yes. to have to run up to where your car is parked and the crew to get there. They've got to get there. So the three minutes starts when they jump over the gate. So that's just commenced. Um, then they've got to find out what the problem is, if, if it's something they're unaware of. But perhaps because he, he stops so quickly. But you've got to think he's been sitting on the dummy grid. Yeah, I, I, oh, may, maybe they've they have run back to get something. Yeah, I wonder whether it is just a neck brace or yeah. something like that because obviously uh, Costello, you had a problem as soon as he yep. drove out the pit gate. So uh, may just be some safety equipment there that he'd left behind. Yeah, they, they, they seem fairly cool, calm and collected, don't they? It's not like yes. they, they've rushed out and gone, what's wrong, and then had to rush away to try and get something to fix an issue. No, they're, they're straight into it. Yeah, I think Palmerston North pits now, even, even if you're in the closest oh, pit, you're a long way away from the pit gate. You are. I mean, yeah, beautiful pit set up there, but yep. I mean, the guys down the far end of that, you just there need to take a packed lunch with you. So, <laughs> But like I say, even if you've got the number one stall, you're a long way away from the pit gate there. Hence at the team's champs now, you see all the teams set up with the quad bikes and trailers and all sorts of things, don't they? Carrying so much gear to the pit gate. All right, see, we've, we've got... I just had a quick look here. We're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We've got thirteen cars in this race. See that? It's the the downside of starting with groups of nineteen. By the end of the night, there's not not a lot left. So, but thirteen. So in theory, it, it just makes it that much easier to qualify. Um, you only got a one in thirteen chance now um, to make it to the finals. So a lot, so a few missing from this one. Yeah, so, I mean, what so Mark Costello is essentially starting on grid 13. Yes, so instead of 18. So straight away he's kind of got about eight points on to yep. his total already. So yeah. look at all those empty spots. Right, we're going to go racing. We'll Oops. hand over to Craig. Alrighty, we are racing. We're green. 144 straight out into, of pole into the lead, but runs real wide into turn one and two. Manages to regain it, keep it up, and keep going down the back straight into three and four. Tim Ross. All cars running real wide into, into three and four. So, contact down in, in turn four. You've got 71, one car up and over on the bonnet of 71. 669 of Brendan Ty sitting up on the on the bonnet there, working his way down, manages to get down out of the other cars, backs off into the infield real fast. So two laps down, 10 to go, we're looking at Tim Ross, 144 up in front, Tim ja uh, Trent James, 56 feet in second place, and Quinn Ryan, 46 feet in third, but points wise, Quinn Ryan is, uh, is holding it at the moment, but we have gone red. red. Lights. Gone red, so just checking on 71 of uh, Shane Melsop down on turn four facing the wrong way. Let's see if the car go up, up and over his bonnet, so um, obviously he couldn't get it refired after that. No, that'll cost him too because he was in uh, a definite rapid charge spot at that stage and um, yeah, he'll, he'll definitely be dropping out of that top eight now. Yeah, he's not going to be happy with that. So we're only two laps down into the race, but uh, points wise looking at yeah, Quinn Ryan, third place on the track, yep. and uh, 49 points, so three ahead of Mark Costello, who he's got up to ninth already, but done most of that without actually passing anybody, <laughs> with only having 13 starters, but exactly. yeah, he, he still has got past you. Uh, Daniel Burmester, at the moment, is even behind Costello, so um, he's sitting fourth at the moment, still too clear of Cody Chatfield, but he's not going to want to go much further back than that, that's no, for sure. He's sitting well, sitting 11th on the track at the moment. So you're not wanting to drop any more than that. Yeah, I sort of thought he could come out and uh, win this group. At the moment, he's going to have to struggle to stay in it. So Rev's coming up, lights are out. We are racing, we're green. Straight back into a twin trip, James. Contact into the wall, running around the wall through one and two. 
Quinn Ryan is your, is your lead on points at the moment, but on the track, you're looking at Tim Ross, 144G in first place, Trent James in second place, and Quinn Ryan in third place on, on the track. Of course, point, points wise, you're looking at Ryan, Costello, and James in your top three, with Chaffield in fourth. Daniel Burmester trying to, uh, to nudge his way back into that, but currently sitting down in 12th position. Five laps down, seven to go. Ross, James, Ryan, McCarthy, and Chatfield, top five on the track. But it's all about the points on this one. That's what they're racing for. Points-wise, we're looking at Ryan, Casello, James, and Chatfield are your top four going through. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bermester back on 40, so... Seven laps down, five to go. Yeah, right. so Daniel Burmis is sitting on the infield now, so uh, dropped out of the top four right. points. Cody Chatfield got that four. Yep. And uh, Burmis still obviously not going to go any further. No, that's uh, that's him done. Flying down the back straight through three and four, cutting up on the inside, made the great pass through there. Trent. Uh, Tim Ross, 144G in first place, Trent James in second, Quinn Ryan in third. And points wise, looking at uh, Ryan up, uh, up top points. Actually, first equal with Ryan and Costello. So, those are the ones to watch, but uh, where are we 10 laps down, two to go. We're going to be looking at the white flag this time round. So, Tim Ross, Trent James, Quinn Ryan, and Cody Chaffield. White flag out, one to go for Tim Ross. Let's take the race lead. Quinn Ryan's still your points leader. But we're looking at Ross, James, Ryan and Chatfield and Gaskin in your top five on the track. Chicken flag done and dusted, 144G of Tim Ross first place, Trent James in second and third place was Quinn Ryan. Points wise just need to See, no, Mark Casella managed to jump ahead and make one point, so he's uh, taking the points unofficially so far with Quinn Ryan in second place. But uh, as the dust, dust settles, we'll, uh, we'll see where that puts us with the, with the points, Barry. Yeah, well, Mark Costello did come through, top the group with 50, Quinn Ryan 46B with 49, 56B, Trent James 43, and just in the last lap, Cody Chatfield, who was in position four, dropped to fifth place. Uh, Richard Richard Gaskin, 22W on 42, and into the river charge, 741A, Cody Chatfield with 41. Daniel Burmester limped home in the end in, uh, what, 12th place, uh, 40 points. Then Brendan Ty on 39, and Tim Ross, who uh, didn't even finish heat oh. one, finished up in eight, so it does make the river charge. Oh, C Cody Chatfield, how about that? Like, like you said there, it was the last corner. He was sitting in... Uh, he was sitting in fourth place in the race. He was sitting in fourth place in the group. Yes. He was set to make the finals. Last corner got passed by both Richard Gaskin, who was the guy who was right behind him on points. Yes. And then, if, if he'd only given up that one, he would have still been okay. But then Mark Costello on his big charge. So and yeah, so Cody he lost another. So one. he lost yes. another point, which puts him behind Gaskin. Yes. That would have been a fairy tale, Cody Chatfield. Oh, wouldn't it? Uh, making the finals. Wow, uh, but Mark Costello, you could you could see him uh, just sitting there that whole race. He was being very careful yeah. and very ginger with making his moves, wasn't he? Uh, when you've got a few points lead, yep, you, you can do that, can't you? And uh, Quinn Ryan ahead of him, he, he was just doing what he had to do as well, I think. But yep. Mark Costello, great job. Um, Certainly wouldn't have picked him to have uh, top qualified in the group. You know he's going to go good here. But uh, no, excellent effort from Costello Ryan. Trent James, another good effort. Richard Gaskin, uh, yeah, pulling it out the bag right on the last corner to qualify in your top four. Four. Uh, so I, I gave you a quick club by club rundown. Uh, out of that group there, if that stays how it is, uh, Hawks Bay. Wanganui and Wellington now have somebody in the finals. 
uh, and add another one on for Rotorua. So they move to three cars with Mark Costello. Oh boy. Uh, so uh, we, we obviously still have that runoff. Uh, we haven't heard that it's not happening. Uh, so we will go with the fact that it is. Let's take a look at how they line up. This is our final full race of the night. Race 18, heat three for the Kevin Free Group. Matt Jarvis and Peter Rees on uh, the front row, first and second. Then it is uh, Patterson and Loveridge on row two in third, uh, grid three and four. Roy Garten Holloway on row three, then Mike Honick and Dave Hunter on grids seven and eight. Adam Joblin, Thomas Slater round out the top ten on the grids. Brett Nichols, heat winner. Uh, in race two on grid 11, Ross Ashby alongside on 12. Jacob Buckrell and Steve Hampton, the tri-rail cars on 13 and 14. Then Brooke Clarkson, the Murray Kitt, the Aucklanders, 15 and 16. Then we go to Hughes and Ashton, who will be on the back row. Shane Penn. Oh, yeah, here we go. Only ever got a third place in the Silver Bullet in Dunedin. Okay. Um, and that was a runoff with Frankie Wayman Jr. Should have won it in Auckland in 2006 when Darcy Hunter, Hunter won it. Yes. Where they went slower and slower and slower. slower and yes. uh, eventually Shane passed Darcy and Darcy, then Darcy just, just spun, spun it out. out. And yes. Shane, Shane stalled and lost the lap. And yep. that was gone. Yep. That was a case of who could go drive the slowest that day, wasn't it? It for was. A while? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, was a, it was a big game of cat and mouse between those two, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. And because and Tony Mack got. 3 and Z in that car a couple of times as well. Or was it a 2 and a 3? I think, about, I think it was two third places. Oh, don't start asking that, oh, any geez. more questions okay. at this time of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. But at least uh, we got the other one we answered. Did. Uh, thank you. Right, points. Uh, how, are we, how are we looking going into this one? Very quickly because we're not far away. Uh, Kevin Free Group. Kevin Free Group, yes. Sam Hughes, 36, 77G. 10G, Peter Reese, 34. And 48 N and 58 K and 16 B all on 30. 99 B Jacob Buckrell on 29. So this is a close one. Yeah, then a big gap back to 22 yeah. points. So like it, it is, it is amongst those six. Six into four. All right, here we go. 12 laps to find out. Jarvis was slow off pole and Patterson desperate to try and make the pass. Peter Rees out to the front. Uh, so he was already points leader. Oh, so he's a uh, points leader now uh, after that race start. So Rees, Holloway's back out there after his rollover. And doing battle with Rees at the front. Then Stefan Roygaard, Josh Patterson, Brett Loveridge. Uh, the way they run at the front at the moment. So it's Rees, Roygaard, Loveridge and Hughes who are your top four as it stands early in the race. So again, the numbers down, just the 15 starters in this final heat of the night. Oh, big cruncher into the wall for uh, Brett Loveridge. And Brett Nichols gets a little bit out of control and down the straight. And on the grass, he's going to lose a lot of spots there, Brett Nichols, and he couldn't afford to uh, lose those ones. He was making his way up into that top four, the Nelsonian. There's a couple new battle in front of him. Uh, that was Buckrell uh, and Ashby, I think it was. And so that's allowed Brett Nichols to pick up another one. Out front, Peter Rees, still your race leader from Max Holloway, and he's uh, opened up a gap. Oh, into battle for second and third. Stefan Roygaard looked to put the bumper into Max Holloway. So Roygaard's in at the moment. Brett Loveridge with uh, the 16B. He's got a three-point buffer over Brett Nichols and Jacob Buckrell. And Brett Loveridge is a couple of spots ahead on the racetrack. So that's your kind of battle that we're needing to be watching. Brett Loveridge, Jacob Buckrell, and Brett Nichols, seventh, ninth, and tenth on the track. Oh, Nichols has made the pass on Buckrell. Brett Nichols is charging. He got that little cross up earlier on, and that cost him spots, but he is flying at the moment the 48 in car up into eighth place. 
He needs to pass another couple. He's got Sam Hughes and Brett Loveridge just in front of him. Peter Rees and Stefan Roygaard looking okay. Sam Hughes, even if he gives up the spot to Brett Nichols, will still... Oh, and Hughes goes around. Sam Hughes in the 77G. He didn't have that many points up his sleeve. So that's going to shuffle things up and around big time. Yeah, he Sam... dropped out the top four. So now it is Rees, Roygaard, Hughes and Loveridge. Brett Nichols, one behind Brett Nichols. One behind Brett Loveridge. Now he makes the pass down the main straight. That is for a spot in the finals. 48N versus 16B. Okay, on that latest one, they are now up. They are both in. It's Sam Hughes, who needs to make another pass. White flag is out. Checkered flag falls, as we say that. Reeves takes the win. And, oh, it's going to finish. We're going to have a runoff. We're going to have another runoff if this day's official. Peter Rees takes the win ahead of Adam Joblin and Max Holloway ended up dropping back to third. But we do have another potential runoff here, Barry. Do, no, it's changed again it's from changed when I looked at it again. Yep. Okay, how are we looking? So, yeah, Peter Rees, 10G, 53 points. Well clear. 48 in, Brett Nichols, great second with 45. 16V, Brett Loveridge, 44. 58K, Stefan Roygaard, 43. 77G, Sam Hughes, 42. So just missed out by one point, Sam Hughes. See, yeah. I, I said he had lots of points up his sleeve. He did. Uh, that was when he was doing, when he was just in front of Brett Nichols. Um, oh, the, the race just changed. I was going to um, just check where. So he dropped back to 14th place, Sam Hughes, in that race. Yes. Uh, in the end. So, uh, yeah, he'll be up high in the river charge. He was in fifth. Jacob Buckerell, 39. Adam Joplin, 32, and Ross Ashby and Matt Jarvis are actually eight equal on 31. So I'm assuming that means they are a runoff for the river charge place, unless they have some other way of uh, separating them for the river charge. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Um, you know, it, it, it's not not really a coin toss, is it, to make a river charge? No. But a bit different if you're deciding between tier three and four. That, that's right, yeah, but we're, we're still uh, two spots up for grabs in the New Zealand title. Um, th oh, okay. Oh no, he was down the. Okay. There's just been another change. Yes. Sam Hughes is now back in the top four. Okay, we've just heard it was Stefan Roygaard um, has been disqualified. He had a he had a, a right side tyre as a puncture. Continued to run, so he has been eliminated from the result. So okay. Roygaard is out. Uh, can we have... So, apologies, just uh, some issues there. Okay, so, Stefan Roygaard disqualified from the race. He was in the... We had him in fourth place. Yes. So he has now been disqualified, and so Sam Hughes will replace him. The 77K... Uh, G. 77J. No, uh, so that means, yeah, Jacob Buckrell on 40 points into the river charge. Adam Joplin, 32. Ross Ashby, 32. Matt Jarvis, 32. So there's now uh, no runoff situation for eighth place either. So Ashby and Jarvis both we'll, make it in. We'll, go, we'll get into the... Um into the river charge. Yes, right. Had, had a three three way points tie for six. Alright, so here we go. This is Gav Tunnifar versus Shay Hambling. 75k against 7A. So this this is the only runoff now, isn't it? Um, so just looking at our point, um, our groups here. Uh, so one more for Gisborne. Uh, or had I already done that? Uh, this the last race. I don't know, there's two more from Gisborne from, from that race now. Yep, and one from Kiki comes out. Yeah. So two from Gisborne, one from Nelson, one from Hawke's Bay. So we've got five from Gisborne, four from Kiki, another potential Kiki car here. Three from Rotorua, two from Bay Park, two from Palmy, two from Hawke's Bay. 
one from Auckland. Wanganui, Stratford, Wellington and Nelson. Christchurch and Huntley, the two tracks without a finalist. Mm. It's a, a pretty even spread, isn't it? It is. All right, here we go. Four laps. This is to decide a spot in the finals. They're pulling up, and Gav Tunifar on pole, and he's brought it right out wide, close to the wall. Just left enough room. Just. Just. So it's four laps. So this is for fourth place in the group. And the winner to the finals, the loser to the Reaper charge. Still with a chance for the finals, though. Four laps. Who will be finalist number 24? So Gav, Tony Farr tries taking Hambling to the wall. Tony Farr takes off, Shea Hambling. Chases hard. Yeah, Tony Farr knew he didn't have to jump. Hambling's gonna come in, oh, has a shot, and oh, it was one of those all or nothing. He's gonna chase as Tony Farr runs it wide. Finds the right line there now, so Hambling. Oh, look at the feather coming off the back of that. Right rear. Still going to chase, is he, Shea Hamley? I think you have to at this point. And just hope that Tani Far makes... Oh, Hambling just... Oh, there's a big cruncher into the concrete for Shea Hambling. Okay, now he's going to ease off. Is he going to try and stop him? He is going to go on the blocks. Now he's got to keep moving. Let's give Tani Far. He'll come around. He'll get the white flag here. So, just one chance, really, for Shea Hambling. Tony Farr is just going to come around, and he's going to come in behind. Okay, we do have another. We just just stand by. There's just a bit of debate about another runoff, but here it is, Gav Tony Farr, who will advance to the finals, and Shea Hambling. Um, we'll head to the Ripper charge. Right, we'll hand you back to Craig. He's got a few notices and things to do. We'll shout out to our sponsors. Stand by. We'll just confirm uh, runoff situations as far as uh, Ripper charges may go as well. So we'll get that to you in a moment. Alrighty, so just uh, would like a, a big shout out to, uh, to our sponsors as, as you've seen throughout the night. Uh, obviously, the likes of uh, Pollock Cranes. Uh, Basie Engineering, Porter Group, big sponsors, and we really appreciate that. But what I want to let you know, if you are leaving now, and there is still more action coming, but if you are leaving now, the road through the quarry is open, so you can uh, head out through the quarry and come out onto the onto the road, heading out of here just to save a bit of a, a traffic jam. So, uh, yeah, feel free to, to go through the quarry and come out go out that way if you want to. And, of course, remembering we've got uh, a lot of racing again tomorrow, so make sure you're back here trackside. To, uh, to see the action and for those of you on the live stream can't wait to have you back here but uh, we're just waiting to find out if there is any uh, any more runoff to, to go and uh, we'll come back to you very shortly well there you go guys we're still waiting to see if we do have that final uh, runoff between the two cars and if they do we'll cut straight across to the racing but I mean tonight oh my gosh we were ambling down the uh, pits at the beginning of the night and everyone was so relaxed and I can absolutely 100% confirm that mood chain pretty quickly Stu uh, we went down there many 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 a time to get an interview and everyone was just so fully focused they were up here watching they were working on the car the answer was no yeah, no, that mood did change pretty quick. Yeah. It was a great day today, you know, nice and sunny and everything. And then uh, we once we got into racing, that track was uh, a little bit rough to start with. But, you know, a lot of uh, steering damage. Yeah, and, yeah. and I've never seen so many radiators out after the first heat because they had to get to the steering boxes and that. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's it's it, like you said, it changed. It became real busy down there. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't like there was a lot of uh, contact as such in the way of hits and shit. It was just, yeah, it was just busy out there on the racetrack. It was really busy and of course Gabe you went down there to get some uh, interviews as well and the feeling down there was yep we're fully focused, This we're, we're really meaning business but though I mean unfortunately some of these cars just dropped like flies and Stu's absolutely right there was so much damage but very few hits. 
Yeah, I think it looked more like a graveyard than a Superstock Championship at the moment. But uh, now nah, most of the drivers that I talked to were uh, pretty upfront and uh, honest about it. I'd obviously ask them if they want to do an interview first off. But um, yeah, after about heat two, they started to really drop off like flies. As well, when you've got a microphone in front of them, a lot of them run away as well. Absolutely, and that's half the trouble. But in all honesty, I mean, we were trying to bring you the, the footage through the camera. Um, in the likes of Asheris, he was literally working on his car from the minute he got out to the minute he got back in. And we just didn't think it was really fair to pull him away, especially considering he's a defending uh, defending driver at the minute. But listen, we're still waiting uh, We're still waiting for the word on this runoff, so we're just going to keep chatting, really. So, Gabe, tell us, this is not the first time you've seen the, high, uh, seen the super stocks, but what was the highlight for you? I think just the whole championship in general. Oh, there is a runoff, it sounds like. So we do have another race coming up. But no, I think the, um, I haven't been to a New Zealand championship since I think it was 2013 14 at Nelson. But the one thing I can tell you about this championship was these cars are fast now. They're very, very fast. I'm, obviously, a lot of people know me from super saloons and stuff like that. These guys are pretty much super saloons with bumpers at the moment. So the speed of these cars is just absolutely phenomenal. Obviously, not a lot of hits, but we did get that one rollover that uh, I'm sure the crowd loved. Absolutely, and um, we've also got jo Josh Kahui down here. I'm going to go and, um, oh, sorry, we've actually got an update to come. We're yeah. going to cross up to the guys upstairs, and they're going to fill you in because they have all the information. Yeah, you, you say there, Bianca, because we'll, we'll cross back to you. So I've just, yep. what it is with the reaper charge, so it's the top four, uh, sorry, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth from each group go to the reaper charge, so that gives us 24. Then it's the next two highest scorers overall. So we've got, I believe, three drivers on 31 points across different groups who are all tied on 31. Three of them. Oh. Two of them will go to the reaper charge. So I'll go and sort out who those cars are um, and find out. But back to you guys. I'll come back once I've got that updated. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, I mean, it's all confusing, eh? We've got to get it right, though. We've got to get it right for you guys at home. So we've gone through Gabe's um, highlights. Tell us, Drew, what was your highlight of the night? Uh, Bix qualifying was pretty good. Stop it. You stole it. You stole no, it. No, you stole it. Nah, well, only only because she's a puma. Uh, you like her because she's a girl. I like her because she's in my team. I like her because she's a bloody good sort. Yeah, no, that's exactly <laughs> it. Um, yeah, it was just a, it was just a solid night out there. I mean, probably good to see Asher back in to defend the title. I suppose. I suppose that's a good thing. Yep. I mean, Asher took away two wins tonight, didn't he? So he's in good contention, and I think a lot of people want to see him back up on that podium. It's taken a long time to get it from him. Let's be honest. Yeah, I think a lot of people would like to see him not have any uh, any wins tomorrow night. <laughs> Listen, I know. Sometimes I just want to kick you right off the <laughs> camera. But hey, listen, um, we might see if we can actually head down because we didn't spend a lot of time down in these in the pits area down the other end. Um, there was a lot of carnage down there, though. Surprisingly, the likes of Wayne Hemi, done. He didn't make it through. Big surprise. Yeah, it was a bit. I mean, obviously, uh, at that right front just uh, just spoiled his night. Yeah, and of course, I guess this is going around the track, so you can't get into the pits just yet because uh, the meeting's still on. So you can't get down here into the pits. Don't uh, don't try and get down here. But um, yeah, so like you said, with Wayne and Jordan as well, those outside flats, you know, the likes of uh, of Jaden, he had that DNF with an outside flat, and then of course he realised the brakes weren't there either, and you know he's already uh, prepping the car for next week. Tyler Walker as well, you know, yeah. you look on Tyler Walker's um, Facebook page, the, the Superstock 133 page, and, um, you know, he just blew the bell house into bits, the clutches in bits, it's uh, yeah, it's not a pretty sight, so there was a, f a fair, fair bit of that uh, going on as we mentioned throughout the night. Yeah. And listen, we hear the roar of the Superstocks coming now, um, can, Paul Hickey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, I can hear you Bianca, <laughs> I've just uh, confirmed the three drivers in the runoff, it is 57V Dylan Marshall, 141S Lance Mitchell and 47B Zach Glennie. Uh, so uh, that's the confirmation we have had on the three. Uh, Dylan Marshall, Lance Mitchell and Zach Glennie. And that is three of them for... Oh, oh okay, no. sorry. <laughs> they've no. gone... Oh, they've gone to a fast... Okay, so we've just heard <laughs> they've gone to a fastest lap. What are they doing? Fastest lap time. No, no runoff. No, so no they've just changed their mind. Uh, no runoff, and runoff. it's gone to a fastest yeah. lap time. So who misses out? Dylan Marshall. Um, so Dylan Marshall misses out. Stu, you've you've heard that too. Hang on a minute, Dylan. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll yeah we'll, we'll go straight to Dylan. The, so yeah, just a bit of confusion who here. Qualified? Um, I'm just going to get the driver himself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, yeah this, look, will tell this is us. the easiest way to do it. Yeah. They all just got sent out of the room. Right. 
Come here, mate. Dylan Marshall, right, you gone to the fastest lap. Three of you. So who's qualified through? Yeah, it's um, but unfortunate with like a three-way runoff. Um, yeah. The crowd would love a runoff too, but they've just gone back to fastest slap, sort of a bit of a count back, I think. Not sure if it's the save time or what, but um, yeah, we're through to last grid on the repo, so yeah. So, so you're the one that's made it through and the other two don't? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sweet. There you go. Well, that's that's worth coming back for. Yeah. I'll let you go back and uh, prep the car for the repo charge now. Right, mm. yeah, come back in, Bianca and Gabe. There we go. All That's right, how well, you sort it out. You just go straight to the drivers. <laughs> you do. Hey, from us upstairs, um, we'll wrap things up from us three, and we'll be back tomorrow night. We'll hand it over to you three to wrap up. Yeah, and that's a wrap from us as well. We hope that you guys have watched and really enjoyed the racing. It took us a long time to get here, and we were absolutely stoked. We've given you the highlights. We've given you all the rundown. You guys can go and confer with it at home, run through the highlights. We're going to bed. We'll see you all tomorrow.